Welcome back, Acolytes. I'm Darth Zile, back at you again for another live stream today. Starting a bit early because, uh, well, I need to get all of this game in into a single stream. So, gotta, gotta get started early. <laughs> Oh, all right, man. I'm so excited. The game is finally coming out today. Uh, at, in about an hour, an update is going to drop. So I'll have to grab that in the middle of this playthrough. But man, while we're waiting. We're still slave slaves. We're just in Let me turn this down. It's still loud in my ears. Let me, let me just turn this down. So the point of this game is that you are in charge of a television channel and and you have to do editing and and all that shit and uh yeah it's a real good fun time real good fun time and really funny it's a really funny game too normal there we go Auto sensor, auto headlines, auto hardcore mode. What are all these now? These are new. Friends and neighbors, and have confidence that the team will keep. Oh yeah, see, I really, I hate the interference. I really hate the interference. But it's fine. It's fine. Controls, accessibility, loads of options for accessibility. None of which I need. Are you saying that Advance has Let's make a whole new game. Let's call this, uh, just doing my job. I'm just doing my job. I'm just doing my job. That's it. Just leave me alone. I'm doing my job. Hello. Oh, well shit, look at that. Now there's a, uh, okay. Well, we're just gonna go middle of the road, the way it's supposed to be. I'm sorry. Uh, there we go. Okay. Gamepad. Okay. Well, there's gamepad controls now. All right. Hi, David. I have a call for you. I'm just putting it through. All right, mate. Dave here. Listen, uh, I know you've only come in to clean up the place, but I've got a bit caught up, so uh, you're going to have to run the news tonight. Now, don't worry. It's not hard, and I'm going to stay on the phone and help you. First, I'm going to give you a quick tour of the broadcast room, so if you're not doing it already, look forwards towards all those screens. Right, look up at the top. That coloured bar is your audience. You want to keep the viewers going up and not down. Underneath that, you've got the screens. The one on the right is the broadcast screen. That's what the viewers are seeing at home. It's only a couple of seconds behind the master screen there in the middle. That's the one you control. Now, the four small screens on the left show the different signals coming from the studio, and you can choose between them using the numbered buttons on the vision mixer at the bottom left. Don't worry. I'll talk you through it, and you'll pick it up in no time. Now, have a look to your left. These plugs control everything in the studio. I've left them set up for you, so provided you haven't fiddled with them, all you have to do now is throw the master trip switch and we're in business. Once you've got the power on, face the front again.
You can see on the broadcast screen that we're in the end titles for the show before. Ah, oh, I did it again. All these, gr all the controls are ba are ass backwards. I I apologize. Uh, yeah, that's that's fine. Sensor sensor needs to be this. There you go. That's not what I wanted. There you go. All right. Sorry about that. Or us. Fortunately, they go on for fucking ages, so there's plenty of time for me to explain. Oh, right. Okay, they're over, so we haven't got long now till the broadcast. <laughs> quickly, mate. Look down under the desk. You can see a load of videotapes on the left. They're your adverts. Pick any three and load them into the machines on the right. When you've done that, look up to the front again. Take on four old ladies and each screeching. Right, the tapes are loaded and we're all ready for when we get to the first ad break. That's great. Any second now, you should be getting a signal through from the studio. Stay on your toes, mate. It's election night, so all eyes are on this room. We do not want to get fired. Sit back and relax with multiple award-winning movies. The freedom of being Colin. Taking us all I really don't need his help. Corner <laughs> mayonnaise. <laughs> You don't see if you make a brown pasta. Every day. You offer me prawns every day. Ten seconds, everybody. Finally, You're trying to kill me. And yet you persist. Going oh. five, four. But now, it's time to join Jeremy Donaldson. Good evening. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Our main story is tonight. Moving on up. The election win that experts said just couldn't happen. Hopeful or hostile. Controversy as global mega corporation Remington Sisk buys Honest Andy's Totally Independent and corners the flawed market. Top chat. Sports fans everywhere celebrate as popular footballer Johnny Hamsleaves wins Sports Personality of the Year. And a spoonful of sugar. Megan will be chatting with movie star Lawrence Vonderklatch about his new movie, Remedicated. And, of course, we'll be going live to advanced headquarters to hear what the right. of his special... We gotta get the here. Number two. That's all coming up on tonight. Three. Two, one, boom, perfect. Yeah, this game really ramps up, but really you're, you're playing not, but you're, you're playing for the story and the humor, but it, it's a lot of juggling of these mechanics and it's just great. victory with an astonishing 81% of the popular vote is the biggest election win in living memory. Advance appealed to voters up and down the country with their bold promises of permanent change, but critics have accused them of a severe lack of actual policies and of being... Now I gotta keep this line in, in, in check. Using the scroll wheel to move the bar up and down. Eventually I'm gonna have to Expand and shrink the ray, but not now. By the shiny wrapping paper, but have yet to see the contents of the box. Sounds like sour grapes to me, Jeff. After the break, Megan Wall. This is my least favorite part of the game. The international heartthrob and inexplicable box office sensation that is Lawrence Blunderclatch. And later in the program, we'll be going live to Advance HQ to hear the co leader's acceptance speech. That's all coming up now for the break. One minute back, everybody. Sorry. Woo! That was close. What's why? Banker snatch is running late. Oh, of course, I was asking about it. Deal! It's a deal! A crazy deal! We don't care if you've been naughty or nice. We got green sofas, red sofas, brown cushions, pink cushions. You've got a grey sofa. We've got uh, a sofa. And the commercials are great. A brown, a pink, a yellow, a purple. A plus! I'm the best. It's true. Throw your money at us. We'll give you a leather sofa for a price that is just crazy. If you got lightning, strike it, then strike while 
the light is hot. You got a dishy sofa. We don't care what? if it's no, the right one in front of you. Oh, oh, well. This gives me nothing, Jenny. They must see that. I oh, know. I think they think he won't have anything to say. Oh, for God's sake, come on. It's a huge day. <laughs> He's not an absolute bogey. I don't care, Rob. I'm not doing it. I agree to do one BC interview a day. I made that completely clear when we started. <laughs> Check my contract. Hi, I'm Megan. Oh, piss off. You're on thin, bloody ice, Rob. Whole wheat, man. Whole wheat. We're coming back from the break. Quiet in the studio. Thank you so much. For Ten seconds, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to the National Nightly News. Later, we'll be hearing from shock election winners advance. But first, our very own culture reporter, Megan Wolf, is here with the star of both stage right. and screen. And ready for four? Megan? Thank you, Jeremy. Megan Wolf, culture correspondent. And today, I have a guest who starred in everything from Shakespeare to the Shotbot films. I'm very excited to be joined today by none other than Lawrence Blunderclatch. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, my dear. I do hope you believe me when I tell you that being with you here today is among the greatest joys of my life. So you don't want to hold on one shot for too long? Bless you. So you've just finished filming. It, it's boring. Movie, Little reaction shots the like this. Yes. <laughs> wow, what was that like? Well, I There you go, switch. Peter, you always want to be showing who's talking. Peter Jensen, the director. Do you think a little reaction shot? Wonderful chap. Really Back to wide. I've worked with him on several movies, all terribly successful. I said to Peter, what a wild ride this has been. And do you know what, Megan? I really meant that. Wow, that is fantastic. And am I right in saying that the character you play in this movie is quite an academic one? Back to wide. Absolutely right. A scientist. Was that a challenge at all? What exactly are you implying? But seriously, yes, you're right. It was a complete departure from my show a little humor starring role when I played Sergeant Brock Rockman in Bullet Man. You'll remember that that was the true story of one soldier's fight for a love that surpasses all others. A love, of course, for freedom. The reaction shots you want to stay less on. I'll see who's counting. It's a role that saw you scoop two best But when it's green like this, you can stay on for about eight seconds. It's so easy to mention it, but I really am not in it for the awards. Although, those three little statues do take pride of place on my mantelpiece. Uh, with all the others, I'm sure. So, if you're not doing it for the awards, mm. what is it then that drives you? Oh, that is a beautiful question, Megan. And not easy to answer. Like you, I'm afraid. Cut me, and I will bleed. And often, that's how it feels, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Bleeding, giving, suffering for one's audience. I suppose in the end, I do it for the difference it makes. I do it for the people that I inspire, the little people. But most of all, I think I do it for the positive change that I can bring about in the world. And today, of course, <laughs> we're in for some real change, it looks like, in the coming few months. What do you make of this historic election result? Oh, well. <laughs> well now we're uh, she was told, don't ask election. about the election. Indeed, historic is the word. Well, it's difficult, isn't it? Very difficult. But um, I think I've always been quite clear that when it comes to politics, that one should always strive to not fuck things up. Uh, yes, well... Um, Sorry, I said fuck. No. Is that, I'm really... I'm <laughs> well, well, Sorry. Lawrence, I believe you brought in a clip. There you go, I had a sense of that. ...opens next week around the country. Lawrence, do tell us what's going on here. I'd be delighted. <laughs> this is a really pivotal scene where really pivotal my character, scene. Dr. Lodge Hemlock, character, is faced Dr. with... Can we go into this in a second on one? He's very survivable. Exciting stuff. Let's take a look. Exciting stuff. There we go. Now we can kind of just chillax for a moment. Gonna have to get the commercial break in about a minute 30. We're ready to go with uh, exercise with ham sleeves. 
the premier athlete of 1980s Britain. Uh oh, here we go. There we go. Now I gotta stretch the bar. It's not your fault. You think I don't know that? In all hands, we mustn't. Think of Carol. That's Dr. Lance to you, Miss Flanagan. <laughs> Just pulling and squeezing the bar. Dr. Hemlock. You told me. Now, now I gotta stretch the bar up. I'm drowning, Lance, she said. You need to see this. No, it's all too late. Look at this! It. And then smush the bar back. There we go. Good. We have to ask ourselves. Get ready for commercial break in 20. If we should. And there we go. Into into commercial. Another A plus. Don't worry, ladies. Now you can have me, Johnny Hamsley, right there in your lounge. Oh, Johnny. Match time. Match time. Happy day. Me both cruising down the moat. I'm excited to get that downloaded. But we have four broadcasts to do. Each day is uh, determined. Uh, each day has three commercials, ending with the third commercial. So we're going into the final segment of day one. Wow, they are limber. Him, not so much. Every exercise is recommended by sports professionals, and it's 72% likely to get rid of those tricky tummies and cruel cellulite. Whoever has to bleep this. Ten seconds, everybody. And a lawyer and a TV personality running the country. Seriously? We've had worse. Five. <laughs> and I just got a warning that we are going to have major censoring issues. Welcome back. And I'm told we can now go live to advance headquarters where the two leaders, Peter Clement and Julia Salisbury, are about to make their acceptance address. Shall I start? Go for it, pet. Heels. Every dirty, low-down, lying, southern bastard trick they had against us. But you, the people, you saw right through their shag. I'm sorry about the language there. Sorry about that. I've had a couple of celebratory pints. Makes me coarser than the grand is funny. Memorably put. But to be honest, who can blame Peter for celebrating? I need to get this side up a little bit more. I heard say that advance are not a political party. A party is what you have when things are going well. When the country is suffering, you don't need a party. You need a team. A team that can change things. But today is day one of a new future. A better, fairer future. So perhaps we should all be celebrating. Except for the rich. For them, the party's Except over. The they shouldn't be the celebrating. They, they should be, be putting their shit in pants on and opening their dusted checkbook. Again, colourfully put, but Again, not inaccurate. <laughs> Before we came out here to address the nation, we, we used our executive to powers nation, to pass the Assets and Wealth Act. Working with the tax office, we have produced a definitive list of every person in the country with wealth into the millions. You know the sort. Probably you, you rather you don't. Because the likes of you and me are not welcome in their gated communities. Tomorrow, we will be introducing a sweeping reform of the tax system in this country. No more hiding wealth offshore, no more trust funds. Funds or creative accounting, a simpler, fairer, unavoidable set of tax laws. So all you bastard public school snobs have got nowhere to hide. And earlier today, we revoked your passport. Oof. 
You want to leave but like you threatened before you the election? Like threatened That's threatened fine. The election. But first, That's fine. you're going to pay first, up. You're, you're going to pay, pay back. Up. Advance are going to turn this country from a nation of warring individuals into a team. To properly fund health and education. To raise the living standards of us all. I'll answer after this broadcast. Billions. Minute and a half. You'll see when we've reclaimed what's ours, that's absolute ferret shite. So to you posh twats. The people who pay you a pittance to serve them drinks in their private clubs. The people whose children you raise. So they've got time to get even fucking richer. Advance have this to say to you. It ends today. We are coming for your sports cars and your mansions and your vineyards. It ends today. We will put the wealth of this country back where it should have always been. In the hands of the people who created it. It ends today. Yes, it ends today. And tomorrow, we'll start making it fair again. Just like we promised we would. And until then, ladies and gents, I suggest we all get pissed. I can't argue with that. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Well, an interesting acceptance speech well, there from the leader of the Advance. And our apologies for the fruity language. And our apologies Hopefully we got that bleeped out for you in time. If not, someone's going to be in trouble. I did a good job. So, as the country braces itself for new government, that's all from us this evening at the National Nightly News. We'll be back tomorrow. Commercial break in six. The first day under advance. Four, I'm Jeremy three, Have a two, peaceful one. one. Have a Boom. And we're out. Good job, everybody. Same again tomorrow. Call times are on the board. This is not a movie. This is not some child's tale. This is not a dream. This is reality. This is the story of you and how you. This guy's hilarious. This is this is what happens if Alex Jones was right. But you ended up for Satan. James. Alan James is one of the country's most controversial columnists and speakers. And they're going to take your poor sweet grandma, and you're never going to see those dribbling dentures again, oh grandma! Look at their faces! That's not what cows look like! You call it the stock market. I call it the stuck market. Because it's just another poll they've stuck up our collective... I don't care if he was once your nephew, Cameron! He's standing in the way of the truth! Now, Alan James... <laughs> James is right is coming to your city. I'm Alan James, author of Alan James is Right, the gospel according to Alan James, and and the Alan James shall set you free. And now I'm bringing my message directly to you with my new nationwide tour, Alan James is Right, in front of you. Alan James. I'm Alan James. Alan James. Alan James is right. Alan James. I'm Alan Jane. Coming to a city near you. Check local press for dates and times. Wonderful. Right. Tick. Hey, Tick. Hello. Uh, this game is, uh, well, it's a full FMV game where you control the broadcast stipulations, essentially. All the conditions, everything. Constantly juggling between cameras, swearing, fixing the interference. You got to flip switches and run commercials. You got to choose the commercials. You got to have timing. You got to be counting in your head so that way you don't hold on sh so shots too long. It's a really interesting, fun game if you like juggling mechanics and shit like that. Um, but uh, yeah, this is a alternate 1980s Britain right after a very controversial election which you now have to take, you know, make choices. So everything that I do, every choice that I make, every commercial I run actually is affecting the story in some way. Uh, so it's it's kind of got that RPG element. It's been years for this game to fully complete, and now it's here. So I'm just so happy and excited. Current wealth, broke ass poor. Neil's deals went up because I played his commercial.
Channel One loves the fat what I did, but uh, yeah, not so much the new government. They they really have no opinion of me, and and my my stand in really. One letter, however, catches your eye. The team wants to know you. So, uh, yeah, might as well open up this letter. Uh, it's a form from the new government asking for information on all citizens. Your first page is already filled in. My name, my wife or husband's name. Doesn't It's all, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then children's name. You must... Well, you muse, they at least got the basics right. The rest of the questions are left for you to complete. They appear to be mandatory. So, like I said, and the name of this, of the save file is just doing my job. So, uh, yeah, uh, upon starting a new job, I would, um, uh, that, uh, I should report that violation. I get a raise. The entire department was fired today for consistent underperformance. Your boss has put in new place, put in place new targets that are significantly higher than the previous ones. Well, uh, let's stay late. Let's make sure that job gets done. I'm just doing my job. It's an annual company barbecue and you and your family have been invited. Uh, well, I'm kind of washing my hair that day. Sorry. You've had a long, su successful career and are now about to retire. Uh, focus on the issues and challenges. Yes, well, yes, yes, yeah, do that, boom. In your spare time, you attend political rallies and stand up for what you believe in. Um, I like to relax at home doing things like listening to music and making models. Your ideal holiday getaway would be From the channels who've played this game recently, you seem to be the one with the most intimate knowledge of the mechanics and such. How many times have you played it before? Uh, every time there's been a new update, I, I've done a stream showing off the new update with the exception of the last one with the challenges. I don't really care about challenges. I like I like the story mode and, and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, I've, I have played this game a lot. So I'm really excited for 20 minutes from now when the full thing releases. Even though we won't be getting into that immediately. We won't be getting into the last episode immediately, because, you know, new playthrough. Uh, your ideal holiday getaway would be... What would it be? Romantic getaway with my partner to a tropical par I island paradise? Well, I mean, I guess, I guess Disney could be a tropical island paradise, I guess, technically. Sure. Uh, it is important that the government keeps people uh, equal. And I'll sign my name. Alex Winston. Am I a man? Am I a woman? Who knows? My name is Alex. Oh, day six. Right. I forgot how much of this there is. It's late. Sam and the kids have gone to bed. You're just dry drying up a favorite coffee cup, a worn out souvenir of your first trip together. The prince faded, but the goofy face still makes you smile. A knock at the window brings you back to reality. There in the garden, clutching a gaudy neon green suitcase is Chris, Sam's sibling. <laughs> Once again, just, just be gender neutral, it's fine. Uh, as soon as you let them in, they sit at the kitchen table, visibly stressed. Uh, da -da -da, I'm so sorry for bursting in so late, Alex. Chris stammers, but I need a favor and you're the only one. Blah, blah, blah. What's going on? Are you okay? Sorry, uh, answering texts. You must have seen all this crazy advanced stuff. The Assets and Wealth Act, they're calling it. Taking people's hard-earned money to fund the lazy. It's bullshit. Uh, I'm not saying the top 1% or whatever don't have stupid money, but they can afford it. People like me, we're going to lose everything. That's awful, but I'm not sure how I can help. You're always the well-off one in the family. I'm sorry, but taking from the rich to help the poor doesn't sound so bad. That's awful, but I don't see how I can help. 
Uh, they're gonna take everything, Alex. Everything I've spent my life building. I can't let that happen. I need a favor. Chris's eyes find the floor tiles. I need to borrow your passport. What? They've taken mine in half the bloody countries, but people always say you and I look similar, so... I need to leave before it's too late. Once I'm out, me and my money will be safe, but I need to go now before they freeze my... We're family! Does that mean nothing for to you? It's against the law! I'm just trying to do my... The nylon fluorescent suitcase, Chris disappears in the night. You go back to the dishes, picking up Sam's cup again. The peel and face now seems to bore into you. <coughs> Scusi. Oh, jeez. The advanced arrow post broadcast think it's more about the change in public appeal thanks to you. Yes, yes, you are correct. I completely forgot about that. Uh, but I want to keep getting with the crazy, crazy meals. Eh, it's fine. Right, you can see they finally got the old headline system up and working again. And the vision mix is already in headline mode because headlines always come at the start. It's really simple, mate. These two buttons at the bottom of the vision mixer, you can see they now have A and B on them. And they're to help you pick image A on the left bottom screen here or image B on the right bottom screen. Here, it's really simple. This little clock here will count down the number of seconds you have to make your decision. Provided you make a decision in that time, you're fine. And you can change your mind as much as you want until the clock reaches zero. But if you don't make any decision, you'll be fired before you even get to make another choice. I just want to say one more thing, mate. The pictures you choose to show of these people, well, that's how the public is going to perceive them. And that's going to affect their lives. So like with the adverts, choose carefully. Right, right. Oh, and we're off. Good luck, mate. Before I get to my call, you're back in the next break. Yeah, I'm coming, darling. Like I'm Janet. It's really hot. Is this Janet who thinks dogs have their own secret language? Yeah, the one that mistrusts the moon. Ten seconds, everybody. The one that mistrusts the moon. Don't blame me when it explodes. Going in five. Before that, Three. it's time to go over to Jeremy Donaldson for tonight's National Night. Good evening, I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Our main headlines tonight. Destination unknown. Are the rumblings already heard from overseas? I'll be asking my guests whether advance can deliver on even a fraction of their manifesto promises. Out with the old, Remington Fist have appointed Sophia Remington as their new CEO. The following photo, taken from our archive, uh, gives us uh, a sense of this influential uh, firebrand who, at the tender age of 23, becomes the youngest female CEO in history. There we go, that's the one. <laughs> has always impressed. She was top of her class at university and graduated with the highest honours, immediately being asked back to lecture. The markets have responded favourably to Sophia's appointment, with stocks rising 30 points in light of the announcement. In her first press conference this afternoon, Sophia announced a children's toy named Mr. Snugglehugs. Sophia promises it will be all the rage this Christmas, but concerns have been raised about the product's safety. Making a splash. Intrepid scientist Dr. David Wong and marine biologist Ingrid Svalsborg and Morgansford have today set off to explore Dante's taint. The recently discovered cave system was previously thought unreachable, but thanks to a new breakthrough in underwater flower technology, the pair hope to successfully reach the imposing central cavern and the undiscovered plant species it contains. This is, of course, only the latest in a series of successful acquisitions in this unlikely pair. There is a band as sporting legend Johnny Hamsleeves is snapped leaving Bush, one of the capital's hottest clubs. The footballer was caught while out celebrating being named Sports Personality of the Year last week, as reported by this very programme. 
And judging from the angle and velocity of that spray, it looks like Johnny may have been celebrating a little bit too much. I certainly wouldn't want to be his dry cleaner. And grievous bodily charm. With advance promising a radical new position on crime, how afraid should we actually be? I'll be going live around the country. All right, so I already showed advance kind of like mean looking, so now I'm going to show mean opposition. More and more people saying they're scared to walk the streets alone at night. Could this be exactly the right time for advance's new approach? All that, a mega move for the group of young actors already experiencing the positive side of the new Assets and Wealth Act firsthand. They'll be talking and performing later. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. Boom, perfect. Oh shit, here we go. I really do dislike the, the interference mechanic. I, I liked how it was before. It was a lot easier. You just had to guide a little ball through, through like a little maze. In the wake of the government's swift enactment of the Assets and Wealth Act, we're talking about Advance's first week in office and what the new future holds. Joining me are Katie Brightman, a leading economist, and Alan James, author of Alan James is Right, The Free Man's Guide to Waking Up. Alan, the government certainly haven't dragged their heels on delivering some of the legislation they promised. But what does the Wealth Act mean for us? Nothing, Jeremy. We're still vassal slaves. We're just in prettier cages. A confident dismissal there. Katie Brightman, do you agree? I'm afraid I don't, no. I think that Vance have realized that the current economic system- That's some fucking pro editing. I, I wasn't even looking at the screen. I just know where they are. There I agree with you. They're moving to the next steps in the grand plan. Grand plan, Alan. It's all in my book. Alan James is right, Jeremy. We're to become the great herd. Ignorant, sterile, and short-lived. That's what they want. Or perhaps Advance have just realized that if we carry on the way we are, we will destroy ourselves and this planet in a mad orgy of consumption, if you'll excuse the colorful metaphor. <laughs> yes, orgy is the right word. Only it'll be the overlords having an orgy on our poor broken backs. It's all in my book. Alan James is- Shamelessly self-promoting. Katie, how do you think the rest of the world will respond to this new approach? I think they're watching carefully. Advance are the most disruptive threat that the world powers have faced since the last Great War. Yes, Katie's right. War is inevitable. Thank you, but that isn't And this will not be a war like we've ever seen before. We're talking millions of deaths. We're talking high-tech weapons that can level entire cities. We're talking- Out of the wrong orifices? Mock me all you like, Jeremy. But when they murder your parents and they poison your food and they take you away to their camps for- Can't wait to see how I handle the music part. Oh, I'm great. Of that. Sell books, Alan, but you know full well that isn't going to happen in a democracy. Democracy is dead. Yes, advance are radical, and change is always frightening, but the truth is that the Wealth and Assets Act has made more than 90% of the population wealthier and is on target to produce a permanent end to poverty. Bollocks! What this young lady doesn't understand, Jeremy, is that these are the same Jet. people. Maybe they've rebranded, but it's all a little circus act to keep us from seeing the tyrant behind the curtain. That's where you're wrong, Alan. For a start, they've mobilized the youth vote like we've never seen before. You say mobilize, I call it grooming. <laughs> the grooming of an entire generation to walk happily into eternal bondage. They're like psychic pedophiles. But based on the facts, Katie, what are your predictions? <laughs> the Assets and Wealth Act is only the first step. Advance now have a historic budgetary surplus, and as well as properly funding our public services, they're already un they're already funneling unprecedented amounts into scientific research in the arts. Or, as I call them in my book, Franken science and opi arts. Franken science and opi arts. Like opiates. See. Can we get back to the issue at hand, please, Alan? This Can is the issue. Hand, it's all coming from the water, the chemicals. They're pumping the it full of belief juice. Don't get me wrong. I want to see these changes, but only if they're sustainable. If Advance lose their power after spending half of our GDP on dismantling infrastructure, that could be catastrophic. The catastrophe is that they're succeeding. They've got us sat here talking about their puppet show. All right, we're running out of time. Quickly, Alan, uh, what does the future look like to you? A bleak space where we've all been figuratively sodomized into submission. Oh, of course. Katie? We might be on the eve of a brave new world. God knows we need some change, but we need to be cautious. Let's walk forwards with our eyes open. Two very different visions of the future there. Alan James, Katie Brightman, thank you for joining me. When we come back, I'll be investigating law and order 
The four mega made some beneficiaries of the Okay, SSA commercial SSA. break. That's all coming up tonight on the National Nightly tonight. News. On the na One minute back. You know, I think they might do some good. I hope so too. Oh, all right that went well i didn't get an a plus because i missed the sensor somehow oh yeah thank you very much Welcome back. In our second segment, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the state of law and order in our country. Advance of a ready task with uh. a solutions team to move this serious social problem to the top of the list. Tonight, we go behind the headlines to meet the people who live with the criminal justice system every day of their lives. First up, we have Gregory Judge. There we go. A lawyer who I did well. Problems close up on the front line. Can you hear me, Gregory? Yes, I've got you, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. What's it like on the front line of a hard face and the cold hand of justice? What a line! As you can imagine, Jeremy, we are massively understaffed in this country. Uh, we're working every hour we can just to try and cope with the caseloads on our desks. Which must affect the quality of support you can offer. Well, we can barely keep up with demand, Jeremy. Uh, there just simply isn't enough being done at a systemic level to relieve the problem. We need more support from ministers. We Doing. We need change at a structural level, I'm Jeremy. leaving, Greg. Not a good time, darling. It never is, is it? I'll be at my mother's. It never is, is it? Just hang on. Just hang on. No, the problem isn't a local one, Jeremy. It's nationwide. Just give me five minutes. I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Oh, have you mentioned your affairs? No. Well, uh, the affairs of the Justice Department that we should be concerned about... Hello, Mr. Donaldson. Hello, Mrs. Jones. Hello, Mr. Donaldson. We need, uh, we need legislation to relieve the pressure on our public service. Sorry servants. to interrupt the news, Mr. Donaldson. Can I have a moment to tell my husband I'm leaving? Can I have a moment to yes, tell my husband I I'm totally understand. Yes. Quite the picture of a burdened legal sector there. The Gregory Judge, thank you for joining us. Gregory Judge, thank Next, you. I'm joined by Police Chief Constable Next Bob Peel, a man with a very different perspective on our nation's crime. Do you think there's a problem with the system, Bob? Oh, I'm sure we all do, Jeremy. I'm sure uh. we we'll a return to the days when you could safely walk the streets of your community at night, looking in through windows and generally enjoying your neighbours without the risk of being terrorised by some thug with a knife. For culture. <laughs> Wives, am I right? I know, right? Once a great country. Also, as the vicar noted in Sunday's sermon, we probably shouldn't have banned hanging. <laughs> what do you attribute this moral decay? Foreigners, gays and gypsies mainly. It's all in the Bible. Look, Leviticus clearly states that... Oh, bugger, hang on a moment. Jeremy, a bloody gimps escaped. <laughs> Delia? Delia, could you give me a little help, please? The dear? gimps escaped! Uh, as I was saying, Jesus didn't like immigrants much, did he? And just to be clear, you think it's the immigrants who are responsible for the moral decay? Absolutely, Jeremy. A back in your box, Clive. Back and whose responsibility is it to make a change, Bob? Well, it is certainly not the responsibility of the decent, good, white people of this. Oh, hold on just a moment. Clive, I am not having this again. As I was saying, Jeremy, moral decay. Crime is the responsibility of the criminal, no one else. Look, everyone has a sob story, but we don't all end up as barbarians, do we? Look, when our daughter Alice comes home with an A minus, does she go on a killing spree? No, she takes three of her pills and hides under the stairs like a normal child. We're locking down the police's position on morality. And finally tonight, hopefully uninterrupted, it's time to get to the heart of the matter. Oh boy. Tony Dawson has recently been released from prison after serving three years for aggravated Here he comes, fucking titwank. And menacing a swan. He's agreed to talk to us today, which is also, I believe... Menacing a swan! Many happy returns, Tony. Many happy Cheers, returns. Jez. 
Call me Titwank, Tony. Yes. Everybody else does. No, I'm not going to be doing Everybody that. Else does. Can you tell no, us what it's like in prison, Tony? Titwank, Tony. Hey! Prison's a mixed bag. Structure's quite nice, but... It's a constant battle against institutionalization, as you can imagine. And obviously, titwanks are quite hard to come by. I'm picking up that you're not alone there, Tony. I'm picking Titwank, Tony. <laughs> yeah, sorry, my friends are throwing me a surprise party. Yeah, sorry, my Good bunch of lads. OK, well, we're trying to get back to that party okay, as soon well, as possible. First, let me ask you this. Do you feel that your time spent in prison helped to rehabilitate you in any way, Tony? Tit wank Tony. I don't think it's as easy as that, Jez. It's weird that you can say tit, but you can't say wank. I think asking that is an oversimplification. It sounds like it's getting quite busy there, Tony, but let's try and soldier on. Since we've been custody, have you been able to find a new job? Yeah, all the boys are here. Big Chris, little Chris, and vampire Chris. And vampire Chris. This one's, yeah. One sec, love. Tip when you're on the loose. One sec, love. Tip when you're on the loose. Rehabilitation's difficult with the current system, Jez. It's just not set up for it, you know? It's inherently unjust. It's inherently unjust. So, do you feel tempted to... I'm sorry, who's this now? You are joking. Chrissy Free Bollocks has only got Mr. Fancy, oh. It seems like we've caught you at a bad time. I can't really hear you, mate. It's getting a bit busy here. Yeah? I can't really hear you, mate. It's getting a bit busy here. Yeah? Yes, we uh, seem to be losing the signal here, Tony. No, we're just trying to get that signal back. I think we. Yes, Tony? Tony, I mean, you were literally away for two seconds. How has this happened, Tony? Can you hear me? Well, we thought we would. Hopefully, you, the viewer at home, have managed to gain a broader understanding of the serious and complex issues around law and order. After the break, mm. Megan will be live. Brochure break, six seconds. Don't go away. We'll be back after these messages. We'll be back. <laughs> Fucking tit wank Tony. I'm hey, I ain't got long and I'm quite drunk. It's been a great night. In this next section, there's a bit of music. If you edit in time with the music, you can see the result. With a state of the art human like voice to keep them company when you can't. If you keep me happy, I'll keep you safe. And his incredible real action eyes. I hope your mummy and daddy don't die in a fire. That would be bad. It's not <laughs> Welcome to Splat. Culture Spot. I'll be chatting with one of the first beneficiaries of the Assets and Wealth Act, a team of inspiring young people from Scritchford Sick Form College who today received a grant from Advance. Oh, Megan, we're overwhelmed to be honest. And I believe you two sisters, is that right? Yes, Charlotte's my oldest. I'm the older, more popular one. <laughs> Well, Harriet and Trey were really the ones who came up with the whole idea. So, Harry and I were shooting the breeze in the cafeteria and I said, hey, let's actually do something. So I went to look for a drama teacher. But she'd been laid off due to budget cuts. Fortunately, I directed a pantomime when I was at university, so, so I knew the ropes as it were. Oh, right, yes, but you're the maths teacher. My poor kids here. They say, hey! I really want to be like those attractive kids. Really and that's a very like beautiful and powerful and thing. Beautiful and we powerful touch our audiences and they touch, touch us right back. I suppose with a surname back. like Algebra, there was really only one choice of career for me. <laughs> My wife, Angela, and I, we often laugh about it. <laughs> Angela Algebra. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we just want to bring a bit of song and joy into people's lives. And teach people about the difficult issues. The issues in the play are what really matter. And I think you're going to be showing us an extract from this play, aren't you? Yes. That's right. Put into context, I play a young person who has some troubles at school. Her character doesn't actually have a name, yeah, because in a way she's like all of us. 
like it's like a metaphor. It's like maybe she's you at home, or like maybe, maybe she's you, Megan. Must really important. Yeah, thanks, Steve. <laughs> Got it in, coach. Yes. Yeah. Did you first hear about the grant? Uh, two days ago. A letter from Advance arrived at the school. Now, the headmaster thought it was all a prank, but his secretary retrieved it from his bin and brought it to me. Wow, how did you react? I also threw it in the bin. <laughs> but then Harriet and Trey rescued it, and uh, they, they, they rang the number at the bottom of the page, and next thing you know, we're on tour. Wow. Well, I think we can all guess which way you'll be voting from now on. Do you know what? It's funny, because Angela and I don't usually vote. We were not very political. I'm a mathematician, of course, and she's a paraplegic, mainly. But we did used to watch that Peter Clements DIY show back in the day. And so we thought, uh, why not? Let's have a go with this old democracy thing. Okay. And here we bally well are. <laughs> Good stuff. Fucking brilliant. So, let's have a look at a short another day at this school. I'm not sure I can take another day. Another day of tears. Tears. Another day of fears. Fears. But still I walk the corridors alone. Alone. Dreading what might be around every corner. What's around the corner? What's around the corner? What's around the corner? Oh, hi, Gary. Oh, heavens no! It's Gary the Fist! Gary the Fist! Going somewhere, little first year? Great! I've been looking for some poor victim to bully all morning. But will this make me feel better about my violent father? Violent father. Excuse me, I'm late for maths. It's my favourite subject. And so important. And so important. Maths is for losers. What? Maths is for losers. My arm's stuck, coach. Just keep going for fuck's sake. Right. Uh, uh, maths is for losers. Now, give me your lunch money. Double lunch for me today, but... Why am I only truly happy when I'm eating? Why am I only truly happy when not I'm Not today, Gary the Fist. Not today. What do you mean not today? Who are you? What do you mean not today? My arms three coat. Brilliant, keep going. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, who are you to stand up to me? I, Gary the Fist. And you're just a sad little girl with two gay dads who's all alone. Oh boy. That's where you're wrong, Gary the Fist. These are my two new friends. Vanessa is captain of the netball team. Yeah. And Blake owns a motorbike. Yeah. But, but, I can't fight all three of you. And I don't have any friends of my own. Now I just gotta be in time. Which is easy if you're a musician. Yeah, just tap your foot to this and you'll get it. Life's pretty hard on a council estate. 
Much pretty hard on a council estate. Much pretty hard on a council estate. Much pretty hard on a council estate. Much pretty hard on a council estate. If you work as a team, just work as a team. It's your choice to be me. It's my choice. So well. Thankfully, that's all we have time for tonight on the National Nightly News. <laughs> Wonderful. Join us tomorrow night for all the headlines from across the country. <laughs> My name is Jeremy Dalton. Have a peaceful night. And we're out. <laughs> what the literal fuck was that? I believe that was us. We're here to help. I believe I've got a 14-day. The new advanced go-getters initiative will ensure that... Ah, uh, wonderful. That fucking song. ...of benefits that only a true community can provide, while keeping us informed of all the ups and downs to help make things... Well, I should try and get the update going. ...building the nation's future has never been so rewarding. With the go-getters, you can be sure that your children will be well-equipped in the march towards progress. After all, there's nothing better than moving forwards. The advanced go-getters. Forwards. Together. Forwards together. All right. Well, there you go. Boom. Fantastic. I'm great. Broke ass poor. Nope. Worry in debt. Neil's deal went down. No, not Neil's deals. Oh, apparently I made them look a bit better. All right. We're going to save and, and quit out of this. And we're going to take a five minute break. Well, actually, we're going to take a little bit of break. So that way I can download the new version.
Alright, and the internet still seems to be fucking itself at the at the moment, which is great news. I love when that happens. Ugh. <sighs> but we're back. Dova T has shown up. Hey, Dova T. There we go. Good evening. I'm Excellent. And I'm Jeremy Dawes. Our main headline headline. Back to work. And you've made advances on me. It's good to know that even in the full release, though, that the, the load screens are ridiculously long. <laughs> always, always great. I love long loading screens. It gives me time to scratch my balls. Change the air in my tires. Have a nap. Sometimes that's all you need in the middle of a game. It's just, just time to take a nap. It happens. All right, here we go. 1.0, heck yeah, heck yeah. All right, you arrive home to another long shift, waiting for a thing, recognize Sam's hurried scrawl. Chris has been evicted for not paying rent. Uh-oh, that's my fault. Uh, don't wait up. Underline twice. So this is your. This is my fault now. Great. You soakily press play on the cheap horror film you were gonna watch together. It used to absolutely terrify you, you, terrify you as a kid, but always makes the two of you laugh. Yep, that's um, that's the that's troll two for me. That used to scare the shit out of me as a kid. I was really afraid of being turned into a tree. Uh, that I I couldn't I couldn't watch that. I didn't I didn't want to become a plant. Fun funnily enough, though, I could watch Troll 1 just fine. It's not the same without Sam, but you still chuckle to yourself occasionally. Cuddles! Hello from Russia! Hello from America! Let's be friends! Just as you get to the good bit, the part where Candy decides to investigate alone, your 14-year-old son interrupts you, he wants to go to a friend's house, he looks at you in a way only a child can, pleading but somehow defiant. No, he's not allowed out. It's too late. It's a school night. He stays home. He gets louder and louder as he sees you're not going to change your mind. You pretend it's for my own good, but really you just want to be left alone. I fucking hate you. He knows he's gone too far, but in his rage, he can't bring himself to back down. Before you can open your mouth, he storms up the stairs and slams his door. I'm going to go check on my son before bed. You knock on Charlie's door and when there's no answer, you quietly open it. Your son is under the duvet, sulking. My son has a duvet. Boy. He's determinedly facing the wall, but once it's clear you're not leaving until he talks to you, he sighs and turns to face you. He needs to learn to control his temper. He begrudgingly apologizes for his outburst, and both of you sleep much easier having cleared the ear. Hooray for me and my son. Woo! A tight Christmas. You can't help but crack a smile as you look around the table. The snow has settled on the grass outside. The kids are pulling a cracker while your elderly mother tries to keep her eyes open. You did always have a soft spot for Christmas. You're sitting at the head of the table now, your dad's place. It's been tense. It's been a tense afternoon. Everyone can feel it. It's the first time you've seen Chris since you refused to part with your passport. It's a big change for Sam. The two siblings used to be inseparable. Christmas is usually such a nice time of year. The clatter of cutlery is all that can be heard as Chris staringly po stares pointedly at you. Are you having a nice Christmas, Grandma? Your mother stares vacantly at you, confused. She comes back to herself with a start of recognition. Yes, thank you, Alex. It's lovely. It's been happening more and more. The clatter of cutlery is all you hear. You make a toast. 
Merry Christmas, everyone! I'm glad we're all here. There are murmurs of cheers and much clinking of glasses. Chris doesn't move. Yeah, we're all here, no thanks to you. Chris, Sam, sighs Sam. Now come on, it's Christmas. Can't we put that behind us? Sam's right. Let's try and enjoy ourselves. Chris turns away from you, taking some frustration out on a cheap cut of roast chicken. Your daughter Susie seizes the opportunity to corner you. You know how you love me? You chuckle. This sounds familiar. I'm not gonna like this, am I? She rolls her eyes. You know me and my friends are planning on traveling this year. Well, I was hoping you'd help me with money. She inter she's interrupted by Chris, who makes a diversive snort. I wouldn't hold your breath, Susie. Not known for generosity, are you, Alex? Chris, do us a favor, blah, blah, blah. I smile at my daughter. I'm ignoring Chris. We see so many parts of the world and learn so much about other cultures. You, you sigh and lower your voice. You know money is really tight now that Grandma's staying here. We just don't have that kind of money, Susie. But please, Harriet's parents are helping her. All right, we'll find a way to make it work. Sam interrupts. Sorry, were you just going to consult me on this or were you going to car just carry on pretending I don't exist? <laughs> You feel your cheeks flush red, turn away so Chris can't see. You know you haven't been the most attentive lately, but this rebuke seems harsh. Sam exhales and seems to brighten, but luckily for someone, I agree. This is a great opportunity, and I'm sure we can find the money somewhere. Sam isn't looking at you. Charlie excuses himself awkwardly as you start to clear the plates in silence. Have you had a bad... Have you had... Have you had a nice birthday, Pat? Your mother chimes in cheerfully. Merry fucking Christmas. Alright, well, they didn't re-add the telethon. That's a shame. There is a There, there was an update. A free little uh, broadcast on day 56, but we, we don't get that, I guess. That's a shame. We, we'll have to play that later, maybe. You're leading, you're leafing through the pile of accumulated post. Each new bill pulls on your gut like a lead weight until the flash of blue makes you pause. Recognizing the teal advance logo on the envelope, you tear it open. Dear Winston residents, thank you for sending us your passports for approval. We can now confirm their receipt and validation for the new assets and wealth redemption scheme. Hopefully this will make the last month of arguments with Sam worth it. As such in our, it is, it, it, it our pleasure, as such, it our pleasure to enclose a check, which we hope you will see as a symbol, not only of our gratitude to you, but our unwavering commitment to creating a society free of inequality. The throbbing of your fresh speed-induced paper cut is the only reason you can't believe you're awake. A check! Hooray! Current wealth! The things are looking up! Why does the zip on this damn case never close? It's your anniversary. Every year, you and Sam go away for the weekend, usually camping. You're not made of money. You've been looking forward to it for ages, finally getting some time alone when you can forget about the noise of life. No kids, no work, just a bit of romance and some peace and quiet. The zip finally gives up the bottle, battle, and you drag the bulging suitcase down the stairs. The answer machine is blinking on the hall table. Good evening, Alex. This is Mr. Bozeman. I'm calling to inform you that you'll be required to work this weekend. Some information has come to light concerning the rise in tensions between our nations and foreign powers, and the National Nightly News team will be working around the clock to ensure we break the story first. Needless to say, I will expect your attendance tomorrow morning, 8 p.m. sharp. Have a pleasant evening, Alex. What am I gonna tell Sam? She comes down the stairs, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we're ignoring it, whatever. Sorry, Mr. Bozeman, I was already gone. I came back to the message already on the machine. There's nothing I could have done about it. If only cell phones existed. <laughs> what was that? Nothing important. Let's go on fucking vacation. I'm gonna suffer for this on Monday. This is why you never give your boss cell phones. That way you can make excuses like this. When you get to work Monday morning, you get some sour looks from your exhausted colleagues. The immaculate script is blood red. I'm very disappointed, Winston.
a permission slip. Your son Charlie hovers at your elbow as you read. Do you find yourself striving? Do you, do you find yourself striving to achieve? Are you an active member of the team? Do you like reaping the benefits of cooperation? Join the advanced go-getters today. Forwards, together. This doesn't sound like the youth club he told you about. Charlie grabs the flyer from you and thrusts a form into your hand. So I can walk there straight from school and Ben's sister can drop us home after so you won't have to do anything. No, 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 no. You're not doing that. No, 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 no. That is that. That is literally the Hitler youth. You are not doing that. No, no, no. Sorry, mate. I just don't think it's the right place for you. The ha you hand the form back. What? That's so much fair. You know it seems that way, Charlie, but you'll understand soon enough. I'm not letting my son join the Hitler youth. A free ticket. Some guys at work gave them to me. They can't go. Stan, they can't go. Sam stands in front of you, brandishing two tickets. You see the title in bold letter letters. Alan James is right in front of you. I'm really unsure. What do you think? Free tickets are free tickets. He's a character and it'll be hilarious if nothing else. The show is entertaining, but much less funny than you thought. He's a powerful public speaker and something about it sticks in your mind. Lying in bed that night, wide awake long after Sam's breathing turns heavy, it hits you. It was the crowd. Not laughing, but... After a particularly long day at work, you come home to find the post sorted into piles Sam has taken to doing so doing recently. Most of it is usual rubbish, but a letter with the, with the increasingly familiar advanced logo and urgent respond immediately plastered on the front in a correspondingly urgent red font grabs your attention. Let's get it over with. Dear Winston residents, this letter is to inform you that the advanced government has taken another step towards our fight for equality by nationalizing the largest private organization corporations and redistributing their resources among the citizens of this great country. The partnership bonds program ensures that wealth created by the people is delivered to the people. You don't remember this being in the manifest. Every household will become a partner in one of three carefully selected institutions chosen by advance for consistent high performance and financial security. Please note all returns are based on public opinion and cannot be guaranteed. Please select one of the following. Eye of the Beholder, Meals Deals, Pleasure Corp. Remington Fist isn't an option anymore. Let's go Neil's Deals. Neil's Deals, there's like an advertisement for Neil's Deals in every single option. So uh, if I can play Neil's Deal commercials, perfect. Thank you for making your selection. Please return this form from using the envelope provided, blah, blah, blah. There we go. Moving on. This is the future, blah, blah, blah. Let's go for it. Can we, can we get to the next one now, please? I really wish they, they, they threw in the telethon into the storyline. I know it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't really add anything, but I always feel like there should be more work days. Thankfully, the, the, the bonus lockdown chapter created during, well, massive COVID lockdowns it still exists in the story, I'm fairly sure, so that's nice. All right, so now that I own stock in Neil's deals, I just have to make sure to always... There we go. Sorry. It's really annoying. If you're wondering why I'm, I'm changing it, like, with the arrow keys and stuff, it's because I'm playing with a uh, Razor Orb. Uh, w, E, S, and D. Anyways... So since that, that re-fixed itself, I'm wondering if anything else got changed around. Everything seems fine. Yeah, that all seems fine. Yep. Okay. There we go. Good evening, Alex. It's Boozman here, your boss. While you're powering up and getting the adverts loaded, I thought I should just tell you that we've had one of the read the second break. Right, that's the lot. Have a great show. 
Yeah, I'm not gonna actually play that. How's it going with Steve? Why men such pricks? That one, eh? Apparently he has a complicated relationship with his French. No. Sorry, are you saying he chose his imaginary friend in the sky over you? I don't know why I talked to you. It probably is a really awful date. Ten seconds, everybody. Like I said, all of you. 43 hours of footage isn't enough. Oh, no, it's... Okay, I'm not complaining of uh, of not enough footage. I would just like the telethon, since it does exist, to be a part of it, so that way the game lasts even longer. Uh, I I feel having an extra that the extra broadcast would just kind of add to the daily grind part of the story, since literally after day four you get to go on vacation. You know, that's all. I get why they did it, because the, the telethon one is is a very odd broadcast, you know, broadcasting something and live editing it from, uh, editing a program from like the 1950s with 1950s commercials. It's weird, you know, you don't get that on the old television channels in real life. You know, you'll, you'll watch an old program, but it's already been done, and then the commercials are all modern day. So yeah, it's just... The Good evening. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. And I'm Megan Wolf. Our main stories tonight. Uncooperative. A mysterious symbol has appeared overnight on Fabi, the daring first move of a silent resistance movement. And what would that mean as we go into the future? We shall overcome. Trapped in Dante's taint for more than a month now, Doctors Ingrid Scorsborg and Horgensbord and David Wong announced today that they're considering two possible options. With two of the finest minds in science working together, hopes are still high for the eventual return of the team to drive. Oh, Without yeah. enough engineers to successfully fix their craft, the team seem likely to attempt to farm the cavern's ecosystem while they wait for rescue from above ground. <laughs> I think I'll stick to risotto, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> Bearing their opinions, the formerly rich are fighting back with a naked protest. Our very own Robin Short was on hand earlier today when this new protest group first presented themselves. <laughs> it might seem amusing to us, but clearly this formerly overprivileged section of our society is not adjusting well to the new future. It's often too easy to forget that not every citizen is thriving under the advance. Fallen angel, notorious addict Johnny Hamsleeve seems to have reached a new low in his battle with... Oh no, not Johnny Hamsleeve. <laughs> Johnny's star certainly lacks its former glow these days. Oh my god. All right, I am terribly sorry about that. <clears throat> With public concern over his mental and physical health growing at an alarming rate. 
Since being banned from the national squad earlier this year after urinating on a referee during a friendly against East Grinchley, things seem to have gone from bad to worse for Hamsleys. Is this one celebrated role model about to become the bad boy of sport? And onwards and upwards. In an attempt to put the Mr. Snuggle Hugs disaster behind them, Rimington's Fist CEO Sophia Rimington today announced a brand new product that already has the markets buzzing with interest. This groundbreaking product came as quite a shock when it was revealed earlier today. Though its critics are skeptical that the young CEO can fulfill her promises. Described as a breakthrough far ahead of its time, the male contraceptive pill is heralding a sexual revolution. Its fans are celebrating the fact that men can finally take equal responsibility for contraception. But others have expressed concerns over its safety and side effects. With that exclusive Prime Ministerial interview coming up later. And our very own Patrick Bannon coming to you live from the first annual Sports Board Final. You won't want to miss a second of tonight's National Nightly News. Oh, here we go. I, I really dislike interference. I know it's not a big deal, but it's just, uh, I just like the old one better. Caused by Mr. Snugglehugs, we have an exclusive interview with one of the victims. Poor seven year old Timmy Tadlock, like so many of those affected by the Christmas bloodbath, has spent the last three months undergoing a series of reconstructive facial surgeries. Last week, joyfully, he spoke for the first time since the tragedy. Tonight, he talks to us. Before we go to the interview, however, this station would like to issue a full and frank apology for any part we may have played in the tragedy. We should never have advertised Mr. Snugglehugs. That our publicity. That's my fault. Scared of this tragedy, and now upwards of 8,000 casualties might have been averted. On behalf of the nightly news team, we're sorry. In future, we will do better. Now it's over to Robin Short at the Tadlock family home. Robin. Thank you, Megan. I'm here with Mr. and Mrs. Tadlock and their seven-year-old son, Timothy. Thanks for spending time with us today. Yes, well, you're very lucky we're spending any time with you at all. After what you lot did, irresponsible. <laughs> I mean, whose idea was this anyway? I, mean, I just played a commercial. It's not my fault. As you can see, Megan, there's still a few open wounds here. I'll tread carefully. I'm going to speak to Timmy now. Hello, Timmy. Can you see me? Mummy, who's that lady? It's the lady from television, Timothy. She's going to ask you a few questions. Now you be careful now. It upsets him to remember. Don't worry, Mr. Tadlock. I wasn't the youngest ever editor of the Swinstead Middle School Inquirer for no reason. So, Timmy, can you tell us what happened to you? You had just unwrapped Mr. Snugglehug's hand. Was he under the tree? Yes. I could smell him already. He smelled like love. Ah, uh, yes. He smelled like love. Scented with her. I was so excited. I ran up to my room and gave him a big hug. He was so soft and warm, like our cat, before he got in the way of Daddy's Porsche. Jolly cat had a death wish. And what did Mr. Snugglehug say to you? He blinked his real action eyes and said, you're my very best friend. But I sure wish Mrs. Snugglehug was here, and she can't be. We're just $89.99. And, <laughs> and then it's a general error. Oh no! And is that when he burst into flames? Look careful. And then he exploded. <laughs> Look, I've asked you nicely. And am I right in saying that one of his real action eyes is now permanently embedded in your cheek? Yes. When I took him in at night, it glows through bandages. I know it's under there, staring at me. Yeah, some of the <laughs> other children have started calling him Timmy Three Eyes. And then with his glasses, that's five. It's too many eyes, Robin. <laughs> and what's the last thing you remember before the darkness overtook you? He looked at me with his one eye and laughed. Laughed as he burned. It 
sounds very traumatic. Oh. You have nightmares. All oh, right, that's quite you, enough of you me? two in coming me? in here with your camera trying to make a buck out of our suffering. I won't have it. Mr. Tadlock, just a couple more questions. <laughs> Timmy, do you think you will ever be what we can call no, no, you've normal had your questions again? <laughs> Oh, you've made him cry with all three of his eyes. Calm down, your I will Do you think your parents will ever really Marjorie. love you again? Quite, that's it. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Tadlock. No, no, no. Poster, your favorite friend, Timmy, are you okay? Oh, no, the poster. Just one of the many victims of an indescribable tragedy that has shaken our nation. Thank you, Robin. Harrowing stuff. And many questions to be answered by Sophia Remington in the coming days and months, I'd wager. How will she turn this crisis around? So, Jeremy, what are the warning signs a consumer should look out for when they're spotting a dangerous toy? Well, Megan, experts advise to always check for the new advanced mark, which guarantee a level of safety and quality. Yeah, can we just get a close-up on, on camera three here? So if we take a look at this... It's camera two, actually? Mark, oh, camera three. Just on the base of it there. In the wake of the scandal, the government were praised for their swift response in bringing in this set of stringent checks and new products. It certainly is good to know that someone's watching out for our families. When we come back, our very own Patrick Bannon will be live from the Sports Board Finals. Stick around, you won't want to miss it. We'll be back after these messages. One minute back. Oh, sorry, I'm <laughs> bursting. Oh! He's very good. Mm. They're good. Yes, she is. Watch your back, Jeremy. The women are coming. I'm more worried about this water dripping into my head. Alex, over. We're getting reports in that naked protesters might try and spoil the sports board final by waving their fleshy bits about. Oh no! Try make sure you don't broadcast it. Not the fleshy bits. Sake. No one wants to see fannies on the news. Bozeman out. Who doesn't want to see a nice fanny? Which is not a butt. In England, fanny does not mean butts. In America, a fanny is a butt. And everyone wants to see a butt. But I think I think we'll happily see fannies beyond the news. I don't think we really care. Just, just show us fannies. Well, that's what it says. They're wonderful. Yes, I understand that, but I always say welcome back. I think we should just keep it as it is. Well, of course you do. I've got one hack line. What's that supposed to mean? I didn't write it, Jeremy. That's all right, fine. Jenny, there's nothing wrong with the auto cue. Ten seconds. Oh, I just felt a drip again. Have they not fixed this? I want to see us fry. It's good for the ratings. Five, four, three. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. I'm Megan Wolf. Coming up later, we'll be speaking to the Prime Ministers about their exciting new healthcare facilities, transition centres. Nice to see they care. <laughs> You're absolutely right, nice Jeremy. But first, we're going now to our own Patrick Bannon, who's reporting live from the finals of the new. All right, thing that's get ready. This is fucking bizarre. Patrick, that's right, Megan. You join me live here from the final, the first annual Sports Board Championship. It's been a hotly contested competition so far. I think it's fair to say these two have been dancing around each other all season. First up, we have Eddie Stryker. She's the more experienced of our two players today. Stryker has got an accuracy of 7, a danger rating of K, and a 12-month driving ban. Stryker's known for her signature move, the Lanky Hamster. And facing her tonight, hoping to prove himself with a career record of 12 outs, 14 finishes, and a divorce pending, is Mr. Wingspan himself, Tommy, the finger now, Harris. Just waiting on the ref now. The slapping ceremony is taking part. Still going on. Sorry, her her t-shirt being so dirty right on the tits is always so distracting to me. I don't... I, <sighs> she won the trivia round earlier on by some margin. The rogue. Uh, Harris, uh, perhaps the, the brawn and not the brain. Play, Stupid. Eddie Stryker. Eddie Stryker. Nice start there from Stryker. She's determined not to let the nerve show. Uh, not after that, <laughs> fine. On to Mr. Harris now, Tommy. On to Mr. Harris now, Tommy. Using his arm to pick up the ball. Using his arm to pick up the ball. Not a bad shot there from uh, from Harris. Back to striker. For shot number three. All right. She's gone to sort of throwing it under her legs. Uh, not bad if you ask me. Get away completely. Mr. Harris. 
Bit of business with the ref, but it got sorted out. Back to Harris now. A ball in the hand is worth two in the bush. It took so long to actually understand sports board. As far as I can tell, the only rule, <laughs> the, the major rule is don't get the ball in the bucket. <laughs> if you don't get the ball in the bucket, that's how you win. Say that's fair, but what do I know? Oh no, and Harris is not going to be happy with that. So really not a good start there for Tommy Harris in round one. We can only hope that round two could be a bit better. Uh, but first, of course, after the argument with the ref section, it's time to change ends. Now we have the ceremonial changing of the ends. And of course, now they go back to the starting positions, as that makes sense. Striker giving it large. Second round, new play. Harris. Wins around two now with Harris. Okay, we seem to have some sort of streak on the pitch. Uh, oh, that was some, some boobies. Um, you appear to have slogans across her breasts and arse. Um, uh, try and ignore all of that. Security, I'm sure we're going to take them out as soon as possible. Uh, Apologise if uh, we we broadcast any of that. As I said, uh, we're going to get oh, some sort of Oh, no, 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 job, boobs. Uh, There's so many boobs. Play, but it's probably a bit difficult, and I'm struggling to follow. Because um, uh, it's quite an eyesore, and um, women's bodies... Actors spent all day recording, all recording day getting water sprayed on her to get that look. Very committed to the craft and the uncomfortable as fuck. Yeah, right, great. <laughs> okay, so back into round two now, uh, and Harris absolutely determined to close that massive gap. Yeah, it seems like it'd be uncomfortable. No, it's just some of the tightest play I've seen ever. No, it's just some of the tightest play I've seen ever. Harris. And with that offensive thumb screw, we haven't seen that the heat. What a brilliant move. Back to striker. And we know what that means, ladies and gentlemen. That is, of course, the ground sound. Of course, the ground sound. Excellent bit of play here on both sides of the bucket. Excellent bit of play here on both sides of the bucket. I don't know about you at home, but I'm finding the technical mastery in this play here absolutely blooming, jaw-dropping. Ref has spotted something in uh, Harris's neck or head. And Harris is having an absolute shocker. What a miserable start there for Tommy Harris. Uh, but he is a late bloomer, of course, boys. And after all, it is a game of two halves. Uh, four rounds and seven subjects. But now, of course, it's time for the half time show. Sponsored by Livingston Smith. On my whistle, on my whistle. Nice piece of music here to start the half time show. <laughs> Okay, another posh poster salute on the court here. We can only apologize for that. Um, we'll All right, I got I got to watch here to see where they're um, going. He's uh, running around here with his genitals uh, on display for all to see. Um, and uh, ruining what was shaping up to be quite the dance interlude there. Um, now he's thrusting himself in uh, in Harris's face. Security is on it. Uh, and the bucket has been knocked over. I cannot stand it when the bucket gets knocked over. Um, hopefully he'll get taken out now. Um, uh, genitals flying around for all to see. Um, Really, if you ask me, not Sunday morning television. Um, and uh, out of there, uh, hopefully uh, taken away, never to be seen again. Uh, final pose, <laughs> final pose. Oh boy, cannot be in the final pose. And a lovely finish there on both sides of the bucket. I wouldn't like to call that one. Uh, and as we head into round three, I'd love to know what's going on in these two players' heads. Uh, but unfortunately, because of science, we can't. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Not bad. He's good, he's good. Not bad. Well, that ball boy's giving me the eye all day. I don't know what's going on there. Ball boy's me the eye uh, striker there, not a great start. Um, she looks a bit right in the bucket. The after all that swinging around. Back to Harris here. God, what I wouldn't give to be that ball. I'm all right, ladies. God, what I wouldn't give to be that ball. I'm all right, ladies. Tommy Harris. Tommy Harris. And it dribbles down his arm, which is actually a really good move, because, of course, if it dribbles down his arm and goes on the floor, it's not going in the bucket. Back to striker. Back to striker. And striker's gone for the animal bonus there, but of course, perhaps. And yes, Harris has counted with a tiny bell. That is wonderful. Drive. Wow, what a play! What a play! Counters it with the bell. Um, that could have been the clincher. What a massive shame. Um, Harris receives possession now. Uh, Harris to serve now. Um, Harris, of course, undefeated by Kestrel. He's lost four battles. So, um, here we go. Tommy Harris. Tommy Harris. 
That's all right. That's all right. Not bad there. He threw it quite far away from him, which is quite a good idea. Very clever there. Perhaps a little contact. A caution from the referee, who's being, if you ask me, a little bit harsh. Ellie Stryker. And she's let the nose get into her. What the hell was that? You came to see it, don't you? You cannot believe it. Oh, for God's sake. OK, like, I mean, this is a mess now. I, I don't know what I can be doing about this. Um, uh, I mean, there's sort of uh, uh, breasts and genitals for all to see. Um, I mean, there's only so much you can do. Um, they, they're full of everywhere, aren't they? Uh, all right, I'll, I'll try and carry on. Um, the players are trying to carry on, but of course it's difficult because um, because these protesters are uh, hoping we can get them taken off soon so we can carry on with the match. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Okay, so what is going on here? Yes, yes. We want our money. Yes, very good. Take them away. Can be. Bloody wasters. Absolute wasters. Oh man, it's so it's it's so it's such chaos. I love it. Okay, and now we're going to go into the final round. Uh, and of course, as it's a Tuesday, the final round is a mime round. Who could believe it? Who could believe it? Nice imaginary shot there from uh, Harris. It really could go in at this point. Um, really high level. Players. I love how the ball collector still runs to get the imaginary ball. Uh, the bucket getting moved back to its proper place. It's about time, if you ask me. She's uh, juggling it around from her hand. Uh, interesting. And she's uh, put it in her mouth like as if it was an egg. And now she's um, and she's spat it out. She did the egg spit. So uh, a wonderful move there, quite late on uh, from striker. But she did it to win it. On it like a car bonnet. Uh, Tommy Harris here, having a bit of beef. And he's peeling it as if it were a banana, which is an interesting move. Um, not sure if he hasn't had his potassium or what's going on today with Harris. And he's trying to have the banana with the ball. What a fantastic move there from Harris. Unfortunately, that is the end. What a pathetic. There we go, Jeremy. That is over. How can he look his eight-year-old son in the face tonight? What a lump. Uh, we just have to wait for the referee now to announce it. To make oh, he's just so shattered. Mm -hmm. Contestants in, please. And the winner and the of the winner. first annual the sports, first board sports Board Championship is... again a win for everyone uh, including me as my 15th win in the sports board championship um, i'm going to be celebrating tonight with my wife and children uh, another wonderful victory for me uh, here come the on-site security to collect their medals uh, their sixth and seventh respectively um, and thanks again for watching uh -oh. the uh, oh there's the electricity uh, what more is there to say i'm patrick bannon um, looking forward to celebrating tonight um, and all i always have to say jeremy is back to you in the studio Patrick Bannon there had an extraordinary final. Historic sports board, Jeremy. I didn't know you were a fan. Oh, yeah, I can wrench a doubler with the best of them, I'll have you know. I certainly wouldn't bet against you. When we come back, I'll be talking live with Prime Ministers Julia Salisbury and Peter Clements, who apparently have a big announcement you wouldn't want to miss. That's coming up after these messages. One minute back. Fucking All right. Microphone shot me. Fucking microphone. Fucking microphone just shot me. Where's that sound guy? Everything okay? Sporting legend. I've got it all. There he is. We just watched him lose a game. A bidet and an enlarged prostate gland. Postman again. Just heard from the chaps in maintenance that the storm is about Yes, the storm's getting bad. Be ready for it. Shut up, boss. If the prostate becomes enlarged, it can put pressure on the bladder. This can cause trouble starting to pee, and it can cause laundry-based trouble between you and your she-demon of an ex-wife. So what caused this big old prostate in your bum? Well, sorry, me and the doctors, we don't know. But I can tell you, as you get older, your body changes, and that's okay. 
If you're worried about your swollen bum sack, book an appointment for God's sake. Mm. Procedure, it's easy, it's quick. You'll see, Dan. Ten seconds, everybody. No, mine's five. Have you had a little accident? Five, four, three. Rectums, check them. I am delighted to be joined by Prime Ministers Julia Salisbury and Peter Clement. Welcome to the National Nightly News, Prime Ministers. Oh, please, it's just Julia and Peter. We don't believe much in titles. It doesn't seem very advanced. We're delighted to be here. Well, firstly, I should ask how you feel about the graffiti that's been springing up across the capital. Should we be worried? Oh, no. No, you definitely shouldn't be worried. Well, not unless you've got a fatal paint allergy anyway. But, yes, it does seem that there are still some people we haven't been able to help. Mm. You know, whinges. People who get to benefit from the many advantages of the new future. And you know, Megan, as my old mum used to say, there are some pissants who just don't know how to be happy. We're working hard to reach these people, find out what they're angry about and how we can help. The door to my government is always open. Someone's dripping on me. But we didn't come here to talk about what may yet turn out to be some alternative arts project. Which we no doubt will have funded. When we want to talk to the nation about something far more exciting. Mm. Yes, your office briefed us that you have an announcement to make, but they were being surprisingly secretive about it. <laughs> Let me ask you a question, Megan. Oh, okay, it's not usually how it works, but... <laughs> what scares you? I mean, really scares you. Ah, oh. It's um, death. Uh, She's talking about death. We're all afraid of our deaths. It's part of We're being human. Sorry, are you saying that advance have cured death? That would be a vote, would it? Yep, that was definitely a drop there. But while we may not have cured death, we hope we found a way to make it much less scary. And much less painful and much less expensive. Look, which is me close-up camera, oh, then? When I was 13, me man came and got me from school. He had to go to the hospital. My granddad, he'd collapsed that morning, so we'd all to say our goodbyes. And I went in to see him, he were all frail and pale. And I, I was scared because I'd only seen him the week before, and he'd been fit as fiddle. And he said to me, Peter, he said, it's the right time. I don't ever want to be a burden to the people I love. Was that the last time you saw him? Nope. Three days later, he were back home. He lived with us for nine miserable years after that. He had to be fed with a rubber spoon. He had a commode, so he'd just take a shit right there in the lounge while we were watching football. He wouldn't even wait till half time. That sounds... Oh, um, it, it was awful. It was awful for us, but, and this is the point. It was awful for him. I could see it was destroying me, man, watching him slowly fade away. And he would beg her to turn off his breathing equipment at night, but she couldn't. Or she wouldn't. It were a crime, you see. And she didn't want to lose the children as well as her old man. No family should have to suffer like Peter's did. And now no family will have to. The ratings are through the roof here. Today opening the first of 300 new transition centers. The transition centers will handle everything for your last days. The legal, financial, medical, and emotional costs are all catered for and paid for by the government. So even the poorest citizen gets to pass on with dignity when they choose. And that choice is important. This is a service only for people who choose it. For people who feel they run their course and don't want to burden themselves or their families with a slow, long, humiliating decline. Are you okay? I, I, I don't know. I'm freaking from my asshole. Are you still on the air, Peter? No, yes. Uh, sorry, sorry. My apologies. Oh. Are, are you not worried that this new system might be open to abuse? In what way? What? Sorry, sorry, I've got a sack to get. Can I get a little bit of help here, please? That the older generation might feel somewhat... Jesus, I've lost your faith, for 
motherfucker! That one was massive! Right, no, this bastard's coming off! The, the, sorry, the, the older generation oh. might feel somewhat coerced. <laughs> Coerced into spending their final days eating gourmet food and drinking fine wine and luxury spas and gardens. Look, I am perfectly capable of. Oh, that grandmother with a rusty twat! Prime Minister, please watch your language. <laughs> <laughs> Sorted out. Right. We're launching a government information film tonight. It should tell your viewers everything they need to know. Ow. You really do move at a breathless pace. It's hard to believe you've yet to be in office a year. Oh, Megan. We're only getting started. Ow. Ow. That's all we have time for tonight. Our thank yous go out to our guests. Um, congratulations to all the winners at the Sports Board Final, and we'll see you tomorrow night at the same time. My name is Jeremy Donaldson. You can have a peaceful night. Good job, everybody. And I'm dead. So they just... I don't suppose there's any way this could be a, a good thing. Well, it's my nephew, so I think transition the moment I spot the leak. I don't think I've ever done so poorly on Sequence 3 before. Holy crap. I thought I did pretty good there. I received a small bonus. So, a little backstory. Uh, <laughs> the next episode of this was actually had to be canceled because of COVID and they went into lockdown. So instead of stopping all work on the game, they made this broadcast, which is bizarre. But wonderful. And I think the game just crashed. Oh no, it didn't crash. Alex, oh thank God you're alive. It's Jenny, the floor manager. Are you okay? Alex, Alex, you need to get it together. Look at the broadcast screen. Just look at it. That's all we've been putting out since you went down. You have to fix it now. Look left, Alex, out the window. See? You're going to need a full charge to clip that many off. Hold down the big button until it's fully charged. Then release it to zap the little fuckers. Excellent, Alex. We're broadcasting again. They must have built up while you were napping. Usually it only takes a tap on the button to clear one. Look, there's a lone one climbing now. Zap it off before it starts. Uh, I, there's one thing I want to try real quick, actually, because there's like a whole button here, so... Uh, is it, might be that one, or that one. That's to mess up the signal again. Is there a button for this? Up. Parliament will be going live for the national nightly news. 
but before that, let's take a look at what's coming up later on. This has no credibility, Jenny. No professionalism. What's wrong with this picture? It's not a mess. Everything is where it should be. It's ramshackle and characterful, and I expect you to know the difference. Of course, Megan's place look lovely, but I can't see it, can I? Thanks, Jenny. How's lock-in with the boyfriend going? Decided to take his chances on the wild streets, eh? Rather than endure another romantic comedy. Jeremy, Jenny says your hair looks stupid. Yes, I can hear her. And she says she's not talking to you. Yes, I know, I can hear her. Shall I count us in? Make it so. Okay, ten seconds. Break a leg, everyone. Preferably a furry one. It's the National Weather Report. Five, four, three. It's time to join Jeremy Donaldson. Good evening. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. And I'm Megan Wolf. Our main stories tonight. Snugglepuck. It's been almost five weeks since all the Mrs. Snugglehug's toys woke up simultaneously in factories worldwide and began searching for their husbands. The Mr. Snugglehugs we are so short-sightedly destroyed. And now, as this photograph suggests, they may be changing tactics. Built to surprisingly traditional gender stereotypes, the Mrs. Snuggle Hugs have been arming themselves with a variety of household implements. All the more reason to make sure that cat flap is taped up good and tight. This frightening new development means that even those previously thought to be relatively safe, like the young and fit, must take care to watch their backs and keep their ears open for the soft steps of sinister feet. Going stir crazy, with no signs of Mrs. Snugglehug's batteries running out and the government lockdown now in its 31st day, domestic relationships across the country are taking some unexpected turns. Dramatic reports are beginning to emerge of uncharacteristically bold behavior in homes across the country. And we're not talking about the model planes that occupy so much time in the Donaldson household. With dating options limited, many house sharers, in particular students, are finding solace in co-tenants they'd previously rejected as unfuckable, indulging in an activity that has become known as snuggle tugging. Old dogs, new tricks. Bad boy celebrity. Snuggle tugging. Announced today that he just can't wait until this lockdown's over so he can start his new career. It is, of course, up to each of us to choose how we spend this brief spell of collective unconsciousness. But if this photograph, sent by the man himself, is anything to go by, Johnny seems to be making some interesting decisions with regard to his time at home. Describing the lockdown as the rehab I never knew I needed, Hamsby seems to have decided to capitalise on that aggressive streak, announcing today that he intends to join the growing underground street fighting association when the lockdown ends, where he will, and I quote, take any wanker on for a fiver. The shape of things to come, in their own version of a lockdown for more than 45 years now, the descendants of doctors David Wong and Ingrid Svorsborg and Horgensford and their unfortunate team today managed to get a personal statement to the surface using flagellized imaging equipment. Many of the Svorsborg and Horgens brood, as they've come to be known, have certainly captured the public imagination. With a recent vote naming Helvetica Svorsborg, Morgan Wongensford, the most likely to survive a massive electric shock. I'm Sports Morgan Wongensford here with another pointless message that no one will ever see. That no one will ever see. We've been down here so long now, and you never communicate. What's happening up there? Have you all fucked off into space? You all fucked like off into space? Ladies. Or just a space for ladies. A space for ladies. Harvest time again. Like it is every third Wednesday, but like it is every third Harvard's Wednesday, not what it was. Still, someone found a couple of unopened boxes in the rusty someone wreckage. Mum and Dad must have missed them when they first got down here all those years ago. And totally effed up my life! Totally effed up my life! Kids boys, apparently. Mr. Snufflehugs or something? Helvetica's trying to get them switched on. But apparently, there's still life in the batteries, even after 30 years. Even our topsiders are amazing. Topsiders are amazing. It's hard to believe they've been down there. Oh my god. But as everyone knows, time moves differently underwater, Jeremy. That's why goldfish are so stupid. That's right. And as anyone will tell you, the deeper the bowl, the thicker the goldfish. There's no denying the logic of that. Class war, 
A worrying turn today for the formerly rich as ever more punishing measures are announced. With the country becoming ever more hostile to the previously wealthy, those who manage to skip the country must be very grateful to the people who help them right now. This program has received reports of rich relatives on the run actually being filled with helium and released into the stratosphere. If those rich bastards think they're above the rest of us, why not give them a hand in getting there, Jeremy? And Advance speaks out. With the snuggle struggle proving a test to governments around the world, Advance HQ released a curious statement this afternoon. In the accompanying release, they asked us to stress that they have been listening and that this should be taken as a response to how the people really feel. We've certainly done our bit on this show to contribute to the political climate. But let's not forget, how we behave in our home lives is what really matters. Let's hope it's not just me who filled out that questionnaire, Jeremy, or we're all in trouble. <laughs> Let's play that thing. Good evening. One of the many new jobs I have in this current crisis is to liaise on a daily basis with the Department of Perambulation, and they have made me aware of these. Now, these are genuine requests from citizens for permission to go outside. Now, I would like to share a few of these with you tonight under the loose heading of what the fuck is wrong with you people? How difficult is this to grasp? I'd like to start with James from Anger Hampton, who says he needs to go out because there's a duck in the park that I like to try and feed on a Friday. I call him Mr. Quackington, and I think we're really starting to bond. No, James, they make their hives in parks. And then Katie, from Self Righteous on Sea, wants to go out so she can deliver homemade meals to the elderly. No, Katie, stay at home. Your casserole's dire, and Shirley can get by with tins of creamed rice from the 19th. And you, Lewis, from Hamble Bamblebury, those screams you heard in the alley last night behind your house are best left to the police. Now, I want to make as clear as I can. Think first. Stop sending me stupid, sodding requests and stay inside. Pretend it's not happening until we tell you it's all over. Thank you. Thank you. Collectible stuff. Later tonight, Jeremy will be catching up with brave roving reporter Patrick Bannon while I check in with two friends of the program who find themselves stranded at opposite ends of the country. And then, in part three, there's going to be a quiz. Presumably because there's nothing more important going on that you might like to report on if you were saying a news program. And in a moment, we'll both be asking Sophia Remington how such a trusted brand can have made such a terrible manufacturing mistake. In what it describes here as help, from popular psychic scientist, Daniel oh, Lyle. Oh, I like her. Daniel <laughs> why do you do that? Well, that's all coming up on tonight's... National Nightly News. Alright. Yeah, so this, it's very bizarre. Sorry I'm not talking much, but, you know, gotta pay attention. First tonight, how did we get here? Where are we going? And most importantly, who's to blame? Joining us from her ranch in Arlingsfield, Milkirky, is the CEO of Remington Fist, internationally respected business Bengali, Sophia Remington. Thank you for having me, Megan. I'm a huge fan of your work. And from a crystal healing laboratory, what I assume is a garage in Upper Lowington, inexplicably renowned psychic scientist, Dr. Delia Lywell. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. Sorry, us? Myself and the Say eminent us. professors. Myself Is that what you call the voices in your head? Is that what you call the voices in your head? seem to attract dead scientists. I don't really know why. The money. They express themselves the to me through ethereal algebra and quadratic predictions. Algebra. It's all very technical. No, it isn't. I concur. Ms. Remington, the entire Snuggle Hub's range will surely go down as the biggest public relations disaster in history, won't it? Well, of course, that's one world record we would never have thought. Could. What can you say at a time like this? There is only one thing that can be said. 
I'm sorry. We're sorry. From everyone here at Remington Cis, but especially the dedicated inventors and world-beating engineers at Remingtons, we are deeply, deeply sorry. Who could have predicted that letting a child's toy learn how to love could have such unforeseen consequences? Mary Shelley? We see you, Sophia Remington. You are preening by a metal vessel, and where you venture, you will see neither land nor sky. Is that supposed to be the future? Only the past is concrete. I remember being a child in my grandpa's workshop when he made the first dancing hangman toy. He put it by my bed, and when I couldn't sleep, I'd wind it up and let it go, and I'd watch that happy little execution and wiggle and wave his tiny noose and dance before my eyes. Grandpa sold thousands of them. On the quiet, obviously. And he used I do wish there was a hotkey just for that fucking button over there. Which is now just one small part of the global supermassive mega core that is Remington's fist. Sadly, we lost Grandpappy along the way. He died in a fire at the preschool tobacco factory. Another one of his pet projects. But we never lost his spirit of invention. Yes, uh, I'm not entirely certain what your grandfather's offensive toys have to do with the current predicament. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna try uh, different keys here because it's just kind of weird. That quote. Okay, fair enough. The spirit of invention, Mr. Donaldson. Yeah, they just do nothing. To problem solve. And that is why I'm here today. To tell you about a brand new product we're launching simultaneously around the world from midnight tonight. We said science! Science! We hear a song on the breeze. It's fresh on the wind. It's fast under the covers. How does she do it? Well, please, don't keep us in suspense any longer. It won't be my future she's making up next. Remington's Fist is proud to present Snuggle Traps. Safety and security in these dangerous times. Each box of Snuggle Traps contains eight devices, all guaranteed to stop a missing Snuggle Hug in its track. That's enough for a small lawn or four window boxes. And you want to know the best thing? They're only $129.99 a box. Now that is affordable peace of mind. <gasps> we see you, Jeremy Donaldson. Not now, honey, I'm mid pitch. The best thing about Snuggle Traps is they're powered by next generation Flardinium batteries. So, however long the enemy lasts, these traps will not last. We see you, Mr. Donaldson. You are screaming and yelling. Your friends are crying. They fear you. And then, oh my god, I just got chills. Did anyone else just get chills then? I think I did. I think it's more concerned. I think I'd be more concerned about these traps. Um, quickly, but before we go to the break, um, these appear to be attractively repackaged landmines. Aren't they dangerous, say, to children? Oh, hell yeah. These are not toys. But they're explosive fun. Sophia Remington, Dr. Delia Lywell, thank you for joining us. When we come back, we'll be taking a look at the situation across the country tonight. Don't go away. We'll be back after these bandages. We'll be back after these bandages. Is that all right? Oh, yes, Doctor, that was exactly what we did. Good morning. This is Mr. Bozeman, and this is a Channel One informational video that is calling to the First, I'd like to take this opportunity to reassure you all that we will be staying on air, maximizing revenue, and we will be using Hello, this mate. It's Dave. You're not going to believe this, but I've decided to come home. Listen, I'll call you back in the next break, and we can talk about how I get me job back. Cheers, Alex. See you, mate. Oh, good. I don't have to keep doing this. Oh, good, good, good. He's coming back. I don't remember this call, but okay. Is it new? Finally, I don't remember. All of you of the strict guidelines you must follow during this crisis. <sighs> Stay calm, for God's sake. Panicking makes you less productive, and that makes Bozeman sad. Protect network equipment at all costs. We have literally hundreds of employees, but our budget is limited. We ask you to do the right thing and value our property over your personal safety. If you're working from home, please refrain from taking meetings on the toilet. Even if you're not going, we can still tell from the way your voice is all echoing. 
It reminds us. Pillow, though. The dress code. It's self love. You should support. I support self love. It's the photo of yourself who's sleeping. I'm loving it. It was a good day. Here, why? I was walking by the sea and I caught my own reflection. I thought, what a brave young man. Okay, coming back. In five, four, three. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. I'm Megan Roof. Now it's time to take a trip around the country to hear how the lockdown might impact the nation from some friendly faces. Joining me are respected academic Katie Brightman and author of Alan James's Kites, Alan James. Thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me, Megan. Thanks, Megan. It really is a pleasure, Katie. I enjoyed our little heated encounter. I wish I could say the same. So first off, Katie, how are you coping? I'm holding up okay. The lockdown directive was so sudden that, like many people, I haven't been able to get home. Oh no, what happened? I was staying at a hotel after an international quality convention, and we had a particularly uh, heavy night out. You know what economists are like. <laughs> Notoriously hate splitting the bill. <laughs> and I overslept, and as you can imagine, I've been here ever since. But there are certainly people much worse off than me. Exactly. My tour has been cancelled indefinitely. Oh no! Refund every single ticket, even the cheap seats. Oh, Alan, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah, people are being quite rude about it. They don't seem to realise they've already spent it filling the beach house with beef. The crisis claims yet another victim. So, this is just a reminder that my book, Alan James's Reich, is now available in paperback. Unbelievable. What was that? You. You're unbelievable. So, Katie, how do you think this might affect the economy? Should we be worried? Very, Megan. Not to sound dramatic, but this could be catastrophic. Unemployment has skyrocketed, and frankly, it will be a miracle if a lot of businesses can survive this. Here you go, scaremongering again, spreading this latest liberal hoax. That's what they want. They want us quiet. They want us compliant. And they want us inside. A hoax? How on earth can you say that, Alan? Well, I haven't actually seen one of these supposed toys. Have you? Well, no, but... Did you know 3,000 people die every year from regular toys? That's a lot of people. And this is no different. You're just as likely to be hunted down by a yo-yo or a tennis racket. Mm, he makes an excellent and persuasive point, Katie. Don't listen to her, Katie. The press are the enemy of truth. She's agreeing with you, Alan, you absolute She's shit! Agreeing. Well, then I must be wrong. Alan, are you now recanting your statement that these toys aren't dangerous? People are saying they're just like normal toys, and that simply isn't true. Corrupt media lies. And Katie, how do you respond to Alan's claims that Mrs. Snuggle Hugs might be dangerous after all? I suppose I... I guess I'm agreeing with him. Thank you, Katie. I appreciate your support. A lot of folks are saying this Mrs. Snugglehug situation will all blow over, but it won't. Uh, yes, right, exactly. We need decisive action from the government. We need huge... Look at that sandwich. ...to protect our workers and our businesses. We need to support the vulnerable, and we need... ...to repent. Exactly right, Katie. We brought it on ourselves with all our liberal indulgences like art, cake, and health care. We need to act now and begin sacrificing our firstborn or as a person of a loved family pet. Absolutely, Alan. If we can all successfully come together as a community and perform the ritual, hopefully we will appease the great ancient. <laughs> Katie, could it be any worse? Luckily, over the past few years under advance, they've invested heavily into health. So the system can actually bear the strain. Is it lucky that the llama lords have unleashed a horde of man-made monsters on its own people to... Goddamn llama lords! Will you just stop for five fucking seconds? The global alliance of fish people are amassing an army... Me, 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 me. Amassing an army to kidnap... Me, 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 I don't, I don't sound like that. Yes, you do. You do, Alan. You do sound like that. And that's why no one wants to be your friend. I've got loads of friends. No, you haven't. I don't think you do, Alan. Yeah, stop lying, Alan. Not lying. You are... Oh, good one. Oh, good one. 
Oh. Well, I'm telling. Alan James. Alan, you know Katie what they Brighton. say about Thank you for Alan, joining I'm me. I'm getting my needle. Food for thought there from two of the territory's leading minds. Any moment now, I'll be heading over to Jeremy, who is going to be bringing us an up-to-the-minute report of the status of the nation. Over to you, Jeremy. Thank you for what I'm sure was a reasonable debate which really contributed to the national conversation. Next, out on the streets, someone who's always doing exactly that. It's Patrick Brennan. Are you there, Patrick? Uh, hello, Jeremy. Yes, hello. I'm here. I'm here live. Um, apologies for the quality of the broadcast today. Um, couldn't find any cameramen or, or women uh, brave enough to come and join me, so uh, I'm out here on my own. Right, and uh, can you tell us what it's like out there? Yep, I can. It's uh, uh, As you can see behind me, the streets are currently completely deserted. Uh, but my question, Jeremy, is just how long? I mean, could there be danger lurking just around the corner, waiting to end the fledgling career of this young promising man before his, his full potential is even realised? Will he die underappreciated by management and, frankly, if you ask me, very, very much underpaid? I don't think there's any danger of that, Patrick. Um, what's that on your jacket there? Oh, that, that's actually a sponge. Uh, I've made a, what I've done here is made a snuggle-proof jacket, Jeremy. Uh, the network didn't bother sending me any PPE, uh, so I've been forced to improvise. Um, in fact, showing the sort of resourcefulness that would make me an ideal candidate for, I don't know, for example, an anchor position starting whenever they'd like. <laughs> From your point of view, Patrick, um, just how safe are our streets? Uh, not, not, not safe at all, Jeremy, not safe at all. Uh, I'd recommend people staying inside, uh, following government advice, and not putting themselves at any risk at all. Uh, unless, of course, uh, like me, it's for groundbreaking journalism reasons. Mm -hmm. And just where are you, Patrick? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, in the street, on the street. Which street? Uh, I'm, uh, uh, I think I'm, I'm struggling to hear you, actually, uh, Jeremy, there. Which street? Which street are you on? Oh, which, which street am I on? <laughs> um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just looking for a sign. Uh, oh, there it is. I'm, I'm on ba uh, uh, Bannon Avenue. Bannon Avenue? Yep. Bannon Avenue. Yeah, no, I can hear you fine. Yep, I'm on Bannon Avenue on the sign, it says there. Like Patrick Bannon? Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that is like, that's strange, that's a weird sign. I don't know what's going on there. Where are you really? I'm on Bannon, Oh, um... All right, fine, I'm not on Bannon Avenue, I'm on, I'm at home, to be honest. All right, fine, well, I mean, I'm in my bathroom, technically, but, you know, I, I couldn't face it, to be honest, mate. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's terrible out there, I don't want to go outside, they're everywhere. I'm sorry for lying. We don't expect any less of you, Patrick. We don't expect any less of you, Patrick. Can you hear that tap? I can, yes. Uh, I'm no expert, Patrick, but it sounds unmistakably like a, a tiny fist tapping on your door there. Oh, fuck, no. Oh, fuck, Jeremy, shit, no. Oh, bollocks. Perhaps there's a small queue of tiny fists, each wielding a different gendered and household implement. Ready to right bash now. in the heads of lying little roving reporters. But you're lying, aren't you? Oh shit, fucking, 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 listen, listen to me, listen to me, you bastards. If you're out there, just to piss off, you little fucking snuggle fuck. I'm too talented to die. I'm too talented to die. What the? No. Okay, okay, it's fine. It's fine. Oh god. Oh, god. Don't worry, oh, god. Patrick. Uh, I'd say you've got a few seconds before they break their way in there and finish you off. <laughs> what do you see, Patrick? Patrick for that report showing the nation and uh, more importantly management just where you belong. It's time for another break but uh, when we come back we'll be able to take your mind off the world for a little while and who knows maybe even bring you a few smiles. Join us after this. You're damn right. Yeah I had them delivered. Yes. It's a Bannon Avenue.
one loose in the studio. Whack it on the head if it gives you any trouble. It's pretty bad here too, mate. They've got on board. Captain's down. Worse, chef's down and we're out of rum. Oh, no. I mean, that's the important thing, I guess. No, I'm not. I'm not going to. I don't have to. No, you're being a child. I'm not. I'm not. No, no. Oh. Five, four, three. Welcome back. Okay, so the button doesn't work, but does the whack work? Let's see. to the National Nightly. Well, welcome back anyway. We know isolation isn't easy, so finally tonight, we oh. have something a bit different for you. Even though some people find it's not our job to entertain the public with absolute nonsense, other more important... So the new, the new, the, 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 the whole fan snuggle hugs thing, it, the buttons just don't work. That's real disappointing. People overall those people. So it's time to find out who will National Nightly win. And who will National Nightly lose? So, how do we play? Well, joining me as a man who knows all about playing, it's Tommy Harris. Hello, Tommy. All right, Johnny. It's good to see you. And uh, how are you finding a lockdown, Tommy? What do you mean, lockdown? The enforced isolation of everyone in the country. Ah, yeah, I think I heard about that, actually, yeah. You're in bed, Tommy. Yeah, you called during that time, so... Of course, that's my fault. So, um, why don't you tell us how the game is played? Well, it's pretty simple, Jeremy, you sausage. I'm going to ask contestants from around the territory three questions about what else yours truly. And those people are going to get a chance to win a very special prize. And what are they paying for, Tommy? Drum roll, please. Jeremy. Oh. Jeremy. Thank you. This. Is that? What is that? It's my athletic support, Jeremy. Oh. But I've signed it, so. Oh, well then. What a fantastic prize. Have we got anybody waiting to win this once in a lifetime prize, Jerry and Jimmy? I believe we have Angie on the line. Um, how do you feel about winning this man's old pants, Angie? I've never been so excited, Jeremy. And can I just say, I love you, both of you. Well, you've said it now, haven't you? Oh, uh, Angie, I love you, in a way. Tell us about yourself, Angie. Well, what can I say? My name is Angie, <laughs> always has been. Um, I'm a human woman. And my dental hygiene has been oh, important that she's a human woman. Brilliant! Right, well, shall we get this shambles on the way? Absolutely, John. Can I get 30 seconds on the clock, please? We haven't got a clock. Yeah, I did ask for a clock. So, well, um, why don't you start, and I'll stop you when it inevitably becomes unbearable to watch. I love it. All right, here we go. Time starts no, 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 now. Question one. When... Is my birthday. The 13th of August at 7.19 a.m. That is absolutely correct. Question two. What? I said, what is my favourite colour? Crushed praline four. Correct. The colour of my nipples. And finally, <laughs> Angie dear, what is my star sign? That's a trick question. You were born outside of the human understanding of the cosmos. Unbelievable. Just like me. Wow. Stop the clock. Wow, that really was tough to watch. How did you do, Tommy? Well, Angie, my love, you've got 
every single question right. Which of course means you lose and win absolutely nothing. Thanks for playing, Angie. Why do we have another contestant on the line at Jelly Bean? We do indeed. We should have Sonia Hartleach. Are you there, Sonia? <laughs> of course I am, Jamie, darling. Thank you for being here, Sonia. Oh, there you are, Tommy. Mwah. Let me guess, you work in theatre, don't you? Is it that obvious? <laughs> what gave it away? Was it the glamour or poise? <laughs> it certainly wasn't your inherent sense of humility. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about yourself, Sonia. Oh, well, if you must play this game. <laughs> I am a theatrical agent. I represent the likes of Rudy Beefman, Samuel Coffee Cup, and Jodie Carpetburn, amongst okay. others. Ugh. And, uh, it's so hard to just did you, Sonia? talk oh, well, they during this. Close the theatres, shut the studios, and boarded the cinemas, but they won't get me that easily. How are you managing without any work? Due to a savvy clause in all of my artist's contracts, I am able to claim my 15% from their unemployment benefit. <laughs> wow, that certainly is sharp. Standard stuff, standard stuff. And can I ask, where are you speaking to us from? Well, I work from home, you know, to keep costs down. And uh, who's this? Oh, <laughs> well... <laughs> You know, when they gave the order, I was actually mid-meeting with a client, so we've been isolated together. No fucking way! What the fucking fuck? Is that Tommy Harris? I'm a huge fan. Can I just tell you how bloody brilliant you are? Actually, Jeff, we're about to play a game, aren't no, no, we, Tommy? No. We've got time, we've got time. Well, if it's not too bold, I think I am in love with you, Mr. Harris. No, no it's not too bold. That's all right. Don't worry. <laughs> hey, I, I'd love to show you some of my stuff. I've been working on some new shit. Well, at least you're already aware. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've been workshopping some of Jeff's ideas for much younger children, haven't we? People still let you know their children, do they? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I've been developing uh, some shows for younger children. <laughs> well... We'd love to see it, wouldn't we, Gerbil? Absolutely dying to. <laughs> right, so, what do kids love? Uh, timely just put payments from their absent fathers. Shallow and overproduced musical numbers. That's right. Animals! So, I'm trying to address the things that kids need to know, but through a medium that they'll understand. Do you understand? I think, yes. I think so, yes. Jeff's one of my best clients, aren't you? I am. Yeah, yeah. I am. So, the first one we've been working on is called The King of the Jungle's Mortgage Repayments. It's about a lion who's having problems with his interest rates. I see. Does he have a broker? Uh, he does. Yes, yes. He's a porcupine. Uh, <laughs> how did you know that? Well, your work is universal, darling. It speaks oh. to people. <laughs> I'm going to say something to you, mate. I think you're onto something, yeah? Oh, the bear, the bear. Oh, yes, 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 right. <clears throat> this one is much better. So, this one tells the tale of Mr. Bear. Now, Mr. Bear is a very sad bear because all of the other bears don't think that it'll amount to much and they tell him that his plays are lazy and derivative. Well, I think you're under something there. Now, Mr. Bear is a tragic figure. Picture this he's at his lowest ebb, the trees are closing in. He can't even face his salmon, can he? But then he meets someone that will change his life forever. This is fucking gripping. That's right. He meets a wise old octopus who takes him under his wing and says, No, Mr. Bear, don't be sad. You're not like all the other bears. You have this... Ambition and these dreams. Such fucking dreams. I think I love you, Jeff. <laughs> that is what you need to do, Mr. Bear, says the octopus, probably doing an eight armed gesture or something. What you need to do to find happiness in this crazy old forest is you need to set yourself more realistic goals the shit is just so surreal it's called mr bear lowers his expectations wow 
You really have to take yourself to new deaths. And what do you oh. want children to take away from this? Oh, fuck shit. Shit, fuck. What? Huh? I said a more realistic worldview. Are you alright, Jamboree? Are you it's right, Jeffrey. Jamboree. My name is Jeffrey yes. Donington. Uh, no, stop. How does it end? We need to know how it ends. Well, all the animals learn a thing or two. His name's that, Jeffrey. And Mr. Bear settles down near to his parents' cave, stops trying to make his band happen, and he goes into, into bear telemarketing. He becomes a bear math teacher. Oh, and we end. Oh, 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 we end on a big musical number. Oh, there's dancing. Uh, it's very repetitive, so it's catchy but not too challenging. Um, well, if you like, I could go and get my boombox. Yeah, uh, you know, I might be able to... Hang on, uh, can we get Angie back? Why not? The more the merrier, as they say at orgies. They do say that. Right, I'll just fill then, shall I? Coming up in a moment, it's the world premiere that nobody saw coming. Lights! Or wanted. At all. Right. I can only apologise in advance what we're all about to... ...endure. Could you turn this shit in thing? Ah! <laughs> well, there's all sorts of creatures down on Dangly Doodle Farm. Alright. Like Tap your foot time. Octopus ...with way too many arms. There's Mr. Pig. And Mr. Cow, they're always in good mood. But that's cause they don't know they'll soon be sliced up into food. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where your hopes go to turn into despair. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where your dreams go to die. Mr. Raccoon, who wants to go to the moon? He'll end up as a bus driver soon. Mr. Porcupine thinks he'll read the news at nine. He'll end up as a janitor who stinks of turpentine. Mr. Tiny Mouse thought he'd own a massive house. Ended up in a bedsit where he can't control the louse. Mr. Horse thought he'd go into professional sports. Now he's an alcoholic and he's on his third divorce. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's the place your life becomes an endless questionnaire. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where your hopes go to die. Lower your expectations. Maybe you could get a job in telecommunications. No matter how you try, you'll never reach the League of Nations. The best you'll get is middle rank in trading operations. So lower your expectations. You'll never win an Oscar. So there's no congratulations. The future that is coming will not meet specifications. And no amount of visualizations will save you from your own deterioration. This one's tricky because the tempo keeps changing. What's that over there? That's where self-esteem goes to die. Mr. Bear, what's that over Now it's picked up again. That's the disappointment that is waiting everywhere. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? Oops. That's where your steam go to die. That's where your dreams go to die. That's where dreams go to die. Thanks all for what I'm sure is bound to be a classic of children's entertainment. But now, let's see how it's really done. Before we wrap up the news tonight, I just wanted to spend a moment talking to you directly. A final thought, if you will, just for you, Alex. You see, I'm not to me? complicated back at the old homestead, but uh, there's something you should know. You like to think you've got the family rule The feelings have cooled And you're just really cute You think you're even handed But there's nobody through You think 
It's true! nightly news we'll be back tomorrow when jeremy will be wrestling an alpaca and i'll be naked wonderful megan wolf have a treacle night oh. Oh. oh just give me that beer i'm fucking famished <laughs> that's what happens when any news anchor gets rid of their news anchor accent Mind. Hello. Alex. Wake up. Wake up, Alex. Wake up. 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 Oh no. All right. Well, there we go. Hey, I did wonderful. Hey, I got an achievement as well. Alright, next. I've been living in a paradise ever since you made advances on me. Alright, I really should take a five minute break so I can pee. But uh, yeah, as you can see, I'm waking up from a coma. Alright, five minute break.
Welcome back from the five minute break, everyone. Woo, let's continue on. We have just woken up from our coma. The rhythmic beeping of the heart monitor uh, brings us, brings me slowly back uh, to consciousness. Open in your eyes, you're greeted by a semicircle of concerned faces. Your family by your side, a reassuringly familiar sight in these new surroundings. But where's my daughter, who am I definitely love more? I, I, I heard a whole song about it. You blink a few times to clear the sleep from your eyes and bring everyone into focus. You feel a hand on yours, gentle but reassuring. Sam, there with you as always. Their expression, understandably concerned, is somehow more affectionate than ever. Chris chimes in from beside them. See, Alex is fine. We missed the game for nothing. You and Chris still aren't on great terms and it's hard to miss the tone of disdain in their voice. Yeah, I nearly died and he's still being a dickhead. You remind yourself this isn't about Chris and squeeze... Really? I'm awake five minutes and you're already being a dick. Yeah, you know what? I nearly died and you're being a dick. Alex, that's not starts the protest, as always. Chris butts in. No, it's fine, Sam. I don't know why I bothered coming here. I'll see you later, Alex. Sam sighs, shaking their head before Chris calls Chris out, calling after them. Uh, just as you feel Susie's absence, you notice Charlie squirming uncomfortably, unable to meet your gaze. As soon as you turn to look at him, you can see Char Charlie tense up. He's clearly battling hard to stay mad at you. You look expectantly at him, but he refuses to meet your gaze. Hey, I'm going to be fine. We'll be fighting again before you know it. Uh, yeah. Come on, buddy. Charlie looks at you and grins. One of those infectious smiles that spreads throughout the room. It's always good to have him in your corner. Your smile fades as you notice your mother staring listlessly out the window. Despite all your best efforts, she's not doing well lately. You okay, mum? Your mother star starts. Your call clearly shocks, uh, shocking her out of her reverie. She turns to you and smiles, and you're grateful to see the increasingly rare recognition in her eyes. Yes, dear, of course. How are you feeling? You smile warmly and nod, but before you can respond, the doctor bustles in and ushers everyone out. She asks you for what feels like the hundredth time how you're feeling. Surprisingly well, all things considered. Excellent. There's no sign of any real damage, just a bit of shock to the old system. Pardon the pun. Not that we recommend you do anything like that again, of course. After a couple of days rest at home, you should feel right as rain. She turns to leave, but stops at the door. Oh, and the private room in care. The doctor gestures at the room, which you now, not now notice looks rather expensive. It's all been paid for by Mr. Bosom. He left those flowers and said not to worry and take the rest of the week off. He'll see you Monday, apparently. Seems like the least he could do. I nearly died doing, the, doing his work. A burden to bear. You come home from a particularly late shift to find the kitchen light still on, which isn't normally a good sign. Everyone's usually in bed by now. Softly opening the kitchen door, you find Sam sat at the table. Bills and papers are strewn in front of them, as well as what looks to be the second pack of biscuits. They shoot you a strained smile as you take a seat next to them. Sat frowns and goes back to the bills. Bill they're holding. Hey, sweetheart, just looking at the numbers again. They look to the door to the pantry, now converted into your mother's bedroom. We've been doing our best, but I think Cassandra really needs a nurse to look after her now. Suddenly, the bills are all you can see. Fortunately, with the money that's been coming in and what we've been able to save, we've got more than enough to keep going. With Susie home to help out, the nurse would only need to be part-time anyway, Sam smiles at you. I know things have been difficult and the daily care won't be cheap, but she's your mother. We have to, really, don't we? Uh, of course we'll pay. Yes, of course. The sword of Damocles sheathed, at least for the moment, you grab the papers and stuff them into the drawer. It's such a relief not to have to worry about it anymore, or so you told Sam. Hours later, you're still awake, staring at the ceiling, thinking, how long will the money last? Could have just had the government euthanize her, but, you know, that's not exactly, you know, cool. Sam's out with work tonight. Charlie's staying at a friend's. The house is yours. You order you order a takeaway, have a couple of drinks, and decide to relax in front of the TV. Not a great selection tonight, but surely something to watch. Uh, you can watch a horror film without them. No, you can... You can, 
you just want to switch off. Action thriller. Sam isn't a fan of historical dramas, so you make the most of them anyways. Boom! Genghis Khan wasn't really something you were interested in, but the drama's not bad. You even learn a few things, like the fact his real name was Temujin. Who knew? When it's over, you flick through the channels for something else to watch, but a glint under the coffee table distracts you. You reach down to retrieve the mysterious device, remembering Sam's note as you do. Fire truck going by. Uh, hey, sweetheart, Charlie lost Susie's present. Would you mind looking for it tonight? As you hold it closer, you're surprised to find the gift's actually an engraved lighter for Chippy. She claims the nickname's affectionate, but Charlie still scours every time she says it. You're not sure Sam would approve. The accompanying note from Susie explains, Erkenstan has a long tradition of glorifying the art of starting fires. Thought you'd like it. Don't do anything stupid. Suze. Hopefully it's just a souvenir and not a new pastime he's picked up or about to pick up. All right, here we go. The load and tip guy is off today, so there isn't one. Wonderful. <laughs> what a loaded screen. <laughs> uh, if you haven't liked this stream already, please go ahead and hit a like for me. It really helps out. Uh, feel free to talk amongst yourselves in the chat. It's great times. Try to keep spoilers to the minimum to anybody who knows what's going on. We haven't had any food today. Oh, you're fired. What? You're fired. What for? Facial sabotage? Jenny? Problem? I want her fired today, now. Don't worry, Kath, it'll be alright. No, it won't be alright, Kath. Pack up your weapons of optical destruction and get out. You realise I'm going to sound it. I mean it, Kath. Stay where you are, Kath. Jenny? This is not Jenny's decision, Jeremy. Or yours. It'll be alright, I'll talk Oh, about shit. You. Oh, good. You can tell him I'll return his wife's casserole dish. She tied in her next week. Jenny? Very first guest is popular poet. I'm sorry, Kath, you're gonna have to leave. At eleven thirty, it's a job. Megan, Megan got bitchy, huh? Can I make the subtitles a little smaller? Because the kinda sucks being so big. Yes. I don't know what that does. Visual displays visual cues to help you navigate the broadcast room. Letting it go to your head. She nearly blinded me. Ten seconds, everybody. I thought we were part of a team these days. Things are better, Jeremy. You know that. Just stop being so high mighty and do your job. Four, well, you find three. Don't tempt me. Good evening. I'm Megan Wolf. And I'm Jeremy Dawes. Our main headlines tonight. Hey, Phantom. The establishment strikes back. The World Council has agreed today to impose punitive sanctions on the people of this country. The sanctions, which are broad ranging, include restrictions on the supply of oil and gas, food, clothing, and even some medicines. But how should we react? We ask the public. What are your reactions to the sanctions? What are your reactions? Well, fucking outrageous. My mom needs insulin. Am I supposed to get her transitioned? What's the government doing about it? Uh. What's the government doing about it? Thanks, Patrick. Uh. Fascinating stuff. Thanks, Patrick. Popular Prime Minister Julia Salisbury Popular has released a reassuringly Julia brave statement in response to the World Council's controversial announcement. The World Council's controversial announcement. This international declaration is nothing short of outrageous. We are Shit, that was a horrible time to pick up a cup of coffee. Okay, get ready. A democratically elected government with massive popular support. We do not recognize these sanctions. And we encourage other socially progressive nations of the world to both resist and ignore them. 
Advance have struck fear into the heart of the international community by showing that it is possible to have radical change for the betterment of the many. And whilst I wish we could improve other countries as much as we have our own, we do not rely on the help of others to thrive. This country is entirely self-sufficient. We are a team, now more than ever. And this team is on your side. Thank you. Defiant stuff. But what do you, the public, think of our government's stance? Robin Short found out. I was wondering if you could tell me what you think of the government. What? That shower of iridescent pricks? <laughs> Punishing success and rewarding laziness? They're taking this country down the bloody swanny. And it's not just me that thinks so. My wife Iris, she agrees. Over to you, fellas. Global mega corporation Remington's Fist today announced that trials have successfully completed on their groundbreaking male contraceptive product, Responsibility. The drug has been passed by the government for general release, but the small print warns that, in rare cases, side effects can include blurred vision, enlarged genitalia, and increased risk of stroke. What's wrong with enlarged genitalia? That sounds wonderful. I mean, I, I already lose consciousness whenever I'm in the mood, but, I mean, that's, that's not the point. I mean, you know... Little, little enlargements are always good. No double entendre intended. But what do you, the public, think of Sophia Remington's latest venture? Patrick? Would you take the male contraceptive pill? No, mate. Her body, her baby, her problem. <laughs> Jesus! What'd you say? Nothing. Pipers at the gates of dawn. Commuters in the capital this morning found themselves surprised and amused by the latest stunt from popular pressure group Disrupt. Silent protests were held outside underground stations throughout the capital, bringing a pleasantly surreal quality to the morning commute. Unless, like me, you have a phobia of mimes. But how do we, as a country, really feel about Disrupt? Robin? How do you feel about Disrupt? Oh, well, now you're talking. You Ruddy hero, showing us not to take it lying down like Iris here. <laughs> <laughs> so you both feel there are calls worth supporting? Oh, so well, Iris doesn't speak on mine, but we're pretty sure there's still one in there, aren't we, love? <laughs> Wherever it is, it loves Disrupt, fighting the oinks for our freedom. But what could possibly be wrong with that? Do you need me to get you some help? <laughs> Feast or famine? Resourceful doctors David Wong and Ingrid Spores Morgan Morgansford today announced their first successful harvest in Dante's Taint. Although they can currently only grow a few fungal strains, the scientists seem to be staying positive as the following picture shows. The undauntable scientists chose to try and survive in the cave system while the complex rescue operation inches forward up here on dry land. Let's hope they lie strong enough. But with Advance planning to spend an eye-watering amount of public money on the rescue craft, we asked Patrick Bannon to find out what we should all be thinking about the accelerating costs. What are your thoughts on the costs of the rescue? Oh my God, Patrick Bannon, wash your mouth out with soap. You can't put a value on human life. You have to spend whatever it takes because one day you might be trapped in an underwater cave system and you would want exactly the same. Uh, I don't think so, actually, because uh, for legal reasons, we're actually not allowed within 31 yards of the coastline. Not allowed within 31 yards of the coastline. I am not an I believe it. Applications finally open today for the new Advance Team membership cards, a scheme by the government to allow fast access to all the new public services being introduced daily. The team membership cards are entirely voluntary, but will be recognised as legal identification by all major organisations, including the police, banks and, rightfully, pubs and bars. And, of course, there's no charge, Jeremy. That all seems too good to be true. Well, you've always been a cynic. But most importantly, what should you, the public, think about the new team membership cards? Team membership cards? Absolutely bloody not. It's the thin end of the wedge, isn't it, Iris? First it's, can I see your identification, sir? And then it's, would you mind bending over the table, sir? So Sergeant State Educated and Constable Regional Accent here can stick their truncheon up your very hair. Crikey! They should call them what they are. They're bloody ID cards. Oh, for Christ's sake, what is it, Iris? Oh, I'm really not happy, Algernon! I'm so sorry. Crikey. 
And finally tonight, getting stuck in, in a shameless attempt to cash in on his bad boy status, shame celebrity Johnny Hamsleeves announced a new line of real ale at a press conference earlier today. The new brew intended I'm just being super negative. <laughs> to his controversies of last year, promises a night you'll I've turned it into, into a fucking tabloid. Or possibly a night you'll pretend you remember. So what should we all think of Johnny's latest attempt to market his notoriety? Patrick? Don't really care, love. Wise words there. Later tonight, in a bit of a room, he'll be in the culture chair spitting rhymes with popular rapper Jay Zuss and then we'll both be chatting with a familiar team of thespians set to take the nation by storm again that's all coming up on tonight's national nightly news all right Thankfully, some news as we return to our main story. The World Council today agreed that punitive and potentially illegal sanctions should be imposed upon this country. The sanctions, which come into effect immediately, aim to stop the flow of food, fuel, and even some medicines from reaching your pockets. Tonight, we have guests from across the continent to discuss this unprecedented situation. For advance, Peter Clement is at his home in Lanfordshire. Are you there, Peter? Yes, I can hear you, Jeremy. Thank you for having me. A momentous day, Prime Minister. Are you shaken? Oh, I don't scare that easy, I'm afraid, old son. And neither do the people of this country. Well, joining us is Ivan Vodovich, Foreign Minister of Urkistan. Ivan, thank you for being here. Great pleasure. You, Megan Wolf, are like strongest guard of labor camp who wake up inside body of crazy, expensive prostitutes. In my country, you may be worshipped as a god. Okay. Uh, Minister, as one of those arguing most strongly for these sanctions, how do you feel about Advance's defiant stance? Advance is like man who thinks he a big career in movie clan. When actually, he in dirty sanitarium, screaming at mirror and holding tiny penis in hand. <laughs> He's clearly not from Svenland, then. We have like some of the cleanest mental health facilities in the continent, yeah. <laughs> and welcome to Svenland's Minister of Mojo, Björk. I'm sorry, we don't Minister of Mojo. It's just Björk, yeah. We don't use things like socially divisive as surnames here, yeah. Like Minister? <laughs> it's just Björk, yeah. Right, um, Björk. Your country spoke in favor of advance at the World Council today, but you were noticeably absent when it came to the actual vote. Well, what a surprise. The hippies didn't show up for the fight. Actually, that's quite racist, because if you must know, we were going to go to the whole like vote thing, yeah? But it's actually the festival of the Eurolands here at the moment, where we honor the older generations. So, like, we all have to look our grandparents clean, yeah, whilst the vote was happening. And that's like a really, really time consuming process, actually. You're like a sissy man. You have this expression, sissy man, is like man with tiny penis who like to wash more than once a week. <laughs> Actually, that's quite homophobic, yeah. Oh, because stop winding him up, Ivan. We're not back at the Grange now. Sorry, Jeremy. Ivan and I used to play golf back in my media days. Yeah, he always win. Nothing gives him greater pleasure than grinding people's gears. The more publicly, the better. <laughs> You're like man with tiny penis who think he have tiny penis, but actually he discovered that... Uh, Oh, could it be? It always tiny penis. Ivan's just worried that when the rest of the world... He really loves that tiny penis. ...they'll notice all that dosh that he's got squirreled away. Because that's what these sanctions are, Megan. They're the last pathetic gasp of an establishment in collapse. Wolf shut the gates, Ivan, old mate. Good. They can join others on my wall. Actually, in Svenland, we have, like, serious animal welfare legislation. And, like, my friend Helga... She got arrested, yeah, for killing a butterfly that was hovering over her tear thing. I mean, in English, uh, jam sandwich. I just know a girl called jam sandwich. I give a black crack or two. What about the game of her? We seem to be wandering a little from the news here. That's um, human interest, Jeremy. The real people behind the headlines and all that. So, uh, if you're watching, Jan, give us a call. If you're watching, Jan, 
Yeah. Let's see if we can't organise a reunion. Crash, uh, I'm, I'm not sure about that. I, I'll have to run it I'm past sure Mrs. Clement first, yeah? <laughs> you like man trying to empty ashes of her <laughs> mistresses into a homecoming <laughs> vein? Uh, soon you have tiny penis and beard full of secrets. In Finland, we don't really go in for all that restricted monogamy stuff here. We're kind of flawed, actually. Uh, well, it seems that we are running out of time. Yes, so before we go to the break, and um, briefly, if you were gentlemen, with the people of this country facing shortages and possible, power outages. Possible shortages and power outages. Yes, of course. Thank you. Um, possible shortages and power outages. Can you summarize your thoughts for us, uh, Minister Beard? Well, from here, yeah, you all look a bit stupid really arguing about outdated devices, concepts like money. In Finland, we replaced currency with a system of bodily fluids back in the 1970s, and that's like a really hard to sanction, actually. Thank you, uh, Minister Votovic. Your country is like man who think he invented perfect trap for giant Newton hairy bear. But really, he's just standing in field holding, holding his tiny penis. Yes, thank you, Minister. And finally, Prime Minister Clement. Let me talk to your viewers here, Jeremy. Don't worry, everybody. Don't be afraid. Don't even lose a wink of sleep. We knew the rest of the world would react this way. And we're ready. As me old mum used to say, you can't make a shite pie without blocking a few toilets. Thank you, Prime Minister. Reassuring words there. We'll be back after these messages. We'll be back. One minute back. Hey, Peter, I over your way this weekend. You fancy a quick nine? Yeah, sure, front or back. <laughs> That's what I hope you're asking Megan Wolf for me. <laughs> See, now he's next. So come on down to Crazy Neil's for a crazy... There you go. Give me that, give me that Crazy Neil stock money. So the government now expects me to censor on their behalf. Have they given you the crown principle? Well, Megan. This is Jeremy, and he'll be interviewing you. Oh. Yo, thanks for having me on your show, man. It's, it's coming all right. Yo, just a quick one. You're not going to ask me about your chimp, are you? Live in what? 10 seconds. He put that get up on himself. He just said it. <clears throat> Going in five, four. Welcome back, I'm Megan Wolf. Later, we have an exclusive first look at a theatrical sensation everyone's going to be talking about. But first, it's time to go over to the culture spot with lovely old Jeremy Donaldson, who's joined by a very special guest. Jeremy. Thanks, Megan. I have the honor and privilege of being joined by hip hop royalty. He's been called the son of the streets and the father of truth. Um, not sure how that works, but whatever. Let's welcome Jesus. Hi, uh, thanks, Jeremy. Yeah, it's a real honor to be here on your show, Denise. You know, as a kid on the streets, I used to watch you for a window of the shop. So to be here right now is crazy. Mm -hmm. um, you've had quite the journey to be here today. Can you tell us about it? Well, you know, I try not to um, press the wrong button there. Oopsie doodles. You know, the past is the past, and I don't like to dwell on it. But yeah, man, the streets is all I remember. Like, my mother donated me to a charity shop soon after I was born. Elderly lady took pity on me. You know, she let me sleep on a pile of crime fiction until I taught myself how to walk. Wow, that's uh, quite the childhood. And she died, like, died tragically. Right there in my arms, man. Right there in my arms, man. You know, I remember a tear falling as she laid there next to the youth home where. And in that moment. I became a child of the streets. I was just 18 months old. What a tale. <laughs> what a tale. Your name for your direct and honest lyrics. Was your style informed by your troubled past? Oh, like I said, I, uh, I try not to talk about it. It's just, um, it's just too hard. 
But my first album is about the story of the first four times I stole, so I wouldn't starve. A small group of infants came to see me as their de facto leader. They call me Mr. T Slides. Anyway, we were like a family. So I would say. Recently, you've been quite outspoken about the government. Yeah, fuck the government. Fuck advance. Fuck Peter Clement. What is it that you object to so vehemently? Well, you know, they stole from us. They're taking our money and spending it, man. Redistributing it. Actually, homelessness has been all but eliminated in the last couple of months. So? Surely that's a cause close to your heart? <clears throat> yeah, nah, of course, man. Very much so. I just mean, like, why do I have to pay for it, you know? You don't. People have been rehoused on property seized from the historically wealthy. Mm. And that couldn't have been you, could it? Look, yeah. I worked hard to be here. I built this from nothing. And I deserve to be rewarded for that. Would you say you worked harder than, say, a farmer or a care worker? I don't know. But if people are taking something from my music, choose to value it, buy it, who's to say I don't? And no one can take that away from me. Not even to help, say, vulnerable children. Mr. T. Slice. What is it you're trying to say? I just don't understand why you've placed yourself I politically. I mean, is it ideological or is it tactical? Well, it's more of a... Or like maybe it's hereditary. Well, it's more of like maybe Stop trying to tie me in knot for your words, Jeremy. I let the music speak for itself. I let the music and the people itself. agree with me. And the people agree with me. Well, that remains to be seen. But you have given me a very easy segue out of a conversation that I promise you was much more painful for me than it was for you. So <laughs> here he is with his hit song, Mrs. Lovelace Tears. Oh, no. Um, I'm going to do something a little different. It's a new single I've been working on. Oh, so this is uh, unapproved, is it? Yeah. You love it. Excellent. Don't worry, we've got a state-of-the-art censorship system. What's the worst that could happen? So oh, here shit. he is with a new song. Aren't we lucky? It's Jesus! First, you're going to pay off. You're gonna pay back. Oh shit. Well, we're all different races from many different places. At any given moment, only one could be the greatest. You can feel the nation from your participation. Still two leaders in this motherfucking nation. Now we're getting sanctioned. Talking about expansion. Why does Julie is require a massive fucking mansion? So fuck all your schemes. I don't need your freaky team. And I don't need your help to achieve my fucking dreams. So don't make a fuss when you find you're one of us Get every single one of you's a bit Jesus And you can call me crazy, cause no one ever pays me But I won't waste a lifetime being motherfucking lazy I may be inventive, my taste may be expensive But why would I get out of bed with no fucking incentive Although it's contravention of your obvious intention I like to eat a little of the fruits in my invention You make us the same, but we're not all the same All our dreams, all our schemes, all our means are not the same the best of the praise of the crest of the wave Cause we're only equal people when we're motherfucking slaves Take this fact, gonna stain it red Gonna stab it into Peter Clemens motherfucking head Cause he's thick the shit, he's got a job, he's unthinkable It's time to spawn a bottle with a motherfucking bitch for I'm struggling here So this is for the snuff ones, the push and the shove ones The folks who feel the burden of their motherfucking loved ones the Ones who had plenty like a motherfucking Bentley The ones who now finding that their bank accounts are empty The ones with aspiration, who had to flee a nation The ones who built a business that had dreams of perspiration There's all sorts of people, the good and the evil It only takes a glance to see we're not all equal you make us the same, but we're not all the same All our dreams, all our schemes, all our means are not the same And the best of the praise, of the press of the ways Cause we're only equal people when we're motherfucking slaves Gonna take this fact, gonna stain it red Gonna slam it into Peter Clemens motherfucking head Cause he's thick as shit, he's got a job, he's unfit For the time he's torn a castle with a motherfucking bitch for Get out of your seats, get your asses in the streets Set a fire in the building, let him feel some fucking heat 
Take your hate to gold getters, the squilling bit getters, and burn them on the powers of advances fucking letters. Gonna take his traps, gonna stain it red, gonna slam it into Peter Clemens motherfucking head. Cause he's thick as shit, he's got a job, he's unthinkable. It's time to stall the cars and rip the motherfucking bitch for. Chase that dream, don't be the fucking team. And advances, little dancers aren't as harmless as it seems. Cause they're stale and corrupt, then you're angry, you're wrong. Then your hearts and your minds and your fists to destruct. I don't censor music. there with his new song thank you so much for joining us in the studio that i'm sorry um i'm sorry i might not agree with you but i'd just like to offer you an apology i've just been told that there was some kind of issue upstairs and an attempt was made to censor some of your lyrics what are you joking i just like to say to you and everyone at home that this was a mistake. This is absolutely ridiculous. I cannot believe this. Is absolutely ridiculous. Here at the National Nightly News, we pride ourselves on remaining neutral, unbiased, and independent of any outside interference. You have my word. We will never censor ideas. Back to you, Megan. <laughs> well, a bit of dangerous language there, sorry about that. <laughs> well, thank you, little Jeremy Donaldson, for providing our culture spot. Coming up, we'll be speaking to a couple of familiar faces about their upcoming dramatic outing. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this. That's the ad. Just to remind you, fixing that old VCR. No, no, it's a ridiculous. Last ad break. Just a mix up, I'm sure. Now, if you come with me, I really do have to ask oh, you to leave this. My father's going to hear about this. I understand. <laughs> this is unbelievable, Megan. I don't know what you're talking about, Jeremy. Sports, 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 sports,
Yeah, I've been told that too. No, no, I wouldn't say so. All right, Tommy, um, sorry, would you just give us a sense of what the show is actually about? Uh, it's about how hard it's been for me and some of the struggles that I've faced. It, it's like really getting to the heart of how tough it is to be me. I call it. I do work better with my trousers Paris. off as well. Jesus, that was hard. Mm. Uh, we actually have some clips of the process of the show. Um, do you mind telling us what's going on here? Yeah, so the, the show is, is, is built around uh, two things that are very important to me. Uh, it mixes scenes from my life uh, as well as epic fantasy retellings of scenes from my life. But Dad, you promised you'd come to my graduation. I'm sorry, son. You're an embarrassment. But Dad, you promised you'd come to my graduation. Back, demon! Back to the house! <laughs> Philippa, um, what's it been like co-starring with Tommy Harris? I've always dreamed of treading the boards at medium-scale regional theatres, Megan. And for once, this show really gives me something to sink my teeth into. Well, what's different about this show, then? Tommy, uh, Mr. Harris's show really lets me show my tremendous range as an actor. I've always suffered from typecasting, forced to play the same tired characters in every god awful <laughs> yogurt advert or <laughs> look at this shit. Opera, or god forbid a pantomime. But you know, this 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 show has really let me just just go there. Yeah. The viewers at home will be dying to know exactly what is it that you bring to the show. What is it? Good question. Uh, I think these guys would agree with me when I say that it's my uh, my steady hand on the tiller, my arm round the shoulder approach that's really brought the production from strength to strength. Absolutely right. Jeff's contributions are immeasurable. He was our rock. Can you give us a sneak peek of anything else that might be in the show? Yeah, all sorts. Yeah. We've got lots of exclusive first-hand experiences of Tommy's time in the underground sports board scene. And some epic fantasy retellings of Tommy's time in the underground sports board scene. Hey! Oh, be careful with those. saying this was officially commissioned by the government yeah yeah all, all paid for by the taxpayer which you know to be honest is actually a lifesaver really yeah i think it's fair to say that without advances support we'd have had to cut the finale yeah. which frankly would have been a travesty frankly would have been a travesty oh god jesus christ goodness and you do this every night <laughs> absolutely it's a metaphor for what? For what? Jeff? And the public <laughs> are footing the bill, are they? Too bloody right they are. Between the cost of my tour bus and the dry cleaning of my ties, I'm barely scraping a profit here. Amazing. And where can the folks at home come and see this for themselves? We're performing all over the nation. And people can see it for absolutely free, all courtesy of Advance. Isn't that incredible, Jeremy? Yes. It's unbelievable. Yes. Well, thank you all so much for coming. <laughs> no doubt you'll have taken our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's all we have time for tonight. Join us tomorrow when I'll be interviewing the world's most attractive horse. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. And I'm Megan Wolf. And from all of us here, have a peaceful night. Alright, there you go. There's another day done. Hey, Woo we must stop bumping into each other like this, eh? <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Hey, A plus, not bad. I thought I thought I was gonna do uh, pretty shit there, but uh, no. Well, actually, not in this segment, no. But huh, in all in all, I did I did fine. Look at that! Look at that! I'm doing great. Not worrying every day. Hooray! Neil's deals continuing to give me money.
It would have been funny if there was one more tick. Just boop. Shopping, something that always seemed so tedious before the sanctions, has become even more of a chore now. You managed to get almost everything you need for the family this evening, but you'll have to come back tomorrow to get through the week. There's a queue to leave at the car park, though it's hard to make out why in the dark. Hopefully, whatever's causing it won't be long. Oh, yeah, the heat wave. Oh, I fucking hated the heat wave. As the final car in front of you drives off, you realize the queue is actually due to a checkpoint set up at the exit. A friendly looking man in the in an advanced uniform, CCO, emblo emblazoned in a number of places on it, approaches your car and knocks on the driver's side window. Good evening! Nothing to worry about, I was just wondering if I could see your team membership, please. Weren't these cards supposed to be voluntary? I'm sorry, I don't have one. Ah, that's a problem. We've got forms with us. That's not a problem. We got forms with us right now, right here, and we're more than happy to sign you up. The man gestures to his colleague behind him, a young woman in a similar uniform. She receives blah blah blah. I thought the cards weren't required. Well, strictly speaking, they're not. But there's a lo also loads of benefits to having them, and no reason not to get one. His smile fades a bit, and when he puts a hand up to scratch the back of his neck for a moment, he leans over you. His presence now seeming a little intimidating. Uh, uh. You make a good point. Sign me up. He gestures for his colleagues to come over, and she come quickly takes down your personal information, employment history, and also that of your family. There's quite a bit more that you were expecting, and a level of detail required is a little surprising, too. Still, a few moments later, you're done, and the promise of your very own team membership card winging its way to you soon. Saves you having to stop in the queue next time. Hooray! Yep, that's all. That's all great. Thanks. Don't forget to keep an eye out for the new team lottery starting up soon. Loads of great benefits to be won. You have a nice day now. The man is all smiles as he passes the bonnet on your car and waves you off. So these cars are mandatory now. It's Saturday, one of your few days off, and you've made the most of it. But as late afternoon draws on, the invitation sits pinned to the fridge, staring accusingly at you. Channel One Gala is a mandatory work event, Bozeman was very quick to tell you. Also, don't you dare be late. You've already skipped work weekend once. You can't do it again. Best go. Yes, let's go. Best to start going. Wonder if Sam will give you a lift. Drink or two might help with the enforced office soli uh, yeah, office sol socializing. Hopefully, it won't be too bad. After all, you're pretty good at your job. I'm great at my job. I haven't I haven't gotten anything less than an A. You arrive on time, barely, at the Suruvian, one of the oldest and grandest hotels in the capital. You're surprised to see a queue to get in, and quickly realize it's because people are being searched at the door by some very military-looking personnel in smart attire. While you're waiting, you can't help but notice just how very opulent the building is. Possibly the fancy place you've been to in your life. You submit to being patted down, with a sigh of relief, are let into the building. Once inside, you're directed to the Grand Ballroom, and following the signs, you marvel at the sheer scale of the place, and the amount of armed security guards. When you finally arrive, a very severe-looking woman at the door asks for your name. I'm Alex Winston. She curtly checks her list before whispering something to the waiter beside her. You've made it just in time to be seated before dinner. Please follow Emmanuel here to your table. Uh, smiles at you, opens one of the great double doors, gesturing to enter. Immediately you can see why it's called the Grand Ballroom. It's huge. You feel a slight tap on your arm, gestures you to follow him. He seats you at a table in the central floor area with a decent view of the stage. Clearly, you're in Bozeman's good books at the moment. You're sat with some colleagues you've seen around the Channel One offices before, but don't know that well. One of them informs you, far too excitedly, that it's a corporate event of awards and speeches. At least the food should be good. 
Dinner is indeed lovely, and with the help of the, no doubt very expensive, wine, conversation flows easily enough. In fact, much to your surprise, you're actually presented with an award for Best Newcomer to the Channel One Family. Well, I got an award! As you walk up to collect it, you recognize the presenter as Dr. Adrian Atkinson Bliney of Incisors fame. Wow, of him, wow! He thanks Advance for sponsoring this year's gala before specifically thanking Prime Ministers Julia Salisbury and Peter Clement for being in attendance tonight. As you take the stage, you see in the frontmost central table does indeed seat the Prime Ministers, as well as Bozeman, Megan, and some other very well-to-do types that you don't recognize. That explains all the security. As you're handed the award, Dr. At Vimey asks if you'd like to say a few words. Make a joke, thanking Dave for fleeing the country and leaving you his job. You're a little nervous to spurt out some quick praise for advance in Channel 1. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. As you thank advance, applause breaks out around the room. Both Peter and Julia stand up to magnificently accept it before saying the night's not about them. But thanks all the same. As you head back to your seat, you see Bozeman nodding at you with a satisfied smile on his flushed face. Clearly, that was the right speech. Just as you finish up dinner, one of the other people at the table points behind you. As you turn, you see Bozeman walking briskly past with, with Julia and Peter in tow. You're pretty sure he was pointedly ignoring you. He seems to be introducing the Prime Minister to a selection of people at different tables, better than the me. You finish off the rest of the meal, listen to the last few speeches, and then head home. All in all, it was a surprisingly nice evening. You might actually look forward to the next one, providing Bozeman invites you to that one, of course. So, I'm very obviously anti-government, but I am I have no fucking balls. <laughs> I'm, I'm running... I'm running a tabloid, running the government into the ground, not even playing their propaganda, but once, when it comes down to it, face to face, I'm fucking caving every time. This is this is interesting. I didn't even censor the song, so yeah. I guess the TV ratings are just too good for Bozeman to hate. <laughs> By the way, we probably will be running this stream a bit late because we haven't even reached the new episode that's come out today yet. So, yeah. Down the sun, have you? Yes, they've just strapped on their wax. Hey, new, new VCR, wonderful. Crazy Neil. You know, I genuinely thought you'd be in a better mood today. She's not even here. Yes, but he is. Our gun toting handler. Who, oh, Andy? I don't know what the fuck his name is, do I? He's here to keep us safe when people like disrupt. Why, well, keep us in line. I hate guns. Give me the willies. 10 seconds, everybody. So, we've got any actual real news tonight? Well, the world's on fire. <laughs> that good enough for you? Going in five, four, three. Good evening, I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Our main headlines tonight. Siege mentality. The World Council today established a military blockade to enforce the unjust and punitive sanctions now entering their 10th week. In a statement from... Doesn't look like there's a choice here anymore. Prime Minister Julia Salisbury issued a commanding response to this unprovoked escalation. The regrettable decision taken by the World Council this morning have left the citizens of this country isolated and fearful. But advance have prepared for this day. Our stockpiles are large, our wealth is unfathomable, and we will defend our citizens with every last breath from this latest brutal and calculated act of war. We 
are with you. We are one team, indivisible and strong. Thank you. Beer in the headlights. Virgining Brewmeister Johnny Hamsleys has today launched a new marketing campaign to revitalize the image of his unpopular Hebbot Ale. Adamant that his craft brew could be a commercial success, if only he could get in front of the right audience, Johnny's gone to surprising lengths in his latest PR stunt. In a move he's calling groundbreaking and his accountants are calling irresponsible, Johnny has launched a thousand bottles of beer into the stratosphere, but they've now settled into geostationary orbit. <laughs> Selling it as a landmark achievement, while scientists are condemning his cosmic flight ticket. In it to win it, exciting news from Advance today with the announcement of a new monthly prize draw for all team membership card holders. Every month, lucky winners from across the country will be picked at random to receive what Team HQ are describing as unique prizes worth more than money used to be. Take up on the scheme has been much higher than expected, and if this lucky winner's delighted face is anything to go by, it looks like pretty soon everyone's going to have to have one. Bitter pill. Is this the beginning of the end for responsibility? The male contraceptive pill, lauded by scientists as a remarkable achievement, has been widely rejected by the public. Sales of the revolutionary drug have been non-existent, with many claiming the world simply wasn't ready for such a shift in radical reproductive politics. Sophia Remington, the hapless CEO who called the treatment a new era for sexual health, has removed the product from sale. Pitched here, arriving at a board meeting this morning, she is said to have utterly lost hope in humanity. <laughs> What's the point when you're all so damn stupid before bursting into tears? Oh, Captain, my Captain, progress today for the stranded scientists of Dante's Taint, as the Captain leading their rescue mission is announced. The trapped team have survived in the cave system for many months now, but hope is on the horizon as the expedition leader is announced by the Board of Underground Theoretics. A respected professional with decades of experience, training and knowledge, Captain Audrey Aerospace is said to be the only real choice to successfully save the troubled scientific excursion, but an unfortunate one to be sat next to at a dinner party or social occasion. Life during wartime. As if we didn't have enough aggressors on our borders, internal problems are growing for the government as radical activist group Disrupt caused chaos in Parliament Park last night. Scuffles broke out after the protests, resulting in multiple arrests and the injury of three community cohesion officers. Advance have yet to comment. The reckless fire will certainly be remembered by all those who have seen these striking images. As their actions escalate, people across the country are asking themselves who are Disrupt and what exactly do they want? Other than a new box of matches, of course. All this, and I'll be talking to some people with fascinating medical conditions, as well as one of the contenders in this year's Feline Football Championship and her proud owner. That's wow, all Feline Football. National Nightly News. But first tonight, our team of correspondents has been dispatched to every corner of the country to see how the people of this great nation of ours are coping with this Look at Megan. Woo -woo. hot weather. First, let's go to Megan Wolf in Shining on Sea to see what this scientific community has to say. Megan, how's the weather there? It's absolutely glorious, Jeremy. Thank you for asking. I'm here with Dr. Anna Burns of the University of Princeford. Are you enjoying the weather as much as I am? Oh, yes, it's wonderful, isn't it? My eyelids are sweating. And you're part of a team carrying out a study into just what's causing this unbelievable heat, is that right? Yes, that's correct. Yes, we want to be able to reassure the public once and for all that there's absolutely nothing to worry about and that they can enjoy their sunstroke and fossil fuels in peace. You sound very confident about that. Oh, very much so. I can say without any hesitation, there's really no cause for any concern here. I I've actually left my car running. 
So tell us about this experiment. Ah, uh, well, we take data from weather stations from all over the world, along with atmospheric samples, and we take all that and we feed it into this state-of-the-art computer, and very soon we'll wow. be getting a high-tech readout of the results. Blimey, that sounds very fancy. Ah, I should just say, um, none of this would be possible without the generous support of Rivington Fist. This is all thanks to their unrivaled investment in our future, and may I just say, complimentary personal anecdote. Oh, here we go. And, ha, as expected, everything is absolutely fucked. Hang on. This... This can't be right. Uh, right, but uh, obviously you said a second ago that everything is absolutely fine, so... Well, actually, under concern level, it just says, Why, God, why? We should be celebrating these wonderful results, I think. <laughs> yeah? We need to evolve gills within 40 years. <laughs> Here it just says, Shit, shit, shit. Look at you. This is meant to be a celebration. Can't go around looking like that. Shit, 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 There you go. Shit, Much shit. better. Can I just say thank you again to Sophia Remington for <laughs> providing all of this. Everyone, we don't have long. Time is running, running out. out. Absolutely right. That is all we have time for. Abandon hope and return to the forest. Abandon hope and return to the forest. Enjoy that. <laughs> I'd like to thank Dr. Burns for just one opinion on the climate. The sea will reclaim us all. There you have it, Jeremy. <laughs> proof, if proof we need be. That everything is just fine. I'm Megan Wolf. Here with science. Back to you. Megan Wolf there, attempting to do some actual news. Next, let's over to Robin Short, who's in Scritchford with some of the winners of this week's team membership lottery. Robin? Thanks, Jeremy. I'm here in Scritchford with Gary Failsafe, a janitor at the local school, and Amelia Jackhammer, an aspiring poet. Both of you were drawn at random from those who hold team membership cards to receive this week's amazing prize. How do you feel? Filled with fervent euphoria. <laughs> yeah, good, yeah. And all that we had to do was fill in a quick form or two. Wow, that sounds so convenient. But we're all dying to know. What have you won? That's right, Robin. I've won dinner with Julius on. Salisbury, one of the capital's top Fantastic. Ooh, swanky. And I've been invited to Peter Clement's house to help him dredge the gutter in. That's absolutely terrific. You must both be over the moon. I've written a poem about it. So, can you tell me about the moment when you first heard the news? Well, I was battling against a particularly difficult floater, probably one of the sixth formers, when the headmaster came and found well, me. I was involved in a similarly brutal conflict with a particularly arduous stanza. So you were both polishing turds? No, oh, I don't like to polish them. I like to keep them intact for my collection. Oh! How unexpected. <laughs> I don't polish turds. I write poetry. What's the game storyline? So, Gary, do you think... Peter Clement's going to let me keep the contents of his down. Alternate 80s Britain no taken over by communist Clement. regime. Or would you like to hear one? No, thank you. Gary, when you signed up for team membership, was it in hopes of winning the lottery, or were there other reasons? I like a flutter, of course, but no. The boss said I had to sign up to keep coming into school. Very sensible. It's important to know who we're trusting around our children. Oh, I have an unpublished book of sonnets about children. Perhaps you'd like to hear one. <laughs> no! Or an anthology <laughs> of haikus on the death of innocence. I'd rather hear about Gary's turd collection. <laughs> really? <laughs> I thought you might say that. Oh. Oh. Are you all right? Yes. It's coming. It's inspiration. And it's delicious. Mm. Right you are. Mm. Right you are. Today on the show, there's no news. Just a man who keeps multiple poos. Here, yeah. this biggin's my favorite. See how it's fibrous and really lovely texture. <laughs> Would you encourage other people to enter for their chance to win? Uh, if it's color you're looking for, take a gander at all blue eyes here. The national news lost its way when it covered some crap on a tray. Some of these are quite rare. Maybe that was unfair. And that's all we have time for today. <laughs> Back to you, Jeremy. Thanks, Robin. What a lucky pair they are. And finally in this segment, it's over to Patrick Bannon, who's gone to the smelliest town in the country to see how the unprecedented weather is affecting the locals. 
Patrick? Hello there, Jeremy. Hello, yes. I'm here live in Grizzleford, which has recently voted the smelliest town in the country. Yeah. And I have to Good. say that, you know, in this heat, the smell really is. I mean, it's, 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 it's something else. Oh, jeez, come on. You've lived here your whole life. How'd you put up with the stink? Well, we're just all very proud of our achievement, to be honest with you. Can tell that look at him, proud of Tom. Do you know what it's like, son, being the second smelliest town? No, I don't. Living in the shadow of Arsminster. Oh, smug fucks. But who's laughing now, eh? Well, not me, that's for sure. So what happened, mate? So what right, the good people from Remington Smith right. came in and saved the day with their factory. You're talking, of course, about the newly built Flage factory. Yeah, they gave us this big presentation on jobs and growth. But as soon as we heard about the stench, we paid them whatever they wanted to put it here. Does the stink not affect your life in every way, Barry? I mean, perhaps if you're filling in a tax return or completing the physical act of love. It's strong at first, but you get used to it after several weeks of your first bout of sickness. The judges were very impressed. The judges were very so, what, 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 what sickness? Uh, oh, that's nothing to worry about. It takes a few oh, minutes before you develop any symptoms. symptoms. <laughs> symptoms. Now, folk <laughs> are saying something about the production line and how they dump carcasses directly into the water drain, but I think it's probably a few valves on the high street. On the high street? Uh, should I see a doctor? What, what are the symptoms? Well, the first one is asking stupid well, questions. <laughs> then folk experience a lot of inhibition. <laughs> Cops, do they? When was the last time you brushed your teeth, you stinking old tramp? <laughs> oh, next recording is a period oh, of randomly bursting into song, followed immediately by delusions of grandeur. Hello, it's sexy Patrick Bannon, and he's wearing sexy shorts now. Oh, my God, look at me. I'm like a stallion. I'm gorgeous. Why didn't you tell me? I just <laughs> take my shirt off. You know what? I'll even let you touch me if you want. Uh, oh, that, that will be the bout of undeserved self-confidence. <laughs> Love the Bannon. Feel the Bannon. Love the Bannon. Feel the Bannon. And the ennui. <laughs> now, all that's left now are the hallucinations and unconsciousness. No, Dottie. Is that you? Why are you made out of elbows? You, you know I don't eat opinions. Oh, don't worry, folks. Uh, once he don't wakes up, he'll be just fine. Yeah, we'll just find up, a place to stick him where it won't matter how many times he evacuates his bowels. Oh, there you go. Right. That's Poor Bannon. Here from Grizzleford, a town that's really making a stink. I'm Barry Lardons. Back to you, Jeremy. Back to you, Jeremy. With a naval blockade being set Oof, up around that was really bad. as we speak, when we come back, I'll be talking to three members of the general public who appear to be here purely for medical reasons. Don't go away. Unless, of course, you've got something better to do. We'll be back after these messages. We'll be back. This next section features a potentially controversial guest. Advance may request some censorship if it goes too off topic. You've done a great job so far keeping everyone happy, so let's keep up the good work. And I can't do this anymore. I say this every Friday. I've done this. What do you mean? Jeremy? My mic is still. Oh, I only got a B. Give me that sweet, crazy Neil stock money. Later, we'll be talking to the captain of the territory's first cat football team, 
Professor Pumpkin. But first, I'm joined by three guests with some balmy bodily behaviours. Joining me is a woman who's been hiccuping for over nine months. Isn't that right, Miss Piercy? Yes, that's right. <laughs> yes. Tell us, what brought all this on? Well, it's all a bit of a blur, Jeremy, to be totally frank with you. See, I was watching your show, and I remember seeing the news about the election, and it, 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 it hasn't stopped since. Fascinating stuff. Also here is Frankie Steampipe. Um, perhaps you could explain to us exactly what your physiological foreboil is. I'm here to say it's high time people like me were respected. We're constantly overlooked in the workplace, we're whispered about on buses, and we're asked politely to leave children's birthday parties. And it's disgusting. I, uh... I'm sorry, my bowels have comic timing. And finally, <laughs> I'm joined by a man who answers every question honestly, even when it isn't aimed at him. How do you cope with that, Mr. Truman? With a combination of booze, self-hatred, and hardcore pornography. Is that the case? Not according to my therapist. <laughs> well, in that case, um, let's speak to Rose. Tell me, how does the hiccuping impact you? I get shushed a lot, which is hard. Jesus! <laughs> hard. It allows me to, uh, to stop answering the phones. It really affected my confidence. Well, I find it really fucking irritating. People tend to believe your story? Fuck no. Actually, I've been surprised at how much support I've received. <laughs> <laughs> and Frankie, um, why have you come here today? Because my wife left me, and I was hoping that the fame would win her back. We've started a group for people with ailments deemed broadly comical by society. It's called Take Us Seriously. That's right. And we, we bloody well mean it. <laughs> and who's joined so far? A bunch of fucking losers. It's just us. <laughs> and how much success have you had? Well, we've seen some real positive changes. I don't want to toot my own horn, but it's been a <laughs> runaway success. <laughs> Shit all. Not a single person come to our fun run, and all of our leaflets fell in the canal. <laughs> well, Miss Piercy, um, some people are saying your condition was actually caused by the shocking events of that night. What do you think? Don't come down, Mr. Donaldson. That's absolute rubbish. What it'd be like to have a pair of tits. <laughs> Could you? Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's very hard. What Jesus. I think you're a team fuck puppet. No. Or a sellout cunt. Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> Just reminded that he can't help it. And hey, if this isn't live television, then what is it? Fuckfest of propaganda masquerading as journalism. <laughs> Right, Frankie, Rose, tell us, how can the viewers get involved with your cause? Yes, we're holding a, a sponsored run in um, Capital in the Park uh, next weekend. It's called the No Smiles 13 Miles. No, it's called the No Laugh no. Half. What did I say before the show? That it was the team pulling Jeremy Donaldson's strings. No, I didn't say <laughs> Well, we may have to end that there, unfortunately. What a harmless bit of fun. Steady on! <laughs> this is exactly what I'm talking about! We demand respect! Ah, uh -huh, yes, well, later, I'll be talking to Professor Pumpkin. A ginger tabby with a world class pair of penalty paws. Is that really necessary? No, it isn't! Let go! <laughs> Not you! I'll hand him up once! Enough! That's enough! Enough! That's enough! Enough! What are you doing? Oh, shit. Try not to piss myself. Alex, cut. Don't you dare! Don't you fucking dare cut to the ads before I tell you to. Oh shit. You in the broadcast centre. That's me. You listen to me. You cut to the ads before I tell you to, and I will kill every single person in this studio. It's a great television. I've been thinking about what I'm doing. I've been thinking about it for a long time. We all should be. Christ, it's so fucking hot in here. Do you remember when you should do the real news? Before it was all lottery winners and... Bloody cat football. We are on the brink of a siege, the likes of which the world hasn't seen in hundreds of years. The enemy is at the gates, and I'm stuck here talking to these three fucking idiots. I think my hiccup did stop. I think my hiccup You three, get the fuck out of my studio. Go on, now, go, before I change my mind. Now, go, before I change my mind. Jenny, lock the doors. Jenny, lock the doors. Yes, the doors. Now. Good. Yes. Now. Good. Right. Yes. You in the broadcast center. That's me. You in the broadcast center. Yes. 
You listen to me. Okay. You pay attention. Now, I'm sure you've already loaded up exactly what you're going to pay in a commercial, but today is going to be a little bit different. Look to your right. Yes, really. Look to your right. There is a VHS tape, and I want you to load it into one of your machines. And when I say so, and not before, you play it. You've got about 15 seconds, so I wouldn't waste any time. All right. Now, all cameras. All of you. All of you. When we come back, we're going to do the fucking news. And because every single thing that comes out of this studio is either one-sided or for now, we're going to show the other side for For a better fucking balance. And the good old days. Alex, play the fucking tape. Play the tape. I don't want to hurt any of If I see anything I don't like, I will not hesitate to start. Hey. Right. killing this man. Reset the system for the third second. I imagine the rating is going to be too approved. You've heard them talk about us on the news. We are disrupt. We are the resistance. It's time you knew the truth. You know advance are lying to you. You know the elderly are not a burden. You know the rich were not all evil. And you know the team membership card is an ID card. No matter what they try to tell you. But why should you trust us? Another faceless organization. A shadowy figure with a distorted voice. You've seen it so many times in the movies. Well, this is not a movie. <gasps> My name is Alan James. And he was right! I used to try and shock people for a living. For entertainment. But now we live in a time where perhaps you need to be shocked. Perhaps we need to wake up. Advance are coming for our freedoms. They are coming for the fruits of our labours. They will take our wealth. They will euthanize our parents and smiling throughout. They will turn our children against us if we voice our concerns. But we don't have to accept it. A great many people already won't. You can resist. You can disrupt. Find us. Talk with us. Join us. It isn't hard. We're everywhere. This wasn't what I planned. I mean, some of it was. I had speech, look. But this, this was unexpected. So what now, Jeremy? So what now, Jeremy? It was supposed to be your day off. It was supposed to be your day off. Please, don't, don't do any more stupid things today. Please, don't do any more stupid things today. How long, Kim? How long? You already left. You already left. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. Welcome back to the National Joining me unexpectedly, Joining oh, I very much imagine will be my last broadcast, oh, are two new guests. Jenny new works guests. here at the National Nightly News, Jenny and is someone I consider, and is someone I consider, well, a friend. And next to her is, and next to her is, what's your name? Andy. What's your name? Andy's a policeman. Andy. Only, Andy. we don't call him that anymore. Only He's a community cohesion official. He's a community officer. cohesion official. Sorry. It's some, um, it's community cohesion officer, CCO. And how's that feel, Andy? CCO. Being rebranded? It's, uh, it's, it's good. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not about confrontation anymore. You know, the, the force had its fair share of problems. The, uh, the team doesn't have as many. But it still has some. I couldn't say. Couldn't or wouldn't? Couldn't or wouldn't? I don't know what you want me to say. Christ, you're fucking useless, aren't you? We'll come back to you later. Jenny? We'll come back to you later. I don't Jenny? want to be on the news, Jeremy. Why did you join the National Miami News? Why did you join the National Miami News? I always wanted to work in news. Yes, but why specifically this program? Yes, but why the National this program? Nightly the News? The National Nightly News. It was the news everyone trusted. It was. It was. The news everyone trusted. Was. Is. Do you really want to quibble semantics at gunpoint? Do you really Is there something else you'd rather discuss? Is there something else you'd rather discuss? There's a great big Alan James sized elephant in the room you seem to be ignoring. Elephant in the room you seem to be ignoring. 
your face when that thing came down. You didn't know, did you? It's about the message, not the messenger. It's about the message, not the messenger. No. I didn't know. No. The people I met were when he wasn't there. I didn't know it was Alan James. I'm sorry. I didn't know it was seriously. Alan, seriously, fucking James. He's flushing your life down the toilet. For I love you, Jeremy, but I love you, Jeremy. But He's a good speaker. He's a good speaker. He's popular in the country. He's popular in the country. Is that right? Is that right? Look, forget Alan James. There is still forget something Alan deeply James. wrong. There is still something. And you know it, Jenny. Wrong. And you know it, Andy. And you know it, Jenny. And you, and you, you are. Andy. You know it too. And you, you are. Hoping. Meanwhile, you know it too. I'm interviewing a guest Me. who speaks of I'm shit. Patrick is paddling about in shit. And Robin, Robin is literally interviewing someone who collects the fucking stuff. I mean, it's not sophisticated, Paul. What a metaphor. We are sleepwalking our way into oppression, and the news isn't saying anything. We're not saying anything. Says who? Alan fucking James. What are all those scientists working on at Grentham Downs? What are they testing underground at Alter Grey? Andy, your turn. Make yourself fucking Andy, useful. Turn, How many people have you brought in for consultations just because they weren't carrying or didn't have team membership cards? Oh, well, there's other forms of identification that we will accept. For how long? We're just here to help. Well. Then why do you need these? Then why do you need these? It's not really help when it's offered at gunpoint, is it, Andy? Let me demonstrate it for you. Let me help you. Let me help you. You eat these cards of my notes on it, you and you'll probably digest a fact. And That'd be helpful, wouldn't it, Andy? That'd Knowing a fact? Well, I don't Do you want my help, yes, Andy? Yes, yes, whatever you say, yes. Security are here, Jeremy. Eat it. What? Eat it. Eat the fucking news, Andy, or I'll force it down your fucking throat. Jeremy, stop. Go on. Really? Eat it. Eat it, you fucking bully. Eat it. Please, don't make me watch that. Don't make me watch that. Of course. You're right. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. Sorry, everyone. You can put the card down now, Andy. You can put the card down now. You can go now. You too, Jenny. Fuck off over there. You too, Jenny. Then any time. All cameras on me. All cameras on me. This new regime of ours is so. This new regime of ours. Seduct. So so I understand that. But before we all hand off our freedoms, should we ask the whom we're handing them over? Don't you want to know what's being done in your name? How many people were transitioned last month? A record high. Again. If you care. Again. Shouldn't someone ask advance how they plan to deal with this blockade? How many years or months of supplies we have? Why aren't we asking these questions instead of whose shit is this? There's a cat backstage dressed as a fucking goalie for Christ's sake. He's even got the little gloves. He's even got the little gloves. Anyway, that's why I arranged for you to see that broadcast from the last break. I didn't know it was going to be him. But I guess that just about sums it up. We are all up Ship Creek with a paddle made of Alan fucking James. Christ, it's also fucking pointless. Christ, it's also fucking pointless. I was doing a trick tonight. Take a holiday. Try something else. Out of the limelight. Try something else. Having a relationship. I hear they're nice. Having a relationship. Never try that. I. I. I love you. And now, well... Oh God, Jeremy, don't! Now, well, I've tried my Jeremy, best to be honest with you, I've but this just isn't the news anymore. And I'm sorry. This isn't the news anymore. I've lost the spice. Cut to the ad. I've let you down. Please, we can't just oh, cut to the ads. Please. Cut into the ads. End that chaos. <laughs> hey, A+. Plus. Hey, I got an A. Hooray! <laughs> 
that got dark really quick. And if I didn't cut to the cut to the ads, it would have gotten it even darker. Hey, my my shares went up. Hooray! Hey, Jimmy, welcome. <laughs> Hey everybody, don't forget to hit that like stream. Like the stream for me, it really helps out. I was scared you would let that go on. Another playthrough, maybe. You wake up still partially in shock from what you saw on the news last night. Well, you had to edit on the news last night. When you come downstairs, you find your family sat in the living room waiting for you. I take a seat. Sam swallows, hesitating before starting. We were so worried about you last night after Jeremy. Everything that happened. I wonder what they'll do with him now. Are you okay? I can't shake the feeling he might be right. Sam glances at Charlie, then back at you. We saw that you chose to play that tape, and I couldn't help but wonder why. Because he said he would kill everyone if I didn't. I think you did the right thing. I mean, it was a crazy situation, but it was the right thing to play the tape, Charlie says. You hadn't realized how much his support would mean to you. It's good to have your son on your side. For what it's worth, Alex, I think you were in an impossible situation. Somehow you managed to make the right call. Sam throws their arms around you. Only you were stuck in that studio having to make that choice. No one can criticize what you did, and I'm proud of you never been so grateful to have Sam support you. Take a deep breath and gather your thoughts. It's all a lot to take in. You're not sure you fully processed what happened last night, let alone what Charlie and Sam think about it all. I smile wearily at the family. I'm exhausted. You didn't know how worried you were about it, but as Charlie makes a stupid joke and you all laugh, you feel a tremendous tension break. Sam rubs your back and tells him to flick the TV on. Couldn't ask for better. One more tick. Yeah. It's been six months since you and Sam last discussed Grandma's ever-increasing medical costs, and Emma, whilst very pleasant, has proved very expensive a nurse as you'd feared. You can't quite believe it's been that long already, and the sanctions are really starting to hit home now, and unfortunately the government's only solution to help ail in Italy is a day trip to the transition center. Why does everything always come back to money? It's time... This time, it's you at the kitchen table, surrounded by bills and paperwork, when Sam comes to join you. Today, Emma told you that there was really nothing more you could do, except an expensive, experimental new treatment that might not even help. Sometimes your mom wants the treatment. More often, she talks about visiting a transition center. It's hard to know what she really wants. Sam puts a hand on yours. What are we gonna do? Uh, I'm go I, I gotta break out the chance cube here. Yeah, my chance cubes. Uh, blue for trying, red for killing. E. Transition center. These things are never really a choice. Hopefully the kids will understand it was all you could do given the circumstances. Just as you finished up breakfast, Sam comes in with the post. Oh, we've got a postcard from Susie. I hope she's having a fun on her trip. Sam reads it out loud as you finish getting ready for work. So I've seen what feels like most of Urkistan a really cool place, but so cold. Hope Chippy enjoyed the gift, and before you say anything, yes, you were right to make me pack an extra pair of socks. Sam gives me a kick under the table. Next, we got the train to uh, Konslava, much warmer, and loads of beaches to enjoy. I could have stayed there forever, but had to head to San Alamero before it got too cold. 
and I'm so glad we did. We probably got one or two more stops before I headed home, but I'll be back in time for Christmas. I promise. Hope everyone's doing well. Love, Susie. Oh, it's so nice. Because I clearly love my daughter more. The song told me so. And back to work. Here we go. This is the last broadcast before the final update today. What we do after today uh, is all new to me. I'm entering blind territory after this broadcast. They took my fan away. While they try and fashion a nutritious meal out of a can of condensed milk, a cow's tongue, and some rhubarb. Not home for so, Junior's at team have asked me to ask you to keep it light. Well, what does that mean? Do you do that thing you do when you turn politicians into humans? Oh, just don't get drawn into thinking about the war. They do know this is the news, don't they? Apparently, there's a crew at Team HQ right now. I'm just giving a speech or something tonight. They'll get it on the late news. Oh, great. So they get the brains and we get the performing monkey. Sometimes you sound just like him, you know. How are you? It is what it is. What is it? Tonight, Adrian Atkinson Blimey will begin his teeth into Fiona from Humble Bandages. Ten seconds, everybody. On the Humble and that takes us after the weather and public information. Going in five, to our close down. four, but first three. Tonight, it's time to join Megan and the team for the National Nightly News. Good evening. News. This is the National Nightly News. I'm Megan Wolf. The it's the 140th day of war. Our main headlines tonight. Company of Heroes. Skirmishes on land and sea again today as our armed forces tested the metal of the World Council's illegal blockade. Advance's strategy of multiple small-scale incursions into the disputed zone is certainly keeping the enemy on high alert, unable to work out where or when the next strike will come. Sadly, however, more casualties were reported today, and as the weeks and months of this war make ever more demands on our armed services, those numbers will, tragically, only continue to rise. Don't starve. Advance's food program moved from strength to strength today as rationing depots were opened in the last remaining unfed areas of the territory. The rationing depots have been constructed in record time and the government's agricultural coordination strategy has seen shelves restocked with increasing regularity. However, with the reported rise in mental and physical health issues since the imposition of the blockade, critics have questioned whether those smaller communities which are only now starting to receive help could have been better and quicker served. Seven days to die. The recent decision to allow those with long-term health conditions to access transition centers has today been declared an overwhelming success. Previously available only to those in their final years, the expansion of the service has been met with relief by the many organizations calling for it to be opened up to the wider community. With dwindling medical supplies leaving many of our most vulnerable facing chronic pain, it can come as no surprise that the transition centers have found themselves stretched to capacity. Populous. More than 11% of the population have thus far failed to register for a team membership card, a worrying statistic given that the cards are a legal requirement from midnight tonight. While applications are still open for those who like to run fashionably late, they can expect a few tricky questions from advance. Street Fighting Man. Spokesman Alan James today announced that Disrupt were responsible for the two explosions which rocked the Capitol's warehouse district last night. Julia Salisbury condemned the attack on what she described as vital medical supplies, as pointless and barbaric. Two security guards from the warehouse complex were injured in the callous attack, which once again shows Disrupt's reckless disregard for human life. Oopsie doodles. And finally tonight. And finally tonight. Our mutual friend. Bail was denied in the High Court today for shamed former National Nightly News anchor Jeremy Donaldson. The presenter will be transferred to new lodgings at Pendron Ridge Prison, while the lengthy preparations for his trial, which is still 18 months away, begin. 
Since being taken into custody 10 weeks ago in this very studio, little has been heard from our former colleague. Despite how things ended, we wish him the best and we'll be sure to bring you all the details of that court case every night. But first this evening, with the war about to enter its 21st punishing week and people hurting up and down the country, I'll be grilling unpredictable Prime Minister Peter Clement in an exclusive interview from his home in Lancashire. That's coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. So Disrupt are going to try and hack the station today. Supposed to keep it out away from them. Not really sure what I'll do. In part two, I'm a little overexcited to announce I'll be interviewing the one and only Lil C. And later, we've got a new feature that's sure to keep you coming back for more. But first tonight, let's check in with Prime Minister Peter Clement, who's speaking to us from his home in Lanfordshire. Good evening, Prime Minister. Have we caught you exercising? Have we caught you exercising? Have we started? Yes, that's right, Miss Wolf. I have just a yes, few minor right, adjustments. I'm enough and drastic. I haven't joined the gym or anything. As my old mum used to say, just because she won't take it up the shit, it doesn't mean you shouldn't try for a quick fiddle up the car park. Language, Prime Minister. Language, Prime Minister. What? Quick fiddle? What? What's wrong? Oh, shit. It's shitter, isn't it? Yep. That's the one. And can you tell us what brought about this news? Can you tell us what brought about this news? Last night, freedom fighters working for Disrupt destroyed a farmerside storage facility in the warehouse district of the capital. You'll no doubt hear it described as terrorism, but our intent was not to provoke fear, but thought. No one was killed in the operation, which destroyed both the warehouse and all its contents. Drugs. Drugs used in transition centres. Drugs used to kill our elderly and now our sick as well. We know that this extermination cannot be easily stopped. But perhaps it can be slowed. Or if you'll forgive me, disrupted. Pharmacide are owned by Advance. But then again isn't everything these days. Advance make the glossy TV adverts, the drugs, the transition centres and the law. No government should have that much power. The power to choose the moment of your death belongs to no one, not even you. The freedom to die is a myth. The only freedom worth fighting for is the freedom to live without fear. Uh, these are certainly not the best times. And there's a lot of red tape involved in leaving the territory at the moment, as I'm sure you're all aware. Oh, there's a bastard now. What? Also, it doesn't seem very advanced to be going abroad when the rest of the country is grounded. And yet, Julia Salisbury announced today that she'll... Okay, so I just learned that actually showing the disrupt message lowers the, uh, the ratings. And seeing as how I'm just trying to do my job, I'm going to keep doing my job so that way I can get a better rating. We'll be visiting Spenland during this year's winter break. Is that really an example of team spirit? Is that really an example of team what? spirit? What? Did you know about this, Gail? Did you know no one tells me anything, Gale? Peter. You should know that. No Why don't you know? Well, leaving that for a moment, it says on this card that a body like yours must take some planning to achieve. What's your morning routine? Well, I have a frigid morning routine. Rigid? It's rigid for fuck's sake! Oh, yeah. a, a, a rigid and demanding plan that my doctor and personal trainer has. Who's your personal trainer? Ah, oh, so prick or <laughs> Is that on your card? I thought we might Prime Minister, speaking of planning, with the blockade in its 20th week and the people of this country reeling from its effects, what plans do you have to get us out of this mess? What plans do you have to get us out of this mess? Well, that's 
A very blunt question, Mr. Mayor. Surely one for which you, the democratically elected Prime Minister, must have an answer. Don't you get smart with me, Pat. I was a fucking national treasure before you were a twinkle in the milkman's scrotum. You want to talk about plans? Let me tell you about plans. That's all we do. Fucking plans and revised plans and then meetings to discuss the implementation of plans. And plans and yet more planning for fucking plans and yet more fucking plans. Well, that's yeah, good. No. That's good to know, Pat. You know, I used to really Pat. like you, Pat. You're a breath of fresh air. But I've been watching you, and you know what? I've been watching you. You get more like him every day. You get more like him every day. I will take that as a compliment. Prime Minister, later on this evening, your co-leader, Julia Minister, Salisbury, is going to give a national address from team headquarters. Can you give us a hint of what she's going to say? Can you give us a hint? Um, yes. Um, well, uh, I, I imagine well, that there will be sorry, you imagine? the usual... Uh, sorry, will be sorry, you imagine? No, what, what, I, mean, what do, I mean is... You do know uh, about this I mean, broadcast, I mean, don't you, Prime Minister? You know about this I'm, I'm sure I did. Um, I'm, I'm but sure Julia and I have no secrets um, from each other. We don't memorise each other's bloody diaries either. As my old man used to say, if you wanted to get a job done quick, don't get bogged down in the queue. What else have you got? Sorry? Only cards. What else? A little piece of my life to you. Let me through. Get up. Refill my last. Get up. Refill my last. Come on. Come on. Okay. What music do you listen to when you work out? What music do you listen to when you work out? Well... Gail tells me that I work out to the little C, but I have absolutely no fucking idea who that is. And do you think the C stands for... It stands for collaborative, Prime Minister. It stands for collaborative, Prime Minister. Yeah, actually, that, that does make more sense, actually. Uh, how's rationing affecting you? It's hard, but we get by. You just have to learn to get by on the basics. Take comfort in each other. I've got Mrs C. And many a fine single malt. I want put up. It's time for a decent night's sleep. Of course. Prime Minister, thank you for joining us. When we come back, <laughs> it's time for the culture spot with Lil C and a world premiere performance of her new song. I genuinely can't wait to hear that. We'll be back after this. We'll be back. One minute back, everybody. Give me that sweet. Crazy Neil money! I don't think you know that, I don't think anyone's supposed to know. It's post Christmas, it's pre Christmas, it's all of the Christmas. Oh, 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 it's a sale, it's gonna go, go, go! Come on down, I pull a cracker, it'll go bang in your face, and you'll take whatever comes out. Who's Lil C? Oh, it's the Wayne Justice, man. Who's Lil C? It'll go bang in your face! What, I'm civilized. I read books. D. Oh, that's the worst I've done. Thanks for coming back. Later, we have an Thanks exciting new back. feature that we Later, just know you're going to love, so stay tuned for that. But first, I'm really excited for our next guest. She rose to prominence as the delightful Susie May in All My Daughters' Children's Men before taking the music industry by storm this year with her debut album smashing the chart records at the age of just 20. Let's give it up and welcome Lil C. <laughs> I just say you look 
incredible. Oh, thanks, Dave. I'm it's doing this new regime and it really does work. Ooh. What's the regime? And my manager suggested it to me. It basically involves bathing in like cabbage water and then having the leaves sucked out of you while you sleep. Wow, is, is that healthy? Oh, well, look at me, Meg. The leaves are my only nourishment. <laughs> yep, they certainly are. Now, you'll have to forgive me, but I'm somewhat of a super fan, so I'm sorry if I get a bit starstruck. Oh, bless you. I've never actually heard of you before, so if you do get a little tongue-tied, I can always carry the interview. Oh, that's good to know. So your first album, F My Face Together... <laughs> shelves this together. summer and it just it exploded i mean what's that like for you bonkers just yeah. so weird i was in all the papers so and the magazines weird. overnight i went from that like annoying little girl from that show to that like sexy little girl from that show wow that must have been bizarre yeah. wow. not really it was just like any other morning you know get up at five go on a four mile run have three meetings on my cabbage bath but then only then was my dad actually talking to me oh, of course i mean the famed country singer billy bob jean short i didn't know you'd been estranged no, there's nothing that's strange about it, Megan. No, okay, yes, he may believe that aliens told him to hate okay, women, yes, but, but there really isn't anything, anything to prove that he's wrong. But there really isn't anything uh -huh. to prove that he's wrong. So, uh, this newfound explosion so, into your popularity, I mean, popularity. did that change your life? Um, well, I had to start wearing, like, nice underwear, you know, <laughs> for the paparazzi. But as the manager says, best to make the most of it before I'm 30. Is that right? So, what, what's the album about? So, I thought it was about, like, how pretty and great I am. But actually, it's about monetizing youth, I think. Or about, like, promoting an unrealistic standard of beauty or something. Your manager again. <laughs> yeah. He says, insecurity is an opportunity. Oh. Do <laughs> you think he'd be happy with you telling us all this? Telling you all what? It really doesn't matter what I say here. I'll do my dancing and then this part will all be forgotten about. Well, yeah. I mean... We're going to well, see some yeah, of those I mean, famous dance moves very shortly because you're going to be performing your new single, aren't you? Yeah, it's on my album, Put It In My A Together, and it's out tomorrow. So soon, after the last one. Oh, yeah, I've actually released two albums since lunchtime and a clothing line since lunchtime. His room's never been tidier, but he keeps notebooks he won't let her read. And sometimes she catches him staring at her. And last week, she found him searching through her papers. When confronted, he always had a plausible answer, a good answer. But somehow it's too good, like it's been prepared in advance, or possibly by them. We want to know what the news will no longer tell us. And when we find out, we will tell you. We will hack into your news broadcasts. We will defend your right to information. We will resist and we will disrupt. Kind of stranger slapped me around the arse. I think things could have been different, you know, like better. I, I love doing autographs and having somebody dress me and tell me what to wear. <laughs> did you always want to do music? Uh, well, ever since I was a little girl, I did. I'd sit in front of the radio, and as soon as my favourite girl group would come, when I pressed record on my cadet, but then my dad would come in and tell me to turn it off and to go back upstairs and start practising again. Oh, you, so, sorry, is, you, is your dad your manager? Yeah, which can be tough. And sometimes when it gets really hard, he'll say, make Quagler proud and you might just survive childbirth. <laughs> well, you know what, despite anything, you'll make me proud. Oh, if only your opinion was as valuable as his. And on that problematic note, uh, you're going to be singing your song for us soon, aren't you? Uh, tell me about it, tell me about it. So, it's called These Babies Gonna Bring You Home, and I actually got sent the lyrics in the car on the way up here. You know what, it's actually all right. And don't worry, all my work is team approved. All right then, well, you can go and get ready for that. We'll see you in a little bit. It was a very specific type of pleasure <laughs> to chat to her, and I just can't wait to hear this. Oh, so here's Lil C with an exclusive first performance of her new track, These Babies Gonna Bring You Home. Take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the forces' favorite. It's the The queen of team. Who will now put a splendid way to annoy the guest? Lil C!
it's empty. I want that meat you're packing, only you can fill that crack in me. I'm under siege, so come and free me. Ain't no disruption here, boy, I got no agenda. Just want the team and me, nobody far and remember. Don't stop your morning drill, there's holes in me that ain't been filled yet. I only scream this loud. On my border, quick before I get my shoulder, tie me down and pull me like an enemy soldier. An enemy soldier. So let them try and break our dream. We fight and love and die at you. So all of me that Clemens boys can come and use me as a toy. I wanna see some action. So come and Sanctions. Grieve a cage, you save our family. There's no one judging me if I'm the one that's in your fantasy. Don't die alone, these babies gonna bring you home. I ain't no vicar's daughter, come and skirmish on my border. Quick before I get my shoulder, tie me down and pull me like an enemy soldier. See some action, so come and break my sanctions. Wow. Man, I can't, I'm losing it. Well, if that doesn't distract you from the world outside, well, I don't know what will. <laughs> I'd like to thank Phil C for, <laughs> well, for doing that. Phil. Don't go anywhere. Well, After the break, that. we'll finally be anywhere. revealing the new se we'll segment of our show that we just know you're going to love. We'll be back right after this. And we're out. Jesus. Can I just say, thank you so much for letting me do this. It really means a lot to me, you know, yeah. to be able to promote myself on such a mainstream platform like the news. <laughs> well, don't worry about it. And you know what? Good luck for the future. Take care of yourself. This industry can be crazy sometimes. Watch out for that father of yours. Oh, no, no. I manage myself. It's just, you know, for the public to have that certain presence. You know what it's like. Oh, oh right. Um, and Michael, what was Michael? What about Billy Bob Jean Short? Is he? Oh my dad, he's such a sweetheart. We both had the same agents, you know, like it just made sense. Both of us for our image together. Wow. And Michael, I want to see the revenue share for the clothing line and get me a G and T before my meeting with the Louvre guys. If they say for your pleasure, I'm gonna start losing it. Hey, great A. Look at that. I'm great. Well, the fact is, Jen, there's enough flowers in my dressing room. They were exactly 12, as it said in your right. Do I look like the sort of person who counts things? No, 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 not anymore. I'm better than that now. Mr. Aldrover doesn't believe in math anymore. adding flowers until it feels like 12. Got it? Absolutely, right away. Ten seconds. So good, you'll believe they were made somewhere else. Five. Four, three. Sorry, I, I, I need another, I need another five minute break because, uh, you know, it has been two hours. I need to pee again with all this coffee. So I'll be right back.
And we're back. Sorry about that. I really needed a little break. It's been it's been hours, so. Thanks for joining us for part three. We've been teasing you about our new feature all night, and now the wait is finally over. I can reveal that every night on the show, we'll be treated to an episode of an informative and hilarious new segment called The Notice Board. It stars some top talent, and we're very excited about it. But before we see it, let's have a quick chat with the writer, director, and phenomenon, may I say, Jeff Algebra, guys. Actually, I've, uh, I've dropped the algebra. I go by Jeff Capoon now. <laughs> How do you like that? Yeah, very fancy. I suppose you need a new name now that you're a successful artist. Well, exactly. I'm earning enough to pay taxes now. Oh. <laughs> I'm earning enough to pay shit. taxes now. <laughs> and how does Angela feel about all this? And how does Angela feel about all this? Your, uh, your wife. Your, uh, your wife. Ah! <laughs> God, no. <laughs> no. No, she's long gone. It's been more than five minutes, you good. Yeah, just, you know, five minutes, it's... Kind of just a rough estimate. So, you know, it, it, it usually it's five minutes, but, you know, sometimes it's a little more. Sometimes it's a little less. You know, all depends on what's going on. No, she was holding me back. I'm with no, Norm now. We were married I'm last month. Norm, <laughs> Norm de Plume. Yeah. Norm de Plume. <laughs> yeah. And um, why did you write and, um, this? Hmm? What was your inspiration? Oh, well, I, I received a telephone call offering me 25 grand to write a pro team sitcom, and I heard my father's voice. It said, Jeff, you listen here, boy. You make hay while the sun shines. You ring every penny you can get out of this. So I wheeled him down to the transition centre, got out my typewriter and started clacking. That's a shite. And without further ado, let's give it up for the notice board. You have to play a sound effect, Alex. I c the sound effect doesn't work. That's really annoying. Uh... Like, I, I really am sorry. Is it that one? Uh... Eh? I don't know. Eh? Eh? I don't know. Maybe. It just... Alex, if you keep this up, you'll ruin the notice board, and the actors won't be happy. Good morning, Miss Craven. Good morning. Oh, Miss Craven. Morning, Ray. Everything all right, Mrs. Craven? Everything you right, look as worried Ray. as the vicar in closing time. <laughs> oh, Ray, it's those young louts. No, they work. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. I don't know. It could be the vicar I don't know. at closing time. I'm just worried they won't ever become productive members of the community. What if they never see the error of their ways and end up a social outcast, such as shoplifters or bong rats? Don't worry, Mrs. Craven. This is a very supportive community, and I'm sure that in time they will fit into this society like this key into this lock. <laughs> See? Works like a charm. Works like a charm. What a lovely way to put it, Ray. And just like Ray. that, we can unlock like their future. Unlock. Yes, yes. <laughs> wow. Look wow. at all the letters in my Look collection today. Oh, I think. This is how Kevin Dunn works in WWE. Just pipe in the noise. That one 
one's addressed to me. That one's addressed to me. What? This, this one? What? This, oh, this one? so you're right. Oh. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> it's a letter from my granddaughter, Bre Brenda. She says she got an A on her maths exam because one of her friends has been helping her. She was always a team player with our Brenda. What's up, losers? What's up, losers? Oh, no. It's Brad. He's the coolest guy in the village. That's right. I just got here on my motorbike. Oh, clear off, Brad. We don't clear want off, any of Brad. your ilk around Brad. here. What? Around Brad here? dudes? No, Brad ruffians. Dudes. No. Have you come to tag the notice board with your gang signs? No way. I've actually come to pin my resume on that notice board. I'm looking to do some tutoring after school. What? Did you say to you, Turing? That's right. To you, Maths is very That's important. Right. Would you mind, Greg? Would you mind, Greg? Not at all. Not at all. So you, a young person, so you, a young have been spending person. your time helping others and not just urinating on churches or huffing glue? Hey, I haven't huffed glue for months. Well, slow me down! <laughs> you, do you know what? We misjudged you based on how young and cool you are and not on your actions. <laughs> no doy! So it wasn't you who vandalised my shop last night or called me a rancid old crone from the back of a chopper? No way. It can't have been me. I was too busy helping my friend Brenda with her maths homework. Could you speak up there? I thought for a minute there that you said Brenda. I did, you daft old sow. Did you hear that, Ray? Oh, yes, what a wonderful yes, surprise. I now wonderful respect surprise. you as a man. Put her there, Ray. Put her there, Ray. <laughs> oh, what the heck. Give us a hug. Oh, shit. to interrupt the first groundbreaking episode of the notice board, but uh, we are receiving some breaking news. Um, I'm being told we are picking up reports from across the continent of what appear to be... Uh, what appear to be nuclear explosions uh, in nuclear four explosions major foreign in cities. Four major Initial foreign estimates cities. put the death toll into. Initial estimates put the death toll into. Uh, they put them into millions. Uh, they put them into millions. I'm, I'm being told we're experiencing um, some I'm power I'm shortages as a result. So apologies. Apologies for the interruption. So apologies. Uh, apologies for and apparently we can go. Live now to team headquarters for an emergency broadcast from Prime Minister Julia Salisbury um, any moment. Yes, yes, let's go to that now. Yes, yes, let's go to that now. Good evening, citizens and leaders of the world. Minutes ago, operatives working for advance detonated nuclear explosives simultaneously in four major cities across the continent. We have similar devices in 58 other urban centres and will not hesitate to detonate them if our conditions are not met in full. Power fluctuations and what could be minor earthquakes uh, throughout the continent. Stand by. We've lost contact with our benefactors in Urkestan and Konislava. All our equipment seems to be resetting. Um,
we get this confirmed? Can we get this verified? I need this verified. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. I don't know if you can hear me. I don't know if you are receiving this, but if you are, then you have to know. You have to know what's being done. What's being done right now to our neighbours. This is unprecedented. Our government has committed an act, multiple acts of mass destruction in our name. Do you fire a single shot? Nor do I care how you voted. You didn't vote for this. None of us did. They, we, this can't be. Uh, we are uh, waiting further news and, oh, oh. What if they respond? We will expect your complete acceptance of our terms by midnight tonight. Of our terms by midnight tonight. Thank you. Thank you. I, I don't really talk about my personal life in my job. I don't really talk about my personal it's not life relevant or important. Um, or important. Um, so many of you may be surprised to learn that I have so a brother. Many of you may be surprised to learn that I his have name a is David. His name is David. And right now I, and right now I, I can't get a stupid face out of my head. He's a researcher and he's currently traveling he's the continent for work. And he's currently traveling and I don't, the continent for work. And I don't, I don't know where he is right now. And I have a daughter overseas. Well, and also I can the continent. That there are many of you sitting and at home tonight digesting this, this news, and this. you also have loved ones on the continent. Yes. In Erkistan, or Harvia, or in San Carmarino, or, 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 or Konislava, which is where David was Konislava, when I last spoke to him three days ago. So when I tell you I know how you are feeling when tonight, I believe, you, me, I I do. You feeling tonight. believe me, I do. But I also know that there's there's a flow to events. I see it every day here. I know that although tonight it feels like we may be in a time of fear and darkness, we may actually be at the break of a new dawn. We don't know that yet. We can't know that yet. But together we will find out. And I will be here every night feeling what you are feeling. And with your help, maybe we can all get to that brave new world. My name's Megan Wolf. My name's Megan. Let's Wolf. make tomorrow better. Let's make tomorrow better. And we're out. All right. Got people ringing around, but the telephone networks are overloaded. Okay. We'll find him. Do we know exactly, exactly which cities were hit? Or Megan. Megan. We will find him. <laughs> I love that I put a cruise ad on at the very end. Hey, still got an A. So we are now entering, for me, Blind Territory. This is this is the new stuff that got released today, and we're finally getting to it. This is a long game. It's a long game. It's not Well, it's not super long. I mean, you can beat it in a day if you sit down like I am right now and just play it. But, yeah, it, it's, it's a lot of footage to go through. <laughs> I'm very excited. So it's very clear that I am uh, going anti-government. I didn't, I didn't really foresee that. I was gonna, I was thinking I was gonna do like a middle of the road type of guy, but nope. I ended up being anti-government. So when this is done and I don't, uh, I eat my dinner, uh, I'm gonna come back in and load up my pro-government and see how that goes. The rest of your shift passes on a blur with the same words going around and around in your head. Operatives working for advanced detonated nuclear explosives. 
Initial estimates put the death toll into millions. Did this really just happen? Pull into the driveway with no memory of the journey home. The light in the front room is on. Clearly someone else is still awake. The door creaks open in the living room and you find Sam sitting on the sofa staring at the TV. The screen is off and they're clearly lost in thought. Yep, sit beside them, hand on the shoulder. They don't look at you, but they do reach up to take your hand in theirs. Now you're closer. You can see the tears flowing freely down Sam's face. Our little girl. I know. What the hell can we do? The bastards killed Susie and millions of others, all because of their fucking war, which we never asked for. Behind the tears, you see a fire, raw fury you've never seen in Sam before. I hate the Maliks. I know you've never been a fan of Advance, but after this, they're monsters. I need to know you understand that. That we can't just be indifferent, we need to actually do something. Uh... Da -da -da. Yeah, fuck them. Leaf spreads over the face and collapses against you. Clearly, this is weighing heavily on them. You're not sure you're even processed at all fully, but at least we'll get through it together. For now. The last week has passed on a blur, a rush of things to do, but all immediately forgotten. Your memory clouded by Doc Farg. Fog. Nine days since the so-called Liberation Night and the beginning of Advance's new future. You weren't the first ones at the church today. You were staggered by the number of people who have come to mourn with you. Everyone here is for the same reason. Everyone here for the same reason, sharing the same pain, the same sense of loss, written all over their fa face, much as it would be on yours. You step away from everyone needing space to gather your thoughts. Your daughter, poor little Susie, gone. Sam has said little since that evening. They're still getting over the shock. When you walk over and squeeze their hand, they squeeze back tightly. You get through this together. You can only imagine how awful it would be to face this alone. There wasn't even a coffin to bury. Rob! Hello! It's, it's an, a seemingly ordinary morning, but as you get in to work, you find a small crowd gathered in a break room. When you go in to grab your first cup of tea of the day, you can't help but overhear some excited chatter. You didn't hear? Yeah, there, another one's gone missing. What's that bring the total up to now? Oh, I should think over a hundred at this point. They won't all have been reported or noticed yet. Sorry, what's going on? An excited young woman turns to you and begins to explain. Another professor went missing from Queensview University with all other disappearances over the last year. Scientists, doctors, researchers. She pauses before lowering her voice to a whisper. It's clearly disrupt targeting the people speaking out against them. I haven't heard advance or struggling to prevent further. A deep familiar voice from behind you interrupts. What exactly is going on here? The silence overtakes you. You all turn towards the thing. Bozeman clears his voice before continuing. I've told you before, I don't want to hear about these so-called disappearances. Come on now, people. Advance have been very clear that they're nothing to worry about. Which means they're not our problem, and unless they start classifying cappuccinos as intellectual, I don't think anyone here has anything to worry about. Best to get back to work. Bozeman holds up a hand to keep at you as everyone else flies out of the room. Look, between you and me, leave it alone. This leave it alone malarkey comes from on high. It's out of my hands. So I'd appreciate it if you would refrain from talking about it further and make sure the news is in line with that school of thought, yes? Gives you a pat on the arm and smile before leaving to carry on, blah, blah, blah. It seems that, for better or worse, public ownership is now in full swing. Spark to light the flames. Oh, here we go. You're surprised to find Sam in bed next to you when you wake up. They must have gotten a very late last night from drinks with the folks from school who decide to let them sleep in and enjoy a lazy Sunday morning. With the house quiet, you decide to bring some breakfast into the living room to watch some TV while you... This breaking news reports coming in from across the country that large swaths of farmland went up in flames last night as part of what authorities are calling a heinous and well-planned act of terrorism by the group known as the Disrupt. 
you drop your spoon back into the porridge and turn up the volume. In addition to food stores, which government sources have said will put a strain on universal menu centers countrywide, a number of CCO and civic buildings were targeted in last night's attack. According to Prime Minister Julia, specific prisons and re-education and betterment facilities were raided, and a small selection of problematic and potentially dangerous individuals were forcibly extracted from lawful custody. You hold your breath waiting to hear if anyone got hurt. Unfortunately, it appears that the CCOs were ill-prepared for an event like this, and this rep seemed more effective and well-organized in comparison. While most of the targeted locations were thankfully empty of people, given the lateness of the hour, the betterment, center, betterment centers were fully staffed when they came under attack. Seventeen CCOs and four administrative staff lost their lives as a result of the brutal actions of the SREP last night, which countless more injured. Many seriously and rushed to the hospital. Few disrupt members were captured during the conflicts, but vast majority seem to have evaded capture so far. More are as it develops. You're interrupted by Charlie walking to the living room, bleary-eyed, with a piece of toast. Anything interesting going on? Mutely, he, in, he leave, you leave the news on as they cycle through the story again. Charlie watches in a hushed silence. By the end of the broadcast, the dominant the night of fire. Everything's gonna be okay, right? Yes, it's all gonna be fine, bud. There we go. All right. Ah. All right. Fully. Fully blind. Completely uncharted territory. Where are we going and what are we doing? Any new mechanics I have to worry about now? Ah, we know it's going to be good because this loading screen is still taking forever. Always a sign of a good level. Oh, there it goes. Oh, that sounds ominous. A year and a half since Liberation Night. Holy shit. Alex? Are you receiving? This is Alan James. The revolution starts tonight, Alex, and we need your help. Throughout this broadcast, we're going to ask you to do things that will directly help with this mass protest. I'll be talking to you regularly tonight, and I'll also be hacking in when I can. Please help get our message out. We're on the verge, Alex. You've always been fair and balanced in your approach to us. With your help, we can tip the balance in our favor. If you play our tape at the second break, that's when we think it will have the most impact. It's on your right. ...episodes of Just the Job, followed at 10pm by a chance to see the very last episode of Sorry? Just the Job. Jesus. So at what? That's doing. Dr. How should I know? What, well, you haven't, haven't heard from him? To learn the diet He's a wanted criminal, insights. Colin. Well, so is my nan, but she never missed her birthday. Your grandmother's on the run, Colin. The yeah. Armed robbery, resisting arrest, double homicide of the same bloke. She's right last. I hope he's alright, though. Hello. He's got his staff. I know your brother was fine. Going in 10 seconds, everybody! Oh, her brother lived, but my little girl. Probably, definitely. Going in 5, 4, 3. Good evening. This is the National Nightly News, broadcasting across the territories. My name is Megan Wolf. Our top stories tonight. Future legend. It's been 40 days since Disrupt conducted multiple attacks across the territories. During the coordinated action, subsequently dubbed the Night of Fire, emergency services were kept busy at the agricultural centres, while a series of covert attacks were carried out freeing political prisoners, including former newsman Jeremy Donaldson. Nothing has been heard from the missing journalist since the violent Disrupt attack on his convoy six weeks ago. Donaldson was on his way back to Betterment after his notorious court appearance. All of us here at Channel One hope that wherever he is now, he's safe. Food, glorious food. 
With the last of the menu centres opening in territories 5, 8 and 14 today, Advance confirmed that the programme is now in full operation, providing free food for every citizen of the new future. What started as rationing during the 20-week war has blossomed into a social contract that is the envy of the unawakened world. Jack Tractorpants, spokesman for the menu centres, said today that while they can guarantee the contents of every box is nutritious, the actual quality of the meals you cook depends on whether you have a touch of Chef Jordan Rankley or the culinary skills of a professional footballer. If I were a rich man, problems in territories 11, 17 and 22 today as striking bosses attempted to undermine their new economies. With seemingly no awareness of irony, the former CEOs and MDs have come together to form the Wealth Creators Union, with demands including a return to 150% bonuses, private jets and mandatory groveling zones. Advance had been quick to respond, saying if they would rather quit their cushy jobs to become nurses or teachers, they'll earn significantly more than they used to pay their own workforce. Thus far, no one has taken up the challenge. Some fun now. Signs of ever more resistance to Advance's radical policies today, as popular resistance movement Disrupt extended their reach further across the territories. The organization's emblem appeared in every major city across the territory. <laughs> it's not a panda. In a well coordinated publicity stunt, which has seen them dominate the headlines. Asked about the impressive display earlier today, Disrupt spokesperson Alan James said that the movement was reaching what he described as a critical mass choice of words given recent history. Three of our regular stories reach their natural conclusions tonight. CEO RIP. Sad news today as the remains of missing Sophia Remington were found this morning at the company's Grizzleford facility. Oh no! Sophia had become ever more reclusive following the total and utter failure. I killed her with my choices! <laughs> oh gee! Failure of her pet project. Having flung herself into one of the toxic preparation vats, she was only identifiable by her ears. A spokesman for Remington's Fist said, Sophia will remain in our hearts and in the approximately 45,000 flowers that rolled off the production line in the last few days. A tragic ending for Sophia Remington after a turbulent two and a half years since she took over the company. Fun guy. Unexpected news today as two familiar scientists announced the birth of an extraordinary child. The underground struggle of doctors David Wong and Ingrid Sforsborg and Horgensborg captured the hearts of people around the world. And after an arduous return voyage, which took over a year, the couple say they've never been happier. I gave them a happy ending. Good. Healthy, if a bit partial to the air and cupboard. Ale storm. Residents of Grizzleford are being warned to stay in their homes today as it seems to be raining beer. Hundreds of bottles of Headbutt Ale have been pelting the town since about 9 o'clock this morning. Headbutt Ale founder Johnny <laughs> Handsleeve says they have no idea of the cause and can't be held legally liable. There have been eight cases of bludgeonings, four of lacerations and one toddler arrested for being intoxicated while in charge of a tricycle. All that, plus we'll be taking a trip to Dangley Parts for the notice board, as well as getting a sneak peek at the hottest ticket in town. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. Today is the day we take back control. Soon it will be time for you to help us again. Come out of your houses, block the traffic, bring the capital to a standstill. I've met so many of you in my travels up and down Territory 1. You always ask the same question. How can I help? Well, this is how. And as for when, you'll know. Keep watching. But first, 500 days after the loss of a fine leader and a great man, the start of tonight's program is dedicated to remembering and celebrating the life of Peter Clement. Patrick Bannon is live from Parliament Park, Patrick where Julia Bannon Salisbury will be breaking ground on what will soon be a memorial garden in Peter's honour. Patrick. Listening to that old bitch lying through her teeth about missing that poor uh, bastard. Patrick. I don't know what I'm going to do. We're live. Because I'm not being funny. Things were better with Peter, weren't they? Patrick. They were, and I don't mind saying it. They were, because he held her back. But now, now there's no stopping Hello, her. Hello, Patrick. We're live. Of course, can't say that, can I, Francis? No, no, no. Not with public ownership. No, with public ownership, you can't say anything Patrick these days. <laughs> She's lost it, mate. She's completely off the rocker. I heard from an aide, but... Hello, Megan! You join me here live from the what? Hello, Megan! You join me here live from the...
Oh. Oh. Uh, uh. Lost some signal there for a moment. Well, we will be going live <laughs> to that groundbreaking ceremony just as soon as we can pass it back. <laughs> Meanwhile, let me just say, I think the Memorial Gardens are going to be gorgeous. I've had a sneak peek at the designs and Alana Marsh has done a fabulous job. Oh, OK. All right. It seems like we have got the signal back. We can now go live to Patrick Bannon in Parliament Park. Patrick. Thank you, Megan. I'm Patrick Bannon and we are indeed live here. Apologies for the technical difficulties there. But any moment now, Julia Salisbury will step out on stage behind me. Alex, Bozeman here. The boys in editing have just informed me that the eulogy footage isn't fully cut together yet. You're going to have to do it on the fly. For goodness sake, make sure you make it look good. Slowly gathering since this afternoon. This is Alan. You can come to Bozeman here and help us win hearts and minds. Make him look bad, Alex. Really bad. And it seems like the ceremony is getting underway. Here is Prime Minister Julia Salisbury, the picture of elegance to begin her dress. Good evening, fellow teammates and friends. 500 days ago, all of our lives changed irrevocably. Still reeling from the triumphs and tribulations of Liberation Night, another great loss befell the people of these newly united territories. The loss of a leader, a statesman, a dear friend, and a hero, Peter Gordon Clement. Peter's death at the age of just 62, of course, announced by the team on the 24th of December, just six weeks after Liberation Night. Born to a working class family on a housing estate in Rothering, Peter first trained as a carpenter before getting his start on television, first moving and building scenery and then developing into the personality that we all knew and loved so much. Just the job first hit our screens over 25 years ago, running for 11 series, winning multiple awards and charming audiences up and down the country. Peter taught us, all of us, not to be content with the way things are. <laughs> Not to accept inequities, no matter how small. But he also taught us what it took to fight them. Courage, integrity, empathy, and hard bloody graft. <laughs> Across a career spanning three decades, Peter Clement was known for shows including Wake Up, It's Saturday, and much later, late night chat show PT, which <laughs> I'm not actually purposefully trying to make him look bad, but I just keep switching to cameras like, oh, wait, no, that's the bad one. Millions of viewers. Peter was by no means a saint. <laughs> Trust me, he once told me he had more regrets than he'd had stolen dinners. <laughs> he always did have a knack for a turn of phrase. But it speaks to the strength of his character that he chose to share with us his mistakes alongside his achievements. His faults as well as his talents. Peter had the heart to give it all. All he had for the people of these United Territories. Famous for his potty mouth, it's estimated conservatively that Peter Clement uttered over 1.5 million swear words during his career. Though some sources put this figure well in excess of 2 million F-bombs alone. Wow. Gripped by illness as he was in the weeks and months leading up to Liberation Night, he wasn't the man we loved. He wasn't the man we loved. But his eyes still twinkled with that familiar joy for life, that spark of wit and wisdom of a life lived for others. Prime Minister Clement, of course, died from apparent liver failure after suffering from the long-term effects of alcohol abuse. I first met Peter nearly 20 years ago. It's moment for us supposed to give a speech. Nothing like this one, actually. Only I'd, um, I'd spilt coffee all down myself. And I was young, nervous, desperate to be liked. And from behind me, I heard, Christ, Pat, you've either pissed your kex or sprung a leak, but either way, you've got a problem. <laughs> And before I could even say a word, he stripped off his dry trousers and insisted I took them. 
that was the sort of man that Peter Clement was. That was the sort of man that Peter Kind, Clement was. compassionate, kind, sensitive, compassionate, sensitive, a brilliant thinker, a, brilliant a natural leader, a natural but, mostly, leader. but mostly a good man. A good man. <laughs> <laughs> This glorious nation of ours, so beautiful and new, this shining beacon of... Thank you, Alex. There'll be another opportunity to steer public perception soon. It's really starting. You'll know when. ...his accomplishments, the future he forged, the, the boundaries he pushed. To me, to me, he'll always be the man in his pants cheering on a stranger at the back of the conference. It is my great honour to give to you the Peter Clement Memorial Garden. Oh, should we see if we can get a countdown going? Everyone with me. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Jesus. Now, Alex, control the message. I'm not leaving, I can't. Oi. Stop resisting and we'll let you up. I'm not resisting. Ah! What are you doing? I'm not resisting. You're sure. Not resisting. I'm not resisting. Turn the camera off. National Night News. It's a great to be here. I said turn the fucking camera off. I said turn the fucking camera off. Who the fuck are you? Oh, I can't hear you. I can't hear anything. Yes, you can. Medics are coming. You sit down. I can't hear you. I'm from the National Night News. Well, then you can consider this payback. What? We're still here. Julia Goldsby! You were guilty of the murder of more than 10 million people! Target armed. Target armed. A response. Haven't you done enough? Look around you! This is what your precious freedom looks like in Shocking things we see today exclusively on the National Nightly News and our apologies to any of our viewers who might have found this evening's events upsetting. But at the National Nightly News, we believe in bringing oh, the raw, unedited truth as it happens. And we make no apologies for that. We'll update you on the latest from this disrupt attack later in the programme, but when we come back, it's time for happier pursuits. And you know what that means by now. Don't go away. We'll be back after this. Oh, shit. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. From all of us, you're doing great. With a 25 years of crazy success deal. This is Neil. Different tonight. This is the big one. Great. So there's a revolution happening outside, and we're off to dangy fucking parts. That's journalism, apparently. Can we get set for the next sequence? Oh, I only got to see. Big thrones for big butts. Here, have some money. And the more you spend, the more you save. We've got bigger thrones. Mansion thrones. Thrones you can throw at stones. Stones as bigger thrones. What do we got? Surround. We got tons of thrones. We got thrones to put in your hallway. To put in your doorway. To put in your doorway. What do we got? Mm -hmm. Oh, doorways. No, thrones. 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 We've got all sorts of crazy stuff to bling your experience. You want it in gold? We've got it in gold. We've got gold-plated strawberries, gold-plated bikes, gold-plated cars, gold-plated helicopter, gold-plated jet planes. We've got gold-plated gold. We gold-plated. We melt it back down. We gold-plated again. Gold. 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 Alex, during this next section, a cameraman working in the newsroom, who's one of us, is going to get a coded location out. We don't know yet which camera he's on. But if we find out, I'll let you know. Just keep your eyes out for the fist and try and keep it on the ear for at least five seconds. 
Our operatives will do the rest. Oh boy. This is your new makeup artist, Craig? No. What? No. Ten seconds, everybody. Sorry, Craig. It's a no. Okay, we are going in five, four, three. Welcome back to the National Nightly News with me, Megan Wolf. Very shortly, we'll be heading on over to the final episode of what has quickly become a hugely successful feature, The Notice Board. But before we do, let's chat with Philippa Radin. Tell me, why do you think the public love The Notice Board so much? It's real. <laughs> there, I said it. it. It connects with people. You know, people look at us and they say, those are real people struggling with real problems. That's a, that's a really interesting point. Yeah, I mean, I was saying to my PA secretary as I got out the limo, I was saying, it's good for people to see normal, authentic people like them on TV. Mm, people like you. Yeah, precisely. Mm. Unfortunately, then I was interrupted by some dreadful wretch who wanted an autograph, but a swift kicking from security soon put him back in line. <laughs> yes, well, I think it's really good that our screens are filled with such relatable stories. So, the notice board is coming to an end after a sensational time at the top. What do you think has made this show so successful? Oh, it's a combination of so many things. Um, my hard work, mm. um, my talent, my look. Wow, you really have a lot to thank you for. Hey, hey, hey. You're welcome. Mm. I've just heard. So well. Our man's on camera four. I have a real sense of... Come back to the interview, Alex. Yeah, a sense I've been entrusted with something precious and that I should use that platform for good. Yeah, I feel important that we should use this platform to, to do good in the world, I agree. That's exactly it. So I've decided to help as many Excellent work, Alex. That's the location shared. Next you'll need to give them a go. Is that um, better access to education or you know, reducing child poverty? Oh, no, by adopting as many as I can get my hands on. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, how many how many children have you adopted? Oh, we're well into the double figures now, Megan. I stopped counting in the late thirties. <laughs> Goodness, that is a lot of children. Yeah, once we've finished putting them into the guest room, I'll have to put a foot on in the laundry cupboard. Oh, you really are some sort of hero. Hey, I live a privileged life. What can I say? I mean, any child I can take on is a child rescued from suffering. Poor children. Were their lives really that bad before? Oh, they're northern, so I presume so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's shocking. <laughs> Sorry. I wasn't expecting a northerner joke. To think, actually, that only one in 10,000 children have a celebrity parent. Hmm. I'd never thought of it that way before. Well, I'm doing everything I can to fix those numbers. What do you think it is about your life that's so desirable, then? Well, it's mainly shame and panic interspersed with expensive bottled water, so uh, actually, if anyone wants to, I'd happily trade. <laughs> now that I can relate to. Right, <laughs> we better go off and get ready. That was Philippa Radin sharing some thoughts about her lifestyle. I think it's really important to stay grounded uh, and keep everything in perspective. Clearly, not everyone else agrees, but that's enough for me. Let's go now over to Dangly Parts for the final ever episode of The Motor Sport. <laughs> What a day! First a tea morning, and now to post this notice. I don't know how I managed to cope with it all. Oh wait, perhaps I do. <laughs> oh! By St Barnabas, what on earth is all this? Freeze, dirtbag! Oh, Laura, it's you. I thought for a moment you were a knife-wielding mugger or stabber. Ha! No, I'm afraid not. It's just me, a community cohesion officer, responsible for keeping crime at record lows. Of course. Keep forgetting that thanks to you and your colleagues, violence on our streets is a thing of the past. What's all this, Vicar? I know! It's a disgrace. Somebody it's time for the go code. Give us three balls in a row, Alex. That will start the pencil movement. We might just pull this off. 
Push forward! Three fools, Alex. Careful, Vicar. It looks heavy. Ha! They don't call me the right reverend. Ripped for no reason. Oh, forgot it. It's no good. It looks like all those crucifix classes were a waste of time. Perhaps you, a young CCO, would be able to. Yes! Looks like all those lifting classes were a waste of time. It's too heavy, even for me, a strong and capable. Let's hope that's enough. Unless you tried, Alex. I missed it. I'm sorry. To lift this. Did someone call for the best firefighter in town? Hi. Well done, Captain Evans. You're so much stronger than us. Especially me, the weak old man. It's the least I could do for my community. Oh. No luck catching the little devil then? Unfortunately not. The ferret struck again last night. When Ray opened the post office this morning, he found that every single stamp had been pre-licked. Oh. God! Some people have no decency. Sadly, if we don't catch him before tomorrow, we may have to cancel the village paint. Don't worry. We won't let that happen. Will we, Vicar? No, no, no. Laura, tell me, why do they call him the ferret? Some say it's because of his sneaky nature. But really, it's because whenever he strikes, he always leaves behind the foul stench of urine. <laughs> Never fear, officer. We'll catch this pissy nuisance and save the village fate. Or my name's not Captain Danger Evans. The community cohesion team are doing their best, but they simply don't have the smarts to solve this mystery. But I know someone who does. Someone who's about to blow this thing wide open. <laughs> Me! Blackout! Ah, uh, it's the morning of the village fate, thanks to theatrical convention. I sure hope everything goes to plan. Oh, look! There's Mrs. Craven setting up her cake stall. And look, there's the motorcycle display team setting up for a show that would be far too expensive for live television. I'm going to set up the coconut shy. What are you doing, Vicar? First, I'm running the tombola. Then, I'll be selling forgiveness for money. Aren't you judging the jams? I couldn't possibly. Ah! Well, that sounded like Mrs. Craven. <sighs> Looks like someone sucked all the jam out of her donuts. That damn ferret has struck again. Whatever are we to do? Although I'm very competent, I have no idea how to solve this case. I guess we'll just have to cancel the fate. Hold it right there, ferret. Oh, me? Have you been drinking from the fire extinguishers again? Not you. The Vicar! Oh. I don't know what you're talking about. Admit it. You wanted the village fate cancelled so you could have the day off, didn't you? I already have to work Sundays. <laughs> I shouldn't have to work two days a week. <gasps> but how did you know? Well, my first clue was the smell. Yes, I do smell of urine. Next, I noticed <laughs> that the Vicar's tongue was particularly dry, almost as if He'd been licking thousands and thousands of stamps. Or perhaps eating Mrs. Craven's baking. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings me on to my third clue. The vicar said that he had no more room for jam. Almost as if he'd had his fill. Precisely. But you managed to figure it all out from that. Well, I also uh, found this. 
at the scene. <laughs> that proves nothing. No! Get him out of here, officer! Oh. You did it, Captain! You could say you ferreted him out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on. Let's go and have a party in my massive garden. I am doing well. Thanks to you, we're all doing well. well that was it. The final ever episode of The Notice Board. Thanks, Fox, for that. Way to end it. Thank you, as always, to Jeff, Philippa, and Tommy. After the break, we'll be both dancing and learning. So don't change that channel. We'll be right back. That's the ads. Well done, everybody. Wow. What a brilliant run, eh? After party at my place, eh? What advert is this, Alex? I don't remember passing it for broadcast. Pizza. I think you made a mistake there. I'm an economist and commentator. You've probably seen me on the news talking about advance and how progressive their policies are. Uh huh. Well, I was wrong. And I'm here tonight to say I'm sorry. And One last push, Alex. We're closing in. One of the guests in the last section is working with us. You'll be asked to censor on our behalf. If you do it right, the final orders will be given. We'll get three chances. Get at least two of them right, and we're going to win this thing. It's happening, Alex. Tonight we take it back. I always envy what am I supposed to do? who had so much more. Over the years, my jealousy grew. So when Advance came to power, I didn't think about the. Am I supposed to censor the guest that is I, working for us? I acted selfishly. I was glad to see the rich punished. I didn't see how backwards Advance were. I didn't understand that rather than tearing down the wealth creators, we should have been helping everyone else to take a seat at their table. Under advance, the country is poorer. It is poorer in ambition. It is poorer in aspiration. We are infantilized by advance's naive policies. Policies born from absurd redistributive fantasies. I have whored myself out to the media to defend the indefensible. Yeah, this is my I have shade. betrayed my parents. Mm. I see that now. Mum. Dad. You can run back to Jenny now. <laughs> Our only hope. Sorry about that, Sarah. Nothing Our you can tell me. Only hope. At all, like at all. They said no one's died, that's lives. all I can say. Oh, Ten Jesus. seconds. What's wrong with you? She is in tears. Ugh. Going in five, four, three. Censor it so the uncensored words make a message. Ah. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. Welcome Later in this segment, we're hoping to be able to go Later back to Patrick segment, Bannon at the scene of tonight's to shocking to disrupt attack. attack. But first, I'm delighted to be joined by the cast of the smash hit musical Everyone is Talking About. I'll be speaking with the cast in a moment, but first, let's take a look at them in action. Please give a warm National Nightly welcome to the Novaries. Hello? Doctor? Yes. I see. Yes. Thank you for letting me know. Thank you. I have a decent life. I'm a happy, loving wife. And my job is well paid and fulfilling. I have a husband, John. His due home soon won't be long. And I have to tell him something that is absolutely chilling. We share coffee in the morning, and we make love every day. We take time alone together to talk and laugh and play. We prioritize our needs. We do charitable deeds. But the flowers of a happy life are now beset by me. I'm home. Oh, darling John. Oh, dear is John. There's something very wrong. I've just had a conversation with our Dr. David Wong, so please be seated. This news will make you feel defeated. The scans revealed a lump. You poor unlucky chump. Is it cancer? Worse of John. We're having a baby. How can this be? Oh, woe is me. Why has this happened to me? 
I always wear two condoms for the maximum of safety. safety. In our tiny flat, we built a peaceful habitat. Now our lives are fucked. We're, We're having, having a baby. baby. Now you can't have any wine at the club. And there won't be any time for foot rubs. Now your hair will stink of weed. And you'll start to disagree. And forget about that holiday in Territory 3. No more waking up at half past ten. In fact, you're never going to get a good night's sleep again. No more snap decisions to go on to a club. You'll be lucky if you even make it out to the pub. from personal bums. Now when I take a sick day at home, the parasite won't leave you alone. How he's wrong! How he's wrong! We're our top priority. I look after you, and you look after me. Ain't no trouble and strife, we got a childless life. Amazing. Bonovaries there, treating us to their opening number from Energy for a Childless Life, which is currently the hottest ticket in the Capital Theatre District. And we'll be touring the territories later this year. Right then, come on, you got. Come on down, let's go. Don't be shy. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Megan. Hi. It's an honour to be here. Oh, really? Are you fans of the show? Yes, yeah, it used to be. Well, listen, let's get stuck in. You're amazing musical. Now, I mean, not only do you perform this show every single night. With matinees on Wednesday and Saturday. <laughs> right, but you're also the show's creators, am I right? Well, everyone contributed their ideas, and then some of us went away and did the actual work on the script. <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's very much a team effort. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> How rude of me. I've not introduced any of you. <laughs> I'll be the one being replaced next. Let's go down the line, shall we? Hi, I'm Jack. <laughs> Jim Blunt. Pleasure to be here. Jennifer Boreham Woodley. Hello, I'm John. John Sapley. Hello, I used to be John, in the business professionally. My name's Jill, with a J. And I'm Janet. I'm the youngest. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> and you were all friends previously. I mean, what a, what a coincidence, right? <laughs> uh, with, with, your, with your names begin, beginning with a J. With your, with your names beginning, beginning with a J. Oh, my goodness, guys. Our names all begin with J. How <laughs> have we never noticed that? <laughs> because you haven't typed them out a thousand times? <laughs> <laughs> you knew? Why didn't you say anything? I thought we all knew. 
It's bloody obvious, isn't it? I just thought we were doing a funny thing where we never mentioned it. <laughs> and I believe as well as being friends, you're also... You're getting really anxious about the censoring. ...as well as in the show. Well, oh, 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 not exactly. No. I'm not married to him. Uh, <laughs> I'm with Janet. And I'm with John, you lucky bean. <laughs> Jim and I are married. Four fabulous years. <laughs> well, that must make for some confusion in the rehearsal room. Oh, you should have seen the first giraffe. Jen decided that Jack would play Jim, I would play Jack. Jen, Janet, Jill, Jen, Janet, Jill. <laughs> what about John? Well, my character was originally just called Man One. It was allegorical. It was very confusing. Not for a professional. <laughs> After much doing and throwing. And gnashing and wailing. <laughs> And gin and tonic. <laughs> <laughs> we decided that we'd just use our own names, which um, is less truthful. Oh. We're also less likely to go into the wrong dressing rooms. Oh, God, yeah, that would be very embarrassing, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, of course, when I first wrote it, we were only meant to run for a few nights at the Nimble Village Hall, but when I registered it with the Department for Culture, it caught the eye of someone high up, and before you could say overnight sensation, we were transferring to the capital. <laughs> It's all been a bit of a roller coaster, really. Yeah. I'm only 19. I'm the youngest. You really don't have to repeat that. <laughs> I had to give up my job as a mortuary technician. Well, yes, we all had to move to the capital. <laughs> I love that job. It's been a very turbulent time. So peaceful, no singing. Uh, this piece isn't. <laughs> Stand by, Alex. Sense of the orange. About children and why you shouldn't have them. <laughs> In a way, I guess it is political, with a small p. After all, we are a solid unit, and eagle-eyed audience members will see we nod our heads to advance on stage throughout, and we target the messaging at women aged 22, well, about 35, as they're the most likely to be afflicted by this terrible problem. Terrible problem. Having children. Do you understand, Megan? You clearly agree. <sighs> This isn't about me. Of course, we see that there are advantages to a family unit, but eagle-eyed couples watch as the little parasites advance on their lives, and there's no time to play the guitar, get through a book, or watch a movie. They're exhausted, passed out on the couch by 20 to 9, for God's sake. Very chatty tonight, dear. Usually I'm the chatty one. Because you're the youngest, we know. It's not a badge of honour, Janet. <laughs> Janet, please, Janet. Oh, well said, John. Thanks, Jack. Got you back. So, could, um, could you just tell us uh, what is the play about? Mm. What happens in yes. it? Well, go ahead. It's a tragedy, obviously. <laughs> um, Jennifer, myself, and John have their child, and then the story charts the downfall of their hopes and dreams. The downfall of their and there's lots of singing. And dancing. A lot. My character works at a menu centre for a distribution unit. Eagle-eyed, she sees her friends rapid advance to a pit of despair. Becoming a target for children's TV advertising at the age of 22, she decides to take drastic action. I can't really say more, though. I've probably said too much. <laughs> oh, I'm blocking out everything that isn't actually the message. Fascinating. All of you. For too long, we've been told that... A life without children is somehow incomplete, that, that children are a, are a blessing. Well, I've done the research, and they're not. <laughs> Besides, there's already loads of bastards running around all over the place. So. We just want people to have the option of a happy, child-free life without stigma. <laughs> you know, when I was 14, before I had come out, <laughs> I had an experience with a girl called Julia Jacobs. It was an experiment, I guess, you know, a chance to dip my toes into the aisles. Fascinating. Up. Well, thank you all so much for coming in tonight. I really hope you keep them dancing in the aisles for many performances to come. The nose rings there. And I am pleased to say we can now go back to Patrick Bannon to get the latest from the scene of tonight's horrific events. Patrick, are you okay? Thank you, Maggot. This is Patrick Bannon reporting from the scene of tonight's devastating and symbolic attack tonight this evening. An attack which I myself have been found myself caught up in. I, I'm still a little dazed and a little deaf, Megan. So I hope you'll forgive me if I seem that it's time to speak with the Prime Minister. Mrs. Salisbury, that's you. You're still here. The Prime Minister. I couldn't leave them. Not when there were people that needed help. Any team player would have done the same. I don't deserve praise for being human. Yes, no accolades here. 
or palisade or lemonade right so is the situation now are we safe yes um, the security services performed their duties without hesitation and I would like to assure the public that although there have been some injuries there were no civilian deaths here this evening oh well, that's good news about the civil sorry did you did you say no deaths that's right no civilian deaths just the four disrupt terrorists curtailed by law enforcement who were as always so cohesive if I may I have a message for your viewers of course the camera there's the ca speak there on on the camera there oh Jesus stay at home tonight do not become another casualty of war disrupt have had their moment but as the dear RTM hello famously said it ends today Thank you, Prime Minister, for those strong words of strength. Back to the studio, Megan, now in studio with Megan Wolf now. Patrick Bannon there, bravely reporting from the front line of tonight's horrifying bombing. Maybe you need to get checked out, Patrick. Well, that brings us to the end of tonight's National Night News. But before we go, tonight's National Night News. Victory is in sight, my friends. You have mobilized. You have come together. From our agents at the television networks risking arrest and getting those words to you to the many hundreds and thousands gathering to invade team headquarters as i speak we are turning the tide and it is time for change tonight we topple their regime and we also silence but allowed to happen our government have lured disrupt out from the shadows and they are not the overwhelming force they would have you believe the military have been actioned and well it's pretty scary oh it's getting close home and stay with Channel One because the team has assured this program that the turbulence will soon be over and we can once again focus our minds on building the new future with equality, fairness, and resources for all. My name is Megan Wolf. Let's make tomorrow better. Let's make tomorrow better. Alex. Tonight is the beginning of the fall of advance. Let's check it out of Oh god, what have I done? No, oh, I need that! Oh, what have I done? I'm gonna lose my job for sure! Oh no, my job! At least I'll still get some crazy Neil deals! Oh God, what did I do? What have I done? Hey, I still got an A. Hey, look at that. Holiday time. Despite everything, I'm still making money. I think I might have made the, the right choice signing up for all the government programs, but still fighting against them because despite everything, I'm still coming out. I'm making it out big time. To all the newbies, please don't forget to like this stream. I'd much appreciate it. It really helps out. Channel is struggling lately with the algorithms and everything. So, you know, help me out, please if you're enjoying. And don't forget that you can also join my Discord. And if you feel like donating, there's a link in the description, so thank you very much for any kind of consideration. I appreciate. This is getting crazy, though. <laughs> I'm getting a super migraine, and I still got, like, two more days to go. Oh, boy.
Okay, you arrive at work a little early despite the stressful journey in. You still aren't quite sure of everything that happened. Though the swarm of CCOs all over the building is anything to go by, this isn't just Channel 1 matter. This is confirmed when you are informed you need to speak to Bozeman immediately and are escorted to his office. Uh oh. Two minutes later, the boss man arrives, disheveled with a stern looking CCO in tow. Ah, yes, Winston, good. This is Specialist Abel's. She will be observing this interview. Please come inside and take a seat. The ruddy-faced man bustles into his office and leaves the door open for you to follow. A few times you've been here before. It was immaculate and everything in its proper place. Not so today. So, Alex, do you know uh, why you're here today? Bozeman's eyes are sharp. His, glaze, his gaze is fixed on your face from across the desk, able to stand behind you out of sight, but definitely not out of mind. Uh... I, I don't know, I wasn't involved with anything. What happened last night was nothing short of a culmination of a heinous and outrageous campaign of terror that disrupt have been reaping on this nation and its territories. Bozeman shoots a glance behind you to your left where your CCO observer is standing. And it is, of course, our duty to root out this rot. Wherever we find it to prevent anything like last night happening ever again. I've been asked by advance to perform interviews with all staff members involved. You will be submitting a personal review of your performance both during the incident in question and throughout your time here. Oh boy. He shoots you a quick smile. Don't worry, it'll all be fine. Arranges some papers, blah blah blah. Obviously a lot happened last night and I have a, member, a number of interviews to conduct today, so I'd rather none of them take any longer than necessary. Please be brief. Okie dokes. Let's start at the beginning of the broadcast and work our way through. After the attack at the memorial, you seem to have portrayed the terrorists in quite sympathetic light. Uh, I did what I felt was right in a very stressful situation. Yes, of course, with everything in flux, you weren't to know what would happen next. I'm certain you did the best you could, Alex, you always do. Bozeman scribbles down some notes, because I, I do very well. I get A's in every broadcast, so that should be helping me. Bozeman scribbles down some notes, the noise of his pen scratching into notepad, punctured only by a constant tick-tock of his ornate clock. Hopefully this will be over soon. Reviewing the broadcast, we noticed something a little odd about a particular camera choice. It was while everyone else was talking. Oh, where did I put it? Ah, yes. Do you recognize this? With a flourish, Bozeman produces a leaflet from the notice board and places it on the desk in front of you. Uh, I assumed it was just part of the set. Why else would it have been there on camera? Yeah. Well, that makes sense. You aren't responsible for maintaining the set. Haha. -ha. You can only assume that's what... That's... You can only assume that what's there is meant to be there after all. You get the feeling at least there's some above was the benefits, uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Alex, and again, for Abel's benefit, you're so loyal. Not exactly subtle there. Towards the end of the show, there appeared to be some issues with the sensor equipment. At this point, Bozeman paused for a moment, put in a lid on his pen, and placed it carefully on the desk. How do you explain the fact you censor perfectly acceptable language during the segment? Uh, I just do what the display tells me. I don't decide what's supposed to be censored. There you go. I suppose it's certainly possible the machine could have malfunctioned, much less, much more likely than a mal malfunction of such a competent employee. We'll make sure to have maintenance look at it right away. With the price we paid, I expect there blah, 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 blah. Okay, how many questions? At this point, Bozeman took out a pair of glasses and placed them somewhat delicately on the end of his nose. The portly man leaned forward to examine his notes in detail. Now, obviously, we expect the odd bit of interference here and there, unavoidable. However, interference is not the same as terrorist propaganda. Would you care to explain how quite so much of their message found its way into our airwaves? Uh, with everything else going on, I just didn't realize until it was too late. No, 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 he just said I'm competent. Machine's been out of date for years, even with the la last update. Didn't make it life any easier. Out of the corner of your eye, your note specialist visibly more attentive awaiting your boss's response. Well, uh, it's certainly true that accidents happen, and with various stresses of last night's broadcast, blah blah blah, uh, swarms at you as Abel returns to the passive stance. There you go. 
uh, Loud Creek breaks da, 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 the tape of that poor Miss Brightman. Why did you play it? Help me understand why play that tape. Uh, I was worried what they would do if I didn't play it. They're horrible people. Watch Bozeman slowly clean his glasses. Well, at the end of the day, you choose to do it, Alex. I don't know if I'd have done the same in your shoes, but I think it's clear enough. You thought what you had to do, blah, blah, blah. He clears his throat, leans forward, and smiles again. I believe that's all I had for you. Uh, I think that's all the information we need for now. Thank you. Could we have the room, please? At last, he's gone. Look, Alex, I don't know how involved you were last night, and frankly, I don't want to know, but honestly, it doesn't look good. I've done what I can because I like you, but I can't promise it will be enough. Best to go home now. There's no work for you until we get the new satellite tower up. Anyways, as you leave, you see what could almost swear is sympathy in the old man's eyes. I overplayed my, my resistance hand. It's your anniversary, and this year you've got a plan. A week away could just be what the doctor ordered for you and Sam, but it won't be cheap. <coughs> Excuse me. It's more than you'd normally spend, but Sam's worth every penny. Nope. I'm, it's holiday time. I got it. We can afford coffee. <laughs> the last time you went away, it was an amazing weekend together, and this time it's going to be even better. And what better way to start it off by going all out and cooking a nice meal from scratch. Fancy! Sam's gonna love it. He'll be home any second. Even you and Chris seem to be on the same page for the first in years. Maybe it's been long enough for them to forgive you, or perhaps they've decided they were unfair to ask you, but either way, they're great. you're grateful for the newfound peace. They even helped you clean up the house today, so when Sam gets back from work, it'll be pristine. Oh, here she comes. Sam steps in the hallway, you're waiting in the doorway to the kitchen, dressed to the nines, and acting as nonchalant as possible. Alex, what's all this? Oh my god, did you clean? And what's that smell? They give you a kick, a quick kiss, a kick, they give you a kick, as they step past you into the kitchen where the banquet is laid out, candles lit, and Chris and Charlie standing quietly grinning. Oh my god, Alex, happy anniversary, Sam. Happy anniversary comes the chorus from your two cheerleaders as Sam turns to you, smiling with tears in their eyes. Alex, it's perfect. Sam rushes over, kisses you softly, only breaking off when you get a less than subtle cough from Charlie. My band have their first gig this weekend. Uh-oh. My son's in a band. And that's our cue. Come on, Charlie. Let's... Time for us to go. Have fun. Oh, no. Our, our son's in a band. And he's very anti-government. You're welcome. Now I've, sh I've should, now I've should go get our own dinner. You can grill Charlie when he's back tomorrow, as in not tonight. See ya, man. I, that is just weird. That is just a weird sentence. With a wink, they finish ushering Charlie out of the house. You pull cha Sam's chair out for them. Why? Thank you. Taking a seat and grinning. So Charlie's been busy. They shake their head as you take your own seat opposite them. Tomorrow, for now, you really don't have to do any of it. Tomorrow, for now, you really didn't have to do any of this. I know, but I wanted to. Yes, I love you too. Now, where on earth do I begin? They laugh as you pour the first glass of champagne for the evening. You're very lucky to have such a wonderful, man, this is just so confusing. Who could ask for more? My head is starting to pound and this is just getting confusing. <laughs> Uh, I thought it said job done. Everything's ready. You and Sam must have been trying to watch Bullet Man for years, but you missed it in the cinemas, and it never seemed to be in stock when you went, when one of you went to pick up the VHS. Now you're just waiting for them to get home so you can start. You hear the front door open as you put a bowl of popcorn on the coffee table. We're ready to go. Get your butt in here. Oh, excuse me. Sam comes in with a vacant stare, ignoring both film and snacks. You have to actually nudge them to break the stupor. What, Sam? What's what's the matter? I uh, I've just been let go from work. Sam is just staring into space. Apparently, there just isn't a need for two nursery teachers anymore. Not enough children. 
so they can't justify the expense. Honey, I'm so sorry. It'll be okay. You'll find another place. No, you don't get it. There just isn't that demand for younger teachers anymore. Younger years teachers anymore, not just here, anywhere. I don't know what I'm going to do, what we're going to do. You pull Sam into a hug. It's all right. With what we saved, we should be okay for a little while. I guess you're a oh, broke ass poor. We went... Damn, maybe I shouldn't... Well, eh. I guess you're right. I just hate putting this burden on you. Sam pulls back and looks at you. But I'll find something I promise. We're a team, they laugh. God, I can't believe I just said that. I sound like a bloody advance advert. We are, though, and we'll get through this together. You flick Bullet Man on, finally finishing the film after years of buildup. It's a typical Hollywood blockbuster, not best sold on its write-in, but enjoyable nonetheless. Later that night, long after Sam's fallen asleep while cocooned in the duvet, you find yourself wide awake, thinking about money. How long will my savings actually last? Well, I'm going into this one broke-ass poor. Maybe I shouldn't have sprung for that anniversary. How long is the, uh, job going to be gone? I could really go to work. Ah, here we go. Three years since the uprising. Hello, Alex. I've checked the schedule for tonight. Nothing major to report. Certainly isn't anything you can't handle. Still, at least my daughter's in for Advance's new initiative. That should liven things up a bit here. Keep up the good work. After the birth of their unexpectedly large family. At 9.15, it's What Music Is Best? A rundown of the top-selling songs across the territories. Expect catchy tunes and scenes of an inappropriately sexual nature. Not one to miss. At 10 PM, it's I only have advanced diary, stuff. Where the ever popular Prime Minister reads extracts from her diary in front of a warm fire. Then at 10.30, it's the latest episode of our drama series, Betterment, which tells the inspirational story of Emily Dennisworth and the brave doctors. Oh, my head. And this is Jenny. She's the floor manager. Hi, Stacey. Hmm. That's Colin. He, um... Do you know what? Don't talk to Colin. Okay, involved involved in bringing your daughter to work, eh, hey, Colin? Nah, nah, we don't believe in it. All right, come and sit next to Mum. <laughs> believe in what? Just days. How did it all go so right? That's followed by the territory... Atta girl. Briefing. And ten <laughs> seconds, everybody. <clears throat> Is that the... No, that can't be... That's not the pop star from the last episode, was it? <laughs> One day we'll live. That explains so much. Okay, we are going in five... Good evening and welcome to the NNN. I'm Megan Wolf. And who is this? You might be wondering. <laughs> well, it's Bring Your Daughter to Work Day here at Channel One. So I'm joined tonight by my foster daughter, Stacey. Say hello, Stacey. Go fuck yourself. All right then. Here are the stories that matter to you. <laughs> First up. With advance confirming that the nuclear fallout from the 20 week war is to blame for the drop in birth rates across the territories, we asked you what keeps you going. I know that I, for one, was quite deflated when I heard about this, but reading all your submissions has really put the smile back on my face. This is from Drew in Humberset. To take our minds off things, me and my partner have been building this house for our hamster. It really does distract us from thinking about the 85% sterility rate. Jesus. So next week, we're building Nibbles a tiny conservatory, a loft conversion, and a holiday home. Thank you for that. And if you've started a new hobby, do write in and tell us about it. Next up, you know how we love your uncanny, comestible coincidences and... I don't know about you, but I think this one really takes the biscuit. 
I'm not sure what I'm more impressed by, Stacey. The things our viewers spot or the unbelievable way our menu centres are now able to feed every team member every single day. Catherine from Burkledown sent us this, saying, I couldn't help but spot the face of poor departed Peter Clement in my fourth lager this morning. Jesus. Oh, I'm not sure if I see it, Catherine, but then again, <laughs> I'm only on my third. <laughs> Do keep those coming in. Come on, have a go. Uh, we've just got time for one more of your stories. And this one is an inspiring story of rehabilitation. Uh, that's it, just tell us who it's from. Yeah, and then read it out. Okay. Uh, apparently, this is from Sherry Intendant. Here I am, just six months out of Betterman. I'm healthy, sober and working thanks to the facilities I had access to on the inside. I'll never have to go back to my old life of stealing cars and burning down charity shops. I just wanted to share. We absolutely love hearing the way our neighbours and team members have been able to become better people. So do let us know your stories here. You can do this bit, Stacey. <laughs> no, you're right. Come on, give it a try. Let us know your stories here at the NNN. Right, a bit of a change of pace coming up here. You'll need to use the SFX buttons for the next segment, but advance have already selected when and what to use. Simple stuff. Just follow your government orders. Hey. Tonight on the NNN, it's time to celebrate this week's team lottery winners live from the Shakespeare Theatre right here in the capital. We're going to hand over to Julia Salisbury. I suppose you don't think much of her either, eh, Stacey? She's got a lot more going for her than you, Rampy. Okay. Surprising vote of approval there from Stacey. Let's go live to that right now. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this week's team awards. Let's play it safe. Of all the many duties I have as team leader, this is by far the most pleasant. As I so often say to you, the uneven path is now following the demise of the drop firmly behind us. This is the new future. And I say to you, it's better now. I am delighted to be joined here tonight by one of the oldest people in Territory One. He was born over 107 years ago. Please give a warm team welcome to Alfie Tag Badger. So, Alfie, you must have seen so much in your lifetime. What have been some of the highlights? Alfie? Is he all right? Is he all right? <laughs> what is, is going on? on? It turned on. Oh. Yeah, it Did you turn it on? <laughs> he says it drains the battery. Well, uh, will you tell him that we'll buy him a brand new battery after the presentation? <laughs> I can't even choose any other option. Yeah, he says that's fine then. Yeah, he says that's fine then. And I will, I will help him with that. Yeah. If you would. <laughs> Sorry, can't get the staff. <laughs> yeah. We got it. So, Alfie. What? You're 107 years old. Oh, don't bloody remind me. <laughs> would you like to tell the audience what that's like? Where is everybody? Where is everybody? Um, out there, in the dark. <laughs> Bless him, it's not just the ears. 
Who are you? Uh, two sugars, please. I'm Julia Salisbury, the Prime Minister. A likely story. Who are you really? No, no, I, I really am the Prime Minister. Oh, oh so you're a, a, a you know, a, a woman. A woman. Yes, a woman. Women can do anything men can do these days, Alfie. Oh, can you piss standing up? <laughs> <laughs> I can't say I've ever tried. No, I didn't think so. Two sugars, please, and not too much milk. Uh, shall we get to the awards, Alfie? Oh, are you going to ask me about my life? Well, I'm not sure we have enough time left now for that. So. When I was nine, I wanted a pet to ask me mam and pap. There was no television then, back then, you know. We made our own entertainment out of coal and roadkill. <laughs> well, that was fascinating. So they got me a pet, see? But it weren't a dog. They told me it were a dog, but it were a stone. A stone? Yeah. So I called it Patch, which were a popular name for dogs back then, on account of the king having a patchy face. And I decided to introduce him to pretty little Gertie Thimble, who lived up the road. <laughs> oh, how romantic. She <laughs> threw my dog in the river. Oh, no. That was the day I decided I'd never marry. <laughs> and that's the secret to your long life? Oh, no. I've been married seven times. Divorced eight. There was a mix up with number three, see. Yes, I'm just lucky. <laughs> Are we going back to the home soon? Uh, soon, Alfie. <laughs> First, let's turn to the reason we're all here. The Weekly Territory One Team Awards. First up tonight is a lady who really knows how to put in the extra hours. She works at a transition centre in Hamble Bamblebury and she has single-handedly allowed more families to unburden each other. Please welcome Daphne Snister. <laughs> Uh, uh, are you here to change me? Just uh, give her a medal, Alfie. There's a good boy. <laughs> uh, gosh, I mean, two sugars, uh, and don't let it steep too long. I think you're supposed to give me one of those. Oh. Give me one of those. Ah. Well, I, I, there he goes. Look. <laughs> I can't get the arms up any higher than that. You'll have to go down, love. Oh, thank God those fractious times are behind us. And now the territories are thriving. Are we in? As the act you said to the bishop. <laughs> yes, thank you. I've got it from here. Well done. Daphne Snister, everybody. Now, open your envelope and find out what you've won. <laughs> Don't hold back there. She's stuffing one of Peter's homemade Ethel's cakes. Got it. <laughs> I've won a holiday for two in Territory 15. It used to be called San Palmarino, didn't it? As I believe it did, yeah. Why couldn't we have stuck with that then? It's easier to remember. We're all one nation now. <laughs> Isn't it still on fire? And Daphne Snister, everyone. We'll get to that, Alfie. <laughs> oh, right you are, love. Uh, next up tonight is a couple from Farnley who, after a rocky start losing their family's ill-gotten gains to the Assets and Wealth Act, have really embraced the new future setting up a community farm and petting zoo in their local area for all the local children to play. Please welcome Otho and Lobelia Jackson Ramiganit. Medals, Alfie. You know, when I was in the trenches, I had a pal called Scotty Wilson. He was from This is ridiculous. I didn't understand a bloody word he said. But he were my best mate. Should we just grab some for ourselves? Probably for the best. <laughs> and his best mate was Smudger A. There was them two. Little Leary, Unstable Terry, and of course, Leggy Sidney. She were a girl. But she had a boy's name, so they shipped her to the front anyway. <laughs> First girl any of us has ever seen, Curly Cup. 
She's dead now. They all are. Smudger and Scotty never made it home. Fiddly got shanked in Frankworth prison in argument over an olive. And Terry, she exploded quietly at home. Cindy got a fatal skin condition. Scratched herself to death. This makes me think. Thanks, Alfie. Great contribution. <laughs> so, Otho and Lavinia at Petting Zoo. After we lost all our wealth, but we discovered there were actually people who would never even own a pony. So we decided to do something about it. Uh, that's the type of people we are, you see. Advantage of a private education, probably. Well, I'm sure we could debate that all night, but there's no time. So let's see what you've won. Yes, there's something I want to say to you. Oh, absolutely. Every citizen of the new future has my ear. When advance came to power, you took all of our wealth and took the shirts off of our backs. Quite literally, in my case, I used to collect shirts. Yes. Have the rest of it too. Oh, security! Oh God, not again! If I said it once, I've said it a thousand times. Bennies and the news are not good bedfellows. Keep those flappy bits off of my channel, Alex. And better, uh, and you are. Oh boy. Okay. It isn't right and it isn't fair. You tell him, girl. That's my wife, you know. <laughs> oh no, you don't. You can't mix pearls with swine, it isn't right! We used to have three horses, then the defense would hung well! And now what have we got? Two mangy goats, one mongrel dog called Kenneth, and a rooster that won't bloody shut up! Can we get this over quickly with, please? As the actress said to the bishop! <laughs> Oh, here we go again. Uh, uh, hello, Alfie Tad Fadger. It's easy to meet you. Stop them! Uh, okay. Oh, don't worry, love. I I'll protect you. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. He didn't even bother to blow my ruddy nose. It's you know, so hard to figure out what's going on. When I was in your 20s, and we go to the, the promenade at Shining on Sea and watch all the pretty girls on the beach. <laughs> Everything was black and white then, of course. We'd visit the Penny Arcade and try to win a block of lard to take home to the family. You couldn't buy lard in those days. You had to win it. Oh. It was so much simpler back then. Boys were boys, girls were girls. Everyone else was recruited by the circuses. <laughs> there were loads of them, you see, circuses, with their big tents and their candy floss. You'd hear the music, the pipe organ, drifting over the nearby fields. <laughs> My mum used to call it the most magical sound in the world. This was before she lost her hearing after giving a particularly loud round of applause. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, did, did, did you ever go to the circus? What's that, Alfie? Uh, the circus, it's all that, right. yeah. Just the tea Just the tea pack. Well, that was an unexpected dose of naked nostalgia. <laughs> Some people simply can't let go of the past. That's why I look in joy and fervent admiration at the younger generation. So cohesive, such a team. And with fertility falling throughout the territories, we should value our fabulous new generation now more than ever. Our final winner tonight is a go-getter who really went and got him, helping to root out more than... disrupt collaborators in his own neighborhood. Since then, he's gone to be a senior cohesion cadet leader and organized all of the entertainment at last year's camp corporation. Our final winner tonight, Edwin Neverlay. Oh, I'll be glad You should be in a transition center, you old non- Prime Minister. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure to finally meet you. We're very similar, in my opinion. Uh, well, I've never been much of a role model. <laughs> Nonsense. Prime Minister, you have saved this country. You have fought enemies, foreign and domestic, with an iron fist. 
as with my own tiny bits to buy. Well, let's open the envelope and find out what you want. <laughs> Maybe it'll be a fist enlargement. <laughs> <laughs> Year's internship as a behaviour coach at Betty. Let's show the fools where they went wrong, eh? Well, actually, betterment is about rehabilitation, Edwin. Absolutely. And if they weren't reintegrated, we retaliate. Just like you do, and the duration does. Thank you for this award. And, David, report the non cohesive, be a team player. Concludes tonight's awards. Uh, join me next week when hopefully things will be a lot more normal. Back to you, Megan. Prime Minister Salisbury there at a highly eventful team award ceremony. Any thoughts on this week's winners, Stacey? The nurse was fucking scary. The preteens are saggy, and that little prick will never lose his virginity. <laughs> to think she put there, if a little profane. After the break, we'll be going live to a star-studded premiere. You won't believe who's on the red carpet tonight. Don't go anywhere, we'll be back after this. And we're out. Oh, Alex, one other. What's that? You're off already? I know you had to take the day of work with Junior, but... Oh, I see. No luck still with Theodore. I'm so sorry, darling. Of course. I'll speak to you later. Oh, Alex, I completely forgot what I was going to say. Blast it all. Still, I'm lucky to have her. Kind of tragic comic disaster. Yeah, that. Stephanie's watching us somewhere, laughing. Isn't you? Jeremy, are you watching us? Are you receiving us? Are you fucking with us? Oh, right. So she can swear. All right, everyone. I am really super duper sorry, but this headache is absolutely destroying me. And I am just starving to death over here. <clears throat> and I can't even pay attention to what's going on. I, the stream went a lot longer than I expected to because... Well, the download took way longer than it should have. Oh, and uh, yeah, I'm going to have to do this later, like tomorrow, because I, I just can't keep doing this. It's it's getting way too late and I'm starving and my head is killing me. So, yeah, I'll make this into a playlist and then it will just be one big part. Uh, so, yeah, uh, terribly sorry, but that is the end of the stream. Until next time, everyone, I've been Darza. You've been a fantastic audience. Thank you for tuning in. So many, so many faces right now. It, it pains me. So many, so many new eyes watching the channel right now, and it pains me to, 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 to leave, but I am feeling absolutely horrible. Uh, so yeah, I, I'll be back uh, tomorrow with, 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 with this episode. Fully. Fuck me. Anyways, yeah. Uh, until next time. Uh, bye. Mwah.